says he'll make me a star if I just play the game. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the 2022 Pan American Water Ski Championships. My name is Tony Lightfoot, coming to you live from Lago Los Moros in Santiago de Chile. Beautiful conditions out there await our uh, participants in, and this is going to be the schedule for the day. U21 Women's Slalom will get things kicked off this morning in the next few minutes, followed by U21 Men and then Open Women and Open Men's Slalom, and that will take place as our first events of the day, followed by Jump and then ending off with Tricks. And uh, taking a quick look on Dockside, a, a few of our drivers are getting set for, uh, for their, uh, their appearance uh, behind the helm of, uh, of our uh, Malibu uh, towboats as... Uh, Things are uh, just uh, starting to slowly uh, come into place. Uh, sparse crowds right now, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely feel more of those seeds, seats as uh, we continue along with this competition. There's your schedule once again on the left-hand side. And there is our timer to indicate that we are about 11 minutes away from starting the, uh, the U21 uh, women's slalom competition. So grab your favorite seat. Grab your favorite beverage and get ready to uh, to watch uh, some of the best skin that you'll see from Pan America with the U21 Women's Slalom and on all that to come within the next few minutes right after these.
Hi, my name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. Once I got in here, it was a big eye opener how much different that they go about everything. What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat? place where that summer feeling lasts all year long. A place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers. A place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. You 
All right, then, welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2022 Pan American Water Ski Championships. then folks after that quick rendition of the Chilean national anthem we'll uh, bring on our first driver uh, Diego Hernandez doing a splendid job uh, at this uh, tournament uh, one of the resident drivers here actually at uh, Logo Los Morris and a very very popular uh, individual uh, behind uh, behind the wheel and uh, we'll uh, we'll take on our first skier momentarily it's going to be Catalina Racolazzo and uh, speaking of uh, skiers that will be taking to water soon, there is our schedule. Uh, U21 women followed by U21 men, then open women, open men. And uh, there we see the, the jump and the tricks events to follow in immediate succession. So, we'll, we've had a quick look at the schedule. Let's have a look at the first event. Uh, Catalina Colazzo from uh, from Argentina, Ines Colazzo, her sister, uh, second out. Then Juanita Rojas of uh, Colombia, uh, Daniela Verschweivel of uh, Colombia as well. Then uh, Rebecca Ramsey of Canada, Amelia Mendez of Chile, Do uh, Domingo Gonzalez of Chile, and Neely Ross. So eight. So and actually uh, uh, between. Uh, the under-21 women and uh, open women, Neely Ross, is the only competitor competing in both categories for Canada. Okay, Catalina Colazzo at 52 kilometers now, 80.25 meters. Maximum speed from here on out is 55K. Here we go, our first competitor in this section of the Pan American Water Ski Championships, Catalina Colazzo. In a little bit deep with some of these turns, but uh, managing to uh, to still uh, make her way through the opening pass. And our opening pass here in the Pan American Water Ski Championships in the U21 section is belonging to Catalina Colazzo.
All right. So it's a 52K uh, getting the job done. And as confirmed by our uh, in-boat official, 55K, 80.25 meters for Catalina Colazzo. Entrance number one. Trying to throw that ski into a turn a fairly early off the second wake, which uh, which is what 18.25 meters kind of forces you to do. Oh, and barely gets inside the right-hand gate ball on the exit. We're going to take a look at that on the instant replay towards the end with the reverse uh, side camera, and uh, I believe she uh, she managed to get the uh, the exit gate. The judges will probably take another look at that just to confirm whether she has continuation to 16 meters at 55. Certainly left that one pretty late as, uh, as much as she did on the previous pass of 52K. All right, so there we go and look at Ooh, and just grazes like the uh, the inside uh, of the right-hand uh, exit ball. And here we go. Coming in, this is Catalina Colazzo. 16 meters. Oh, and uh, I'm not even too sure whether she made it outside buoy number two. Her uh, approach uh, kind of looks suspect there off number one. She uh, doesn't continue to ski beyond it. Apparently, the uh, the boat judge is calling one on the, on this uh, this uh, this particular run at 16 meters. Getting the good hook up, but getting a little twisted. Yeah, definitely inside and uh, scores one buoy for her troubles at 16 meters. And that's our first performance of the Pan American Water Ski Championships in the U21 section. Catalina Colazzo, one buoy on 16 meters. And we have eight skiers in this event and six make it through to the next round of the competition. And setting the early pace here with one at 22 off. All right, so one at 16 meters, one at 22 off, and... Uh, okay, and when we return, we will have our second skier out, uh, sister Ines Colazzo, uh, for her run also from Argentina, as we continue on the Pan America Championships for 2022, right after this. All right, Catalina making her way back to the dock and uh, just leaving the way clear for her uh, her, her sister Ines to uh, to take to the water very very soon. <laughs> For those of you that are watching us via our YouTube channel, uh, be sure to like and subscribe at the uh, at the top of the uh, the page to be given indication as to when our next live broadcast will take place, such as the Junior World Championships, which will take place the first week of January, coming to you exclusively live on TWBC. 
And it also gives you the opportunity to participate in our live chat, uh, which is on the right-hand side of the, uh, the screen. And uh, let us know what you think about the broadcast and about the skiing that's on that broadcast. Including our next skier to take to the water, this is Ines Colazzo. 52K, 18.25 meters. Getting a little bit deep on some of these turns as she needs to make it, make up some time here. 52K, 18.25 meters. And she just barely gets around buoy number six. Whoa. That was close. Starts to make a roll and uh, turn in towards uh, buoy number one. And then uh, breaks forward and uh, lets the all, almost all of the angle uh, go directly towards the boat. Yeah, just breaking up the waist uh, on, on a lot of those weight crossings. And that really affects her ability to smoothly roll that ski from one side to the next. Almost as if she's anticipating the wakes too much on each side. she has a strong enough turn and a strong enough edge, then the wakes have become inconsequential. So something that she needs to work on uh, after this tournament, one would imagine. But that is 80.25 meters, and that was at 52K. Let's see what she can do on the return pass of 55K. Here we go, folks, Ines Colazzo. Round number one. Repres oh, a little bit of a double pump there off number two, and that kind of delay doesn't exactly help her uh, in terms of the approach into three. Okay, uh, apologies right from the get-go. The skier on the water actually is uh, Juanita Rojas, uh, not uh, Ines Colazzo. They've, uh, they've switched uh, places on the running order, unbeknownst to us at the time. And certainly because the, uh, the, skier, uh, the skier bib number is uh, obscured uh, by the fact that uh, it's, uh, the bib is tied off at the back and not unable to reveal the number, so... Uh, even if we had the ability to try and confirm the, uh, even if we had the opportunity to look at the bib to get the number, oh, it would have been impossible to ascertain who the skier was. But there you go. That is uh, Juanita Rojas, and that is two and one half. Two and a half on that one of 18.25 meters. Now it's Enos Colazzo. Fifty two K, eighteen point two five meters, same pass to open up with as her sister did. Oh, getting really, really down course there off and off number four and just couldn't keep couldn't get much of anything going on there. So Enos Colazzo. Didn't look too bad off number one. And it certainly occurs to me that a lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, the anomalies that I see with, uh, with one or two of our uh, opening skiers could, uh, could well be helped with maybe a better, a better uh, choice of setting so far as the zero off is concerned. The, uh, 
Paul seems to come on rather aggressively at the end of uh, the turns and uh, for one reason or another uh, one or two of these skiers just unable to hold that kind of uh, that pull uh, at that point so maybe a uh, not so much a lighter setting but maybe a more delayed setting on the zero off might well benefit them if they're uh, running with uh, something like a B or a C uh, at this time. Just looking, looking at her go around buoy number four and uh, I don't know whether she made it round buoy number five. What score was that, by the way? Tranqui, tranqui, acá ahí llegaste, ¿qué va a hacer? Bueno, tranquila. Bueno, tranquila, dale. Misma cuerda, sí, pues. Okay, so final score there for Ines Colazzo, a four at 52K, 18.25 meters. Skier on the water right now from Colombia, Daniela Verschweibel. Daniela Verschweibel, who skied plenty this season, uh, coming into the course on 52K, 18.25 meters. Skied in the recent Bolivarian Games and also the South American Games as well. And in, uh, in each of those instances, she got at least halfway down uh, uh, 60 meters. And actually in the Bolivarian Games, uh, got halfway down 14.25 meters. So she does have some pretty decent form. But fair to say that so far as Daniela is concerned, her uh, best event is certainly the tricks where uh, she competed in the Junior Masters earlier on uh, this season. Looking pretty good with the opener at 52K, 18.25. Certainly a little bit more in the way of aggression uh, from her uh, compared to our uh, previous uh, competitors. So Daniela Verschweivel doing a grand job there to uh, open up her account. Okay, here we go, folks. Daniela Verschweivel, whose best this season has been one at uh, 32 off or 30 meters at the uh, Latin American Water Ski Championships in Colombia. 
that's where she comes from and nicely done so uh, 52 and 55 on 18 under a belt and now she can start to get to work on the shorter line length passes of uh, 16 and 14.25 meters daniela vashwaiva Just looking in very, very good shape and uh, not too much disruption on the turns. Uh, just making sure that uh, she gets the ski sufficiently rotated enough and then works her way up behind the boat and good attacking posture there. There we go. That is uh, Daniela Veschweivel. We're about halfway down this list, uh, ski number four of eight. We're going to see Rebecca Ramsey of Canada come up next, followed by Amelia Mendez and Dominga Gonzalez of Chile. Finally, Neely Ross of Canada. Looking good. Oh, good knee bend round number two. That really helped with the skis rotation there. Right foot forward there, which mean that, means that she could be a lot more aggressive, a lot more stable off 246. Gets the job done right there. That is Daniela Verschweivel. So Daniela Veschweivel looking at the tail end of 16 meters and uh, that uh, that proved to be just as easy as 18.25 meters the previous run. go Daniela out of uh, Laura Calera in uh, in Colombia oh it gets round buoy number four but not much more beyond that I'm afraid uh, she gets around that turn on 14.25 meters so about three buoys shy of uh, what she's uh, produced as our best score this season Daniela Vishweibel a four buoy count on 14.25 meters. And if my reckoning is correct, that could be enough to send her through to the next round of the competition. In the U21s, uh, out of the eight skiers in this, on this list, six will make it through to tomorrow's final. Okay, my mistake on that one. Uh, the uh, the the amount of skiers making it through to the next round is actually four as opposed to six. I was looking at the the top there, and the indication there were said originally six, but it's now four. Uh, so uh, Daniela Vashwaivel, uh, for her part, though, uh, scored uh, four buoys on 14.25 meters. And that is actually the uh, the breakthrough score. Anything more than that will ensure that any of the remaining four skiers on this list advance through to the next round of the competition. Here we 
go. 55, 18.25 meters. Next gear up is Rebecca Ramsey. So Rebecca Ramsey, good solid opening pass at 18.25 metres at 55. Looking at some of the previous scores of this season and uh, has had excursions uh, into uh, 13 metres. Actually on a number of occasions, on only two, uh, two rounds of uh, skiing so far this season, has she gotten less than a score on 13 metres as a matter of fact. Scanning up and down the list, uh, her best score of the season is actually five and a half on a tournament that took place in, uh, in June of this year. So that's the kind of a score that uh, we could possibly expect there uh, from Rebecca Ramsey as she works away from one buoy to the next on that opening pass. We'll see what she's got on uh, pass number two. She'll be coming back on the 16 meter line. So not looking bad here on 60 meters all the way through. No worries there for her. Decent skiing and getting through uh, that run. And within about a half a pass away from uh, possibly making it through to the next round of the competition. So. Uh, she knows that uh, she is about uh, three and a quarter buoys away from the promised land of making it through to the, uh, the uh, tomorrow's final. Four skiers advance out of the eight that are on this list in the U21s. Rebecca Ramsey now. Boat turning in towards the course. Entrance round buoy number one, electing to go with Alpha 2 on the zero off. She's good to go around number three. A little bit of a crush there on number three. She's good for four. She's already through to the next round. There she goes. Round buoy number six. And another score on 30 meters is in the offering here for Rebecca Ramsey of Canada. Good solid skiing there from Rebecca Ramsey from uh, from one end to the uh, the last. So now the line is set on the green loop, and uh, our boat driver Diego Hernandez bringing uh, Rebecca Ramsey back out onto the water, 30 meters or 32 feet off the standard 75 foot line. Forty-three feet of rope to work with to get round all six buoys. Here she comes. 
Best score of the season has been five and a half, and I don't think she'll quite get that far, but halfway down 13 metres uh, represents one of her better scores of the season, as a matter of fact. Ties the score that she produced at the Canadian National Water Ski Championships earlier on this season, and also her best score at the Eastern Regions as well. So Rebecca Ramsey with three on 13 metres. And uh, that uh, advances her through to the next round of the competition. And with that, she currently holds the lead with three, with three competitors remaining. So not a bad effort there from Rebecca Ramsey as we're looking at the instant replay and uh, getting ready for our remaining three skiers to come. Two of them from Chile, one more from Canada. Entrance number one. This is 60 meters for opener. Amelia Mendez. Decent looking opening pass. I don't see much uh, too much wrong with that as uh, we look out towards the dock. See uh, and see her uh, compatriot uh, Dominga Gonzalez get ready for her go. For uh, for Amelia Mendez's part, uh, she's uh, slalom quite a few times this season, and uh, has been exceedingly consistent in uh, putting a score into the 12 meter line on um, on pretty much every occasion bar one. And even on a couple of instances, at least again into 11.25 meters. So uh, that's the kind of level that we're ascending to right now. A skier that could potentially have a crack at uh, the 11.25 meter line, uh, but it will uh, take uh, a few more passes uh, under a belt before we get to, to that high echelon. Amelia Mendez. There you go, good, good skiing there from Amelia Mendez. 16 and 14, and by virtue of the fact that she scored more than three on four, uh, more than four on 14.25 meters. She has already uh, successfully booked herself a spot through to the uh, the final round. So coming to us out of Chile, this is Amelia Mendez. Me 
Elia Mendez, who scored one and a half on 11.25 meters in the recent record capability tournament here about a week and a half ago. Be looking for something along that range. Unfortunately, you know that she's not going to get anywhere close to it. And there's a rare occurrence there so far as Amelia Mendez is concerned. Unfortunately, unable to get through 30 meters. And we'll have to settle with one and a half, which will put her uh, behind uh, Rebecca Ramsey, who scored three on this, uh, this pass. Just over-rotated, just going for the handle a little bit too soon there off uh, number two. Sinks into the water. And then uh, we'll get prepared now for uh, penultimate skier, who is going to be Domingo Gonzalez, as we take one more. Just take a look at this and bring in the handle in. and Oh, and just... Not taking a, uh, a stabilized grip there on the handle. There's your leaderboard, Rebecca Ramsey with three on 30 minutes. Your leader, Amelia Mendez, currently in second spot. Those are the only two that are guaranteed spots through to the final thus far. Two more competitors to go. Dominga Gonzalez coming up next, and we'll see her right after this. then folks uh, next skier up our penultimate skier in the u21 women's slalom competition this is dominga gonzalez Fourteen point two five meter start Good looking run. And there we go. Dominga Gonzalez assures herself a spot through to the next round of the competition by the by virtue of running her opening pass on the line length necessary. 14.25 meters. Good can of rotation going into buoy number two. Probably not as kind of rotated as uh, as a younger brother, uh, Matthias Gonzalez. If I was to uh, be bold enough to compare uh, slalom techniques and styles between the two of them, but uh, certainly uh, element taking the the best elements from each and incorporating it into their uh, their own uh, performance out there on the water. So there we go. That was uh, Domingo Gonzalez on their opener as we uh, take a, a first look this morning at uh, Neely Ross as uh, she gets ready to take to the water. Coming in on 30 meters. There we go, oh, getting broken over off number five, but she has enough of a lead on that pass to, uh, 
to mitigate that kind of error on number five as she looked okay. Got around all six buoys there. Yeah. Domingo Gonzalez. Fantastic effort there from her. Coming to us out of Chile. Her, uh, her scores this season have been, uh, been pretty good for the most part. One or two that were a little off the boil, but uh, for, for the most part, she's been able to, uh, to get uh, through, uh, through passes off 13 meters and establish scores on 12 and even a smattering of scores on 11.25 meters. Including in one of the recent uh, tournaments right here in October where she produced a score of one at 11.25 meters. And that's about as far as she's gone into uh, that pass uh, all season, so far as her best score is concerned. So let's see what Diminga could do. Stout pull out there, keeping a good tight line. This is 12 meters, needs to get the good start. Yes, she does. Holding her position good off number two. Not getting the best of number threes and we'll get two and a half for that. Uh, we'll actually, we'll get three uh, actually for, uh, for that effort there. Three on uh, 35 off, 12 meters. Certainly a hard start into buoy number one and uh, looked pretty stable, but uh, had problems uh, controlling the speed at the end, hence the slack line. Got it worse into buoy number two, and this was just a case of survival, getting around number three, even more slack, and uh, combined with how far she was down course on the first two buoys, precluded her from getting around buoy number four. So uh, that is going to be a three on 12 meter line run for her final score i'm going to take a look at the instant replay one more time handle up a little bit high to try and take out a little bit more out of the slack and then uh, got uh, got behind the boat a little bit on number three and then uh, unable to get outside We'll bring Neely Ross out onto the water in just a moment. Let's have a quick look at the leaderboard. Uh, Dominga Gonzalez taking the lead with her uh, score of three on 12 meters. Rebecca Ramsey with three on 13. And uh, Amelia Mendez in third place. And we will get to see Neely Ross take to the water our last skier out in the U21 women's competition right after this. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. All right then, and selecting the opening pass of 14.25 meters. It's gonna be Neely Ross, our final competitor out of Canada and the only competitor that is, uh, that is eligible to, uh, to compete, not only for the U21s, but also for the Open Women's uh, competition as well. So in the space of about three hours, she'll get to slalom twice. see what she's got for us our final competitor in the u21 elimination round in the women's competition for the slalom event this is needy ross Nicely done. Don't see too much wrong with that one. Run through 14 and the uh, the final four competitors in the uh, under 21 women's slalom competition is set. 
So congrats to Rebecca Ramsey, Amelia Mendez, Domingo Gonzalez, and indeed, Neely Ross. But so far as Neely is concerned, she isn't done yet. So far as Neely Ross is concerned, taking a look at some of her scores of this uh, season. And uh, very impressive, I'd have to say. And uh, a few occasions she was able to get through uh, 11.25 meters. And on one or two rare occasions, uh, she was able to, uh, to get a score of uh, less than, uh, than an attempt into 11.25 meters. But let's see what she's got right here on 13. Oh, look at that, very aggressive there off the turn. Leaving herself with bags of time before uh, each attempted turn. That's Neely Ross through 13 meters now. Just trying to keep her uh, Boys and uh, to keep her uh, a position well in check. Nicely done off buoy number one. A beautifully executed number two, just keeping uh, keeping a very very good water speed up. Beautiful style and uh, very, very precise from one side of the uh, the course to the next. Good, good skiing there from Neely Ross and uh, third pass coming right up. 12 meters is next. So Neely Ross, uh, who, uh, who has competed in the Canadian National Water Ski Championships, didn't uh, leg to slalom in the uh, the Eastern uh, Eastern Region Slalom Championships at, uh, in Canada. But let's see uh, how she gets along here. The Pan American Water Ski Championships right here in Lago Los Maras. Here on 12 meters. Oh yeah, absolutely. She has well taken the lead needed more than three to do that and uh, she just absolutely uh, crushed that pass so nearly Ross good extension into buoy number one just waiting for the ski to m make its rotation and then getting on the gas directly behind the boat as soon as she knows that she's stable enough to do so. Beautiful angle out off each buoy and just allowing that ski to do what it's designed to do. A joy to watch. There you go, that is uh, Neely Ross. There we see her father on dockside, that is uh, Drew Ross, a slalom legend himself, and uh, one of the upcoming uh, podcasts on the TWBC podcast will feature not only Drew Ross and Neely Ross, but also Charlie Ross as well. And uh, you'll be able to, uh, to get to hear that very soon on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, or on Apple Podcasts. But uh, on uh, one buoy on 11.25 meters, not get, getting quite the connection that she wanted to. But uh, so far as her making it through to the next round of the competition, her job is done in that respect. And uh, she'll actually get an opportunity to, uh, to take to the water again to improve upon that performance. Only this time it would be in the Open Women's Slalom competition. So uh, 
I don't know whether she has an additional vest or uh, or additional uh, a costume out there, but I don't think it's going to get dry on time for her uh, for her next uh, set of slalom with uh, within the uh, the next uh, next hour or two. But there you go, Neely Ross, there's your leaderboard, a half a buoy on 11.25 metres. Uh, Domingo Gonzalez with three on 12 metres. Rebecca Ramsey in third with three on 13 metres. Amelia Mendez rounding off our finalists with one and a half on 30 metres. And then rounding off uh, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth with Daniela Veshwaival, uh, Catalina Colazzo, Aeneas Colazzo and Juanito Rojas. All right, next uh, competition up is going to be the U21 men's slalom elimination round. There is your list. Uh, we're uh, looking at uh, Sam Weber to take to water first for the United States, followed by Mickey Geller and Ben Wheeler of Canada, Wesley Corey of the United States, Patricio Fon, Mateo Chico from uh, Mexico, Vicente Atiza from uh, Chile, Bradley Gibbons of, the, of, uh, of Canada, Gustavo Kretzmer of Chile, Tobias Georges of Argentina, and finally Blaise Grubbs from the United States. And all that to come right after this as we continue on the Pan American Water Ski Championships. So, uh, returning to live action, uh, good morning once again. This is Tony Lyford with the Pan American Water Ski Championships. We are into the U21 men's slalom uh, elimination round. Skier on the water, starting in on 14.25 meters from the United States. This is Samuel Weber. Nice going there with uh, that opening pass, uh, Sam Weber. Skiing out of the, uh, the Midwest of the United States. And not looking too bad at all for the most part. As he pulls out a short end, we're, uh, we're taking a look at the, uh, the instant replay right here. Coming to us out of Lincoln in Nebraska in the United States. And uh, looking at some of the, the tournaments uh, that he's, uh, he's produced uh, scores for this season. In as a recent form, as a matter of fact, in the, the Midwest uh, Collegiate Regionals, uh, he, uh, he produced a score of one at 11.25 meters. And in the fall yeah. showdown, <laughs> also <laughs> produced uh, that score as well. But for the most part, he's been successful in being able to make it into the 12-meter run, including at the Midwest AWSA Championships and indeed the Good Water Ski Nationals. So he has that uh, to, to work with. Here he comes on 30 meters. Six competitors out of the 11 on this list will advance through to the next round of the competition. So wanting to try and uh, put his best foot forward and uh, conjure up a score that will be hard for the remaining uh, competitors on this list to chase down. That's Samuel Weber in the water after successfully completing the 13-meter run. So Sam Weber out of the Corn Husker State of Nebraska. As I said, competing in the collegiate regionals and I'm not too sure which college he goes to. It might actually be the University of Nebraska. 
Yes, indeed. Uh, getting a nod from one of my good friends on the shore side to confirm that. <laughs> enjoy doing so many other things too that yeah I like other sports yeah like snowboarding and, you know, hiking and mountain biking and so here we go this is Samuel Weber this is 12 meters past that he's been successful in completing a couple of times this season He's down course a little bit off two, but he's still there on three. A little bit of the layoff number four. Won't get outside four. So he's going to be halfway down that pass. Pretty much the same score that he produced at the Good Water Ski National Championships over in Mays in Kansas. Just to give you a comparison as to the kind of form that he brought into this competition. Got the best start that he could have hoped for off number one and then just didn't take full advantage of the angle that he generated off that turn and left himself real narrow and with a lot of uh, catching up to do off uh, number two into three and that kind of cascaded itself into his approach into number four and unable to make it round that turn. So there we go. That is uh, Samuel Weber and uh, he'll be taken to the dock. Our first skier out, our only skier on the leaderboard as it stands. And when we uh, return, we'll bring on Mickey Geller. He comes to us out of Canada, and we will see him next. Right then, welcome back to continuing coverage of the Pan American Water Ski Championships. Great to have you on board and also great to have uh, our supporting sponsors on board as well, such as uh, Good and uh, Masterline, along with Miranda's Water Ski School, the, uh, the Chilean Water Ski and Wakeboard Federation, and also the, uh, the Chilean Sports Ministry, along with the, uh, the Chilean uh, uh, Institute of Sport. And of course... The great support that we're getting from uh, from Pefe as well. So thanks to all of those folks going forward. All right. Sam Weber setting the pace with a score halfway down 12 minutes, and uh, that will be the score that uh, that Mickey Geller out of Canada will be chasing after. <laughs> So, 16 meter run. Really working that Slansky, although it's really, really chattering from, uh, from one side of the course to the next. I don't know what the reason, reason for that was, but uh, looked a little nervy out there. And there we see we get to see our first look at uh, Matt Reaney and uh, another plug uh, so far as uh, the TWBC podcast is concerned. We're going to, uh, at the, one of the next podcasts that you will hear, will uh, feature Matt and Whitney McClintock Reaney on the same episode. And you'll get to listen to that very, very soon on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, on Apple Podcasts, and even on iHeart Podcasts or wherever else you like to listen to podcasts. Mickey Geller out there on the slalom course and uh, for his part doing a grand, grand job out there on the 16 meter line and uh, looking at some of his previous results. Most of his scores have been into 13 meters and one or two scores have been recorded into 12. So let's see if he can uh, make it that far. A 14 meter attempt coming up next for him. Coming to us out of Ontario.
Oh, nice. Good solid ski in there. Getting through 14.25 meters, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if it will rock 13 meters coming up next. We'll have a look at it, look at his technique uh, around buoy number one. Moving about uh, quite a bit on that slalom ski uh, into into each of his turns on on either side of the course. Let's see if he can settle things down in time for uh, for 13 meters, which is going to be the next run for him. As we continue to work our way through this list, the six skiers will make it out of this list of 11 in the U21 men's slalom competition. I'm sure he's certainly grateful for the opportunity to ski here in uh, South America. Right up in Canada now, they just started their ice fishing season. Probably not too many opportunities uh, for skiers uh, north of the uh, north of the border to uh, to get out to. Whoa! Look at that on 13 meters. Oh, almost overpowers it on number one, but getting around buoy number three and not even bothering to ski for the wakes to get the full three, throwing the handle and getting two and one half for for, for his troubles out there. Getting. Oh, horrid number one. That ski's moving around all over the place. Not settled down for an instant here. And I don't see much of the buoy there in the middle of that turn, so one would uh, would immediately assume that he gets, uh, gets two buoys and that will be it there for him. Oh, 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 just look at his ski into buoy number one. I don't know, don't know how he can slalom like that, if I'm being honest. Oh, a fin release into, nu in, into number three as well. All right then, so it's gonna be two and one half, two and a half. So uh, that is the final score for Mickey Geller. And when we return, we'll see Ben Wheeler from Canada next. Right then, welcome back, uh, Ben Wheeler out of Canada, about to uh, to take to the water. Not necessarily a, a Canadian team member, a Canadian individual competitor. That's why the uh, the asterisk appears uh, next uh, to his name if you're looking at the IWWF uh, live uh, results and even uh, and even the the starting uh, running orders. Decent slalom ski here. He's uh, put some scores into 12 meters and has been very, very consistent into uh, into 13 meters for the six tournaments that he's been in this season. A 16 meter opening run for Ben Wheeler. There you go, a six buoy count, opening run.
All right, so we're looking at uh, Ben Wheeler on pass on the opening pass, 16 meters, no worries there. Ron Moore, our, uh, our driver, just getting, giving the thumbs up to, uh, to Ben Wheeler. And into the course on 14.25 meters. Best score uh, this season has been two and a half on 12. So looking to try and get into a halfway decent rhythm here on 14.25 meters in preparation for the uh, the next critical passes ahead, starting with 13 meters. go that is uh, pass number two it's going to be uh, 13 meters it was 13 meters and there you see the uh, the zero off graphic with the letter on a the pool comes on a little bit uh, later a little bit more in uh, a little bit later and uh, the the numbers uh, whenever that whenever a zero off is used effectively the numbers uh, stand for the, the intensity and yes, coming back on 13 meters, he's gone through 16 and 14, and uh, 13 meters uh, beckons for him. All right, here we go, folks. of our uh, Slansky is actually practicing his trick run uh, just before he gets out onto the water but uh, whatever floats your boat of course Ben Wheeler 13 meters and I wouldn't say that he made light work on that pass but he uh, certainly got round all six buoys on 13 meters and uh, continuing on his flawless record of being able to get into 12 meters at the very least all season long age 16 skiing in the U21 event and as I mentioned uh, his uh, personal best is two and a half on the 12 meter line at the uh, Canadian Water Ski Nationals at Shalom Park in Edmonton, coming to us out of uh, out of Ontario, which explains the reason why he was eligible to ski in the Ontario uh, provin uh, provincial uh, championships, where he uh, where he scored a two on the 12 meter line. Three buoy, three buoys on 12 meters is the lead, and as a matter of fact, uh, scanning down to that tournament of the uh, Ontario Provincials, he was able to get three and a quarter on 12 meters in round number one. So something like that will take the lead away from Sam Weber. Round number one, round number two. He's good to go for number three. Can he make it outside for not quite? He's going to have to make do with two and a half. But a decent, decent score there for Canada's Ben Wheeler. That slots him in second spot after three competitors. Got him broken over at the waist off number one into number two. And then brought the handle on, on his inside on number two and just sent himself narrow into number three and unfortunately unable to ski much beyond that but however it is two and a half and uh, certainly a, a score that's uh, that's pretty par for the course so far as uh, Ben Weeder is concerned handle came up real high there Off number one into number two and even higher off number three and unable to hold it this time. So it's going to be two and a half. And when we return, we'll bring on uh, uh, Wesley Corey Paul from the United States and he'll take to the water next. Uh, 
actually we're going to go straight uh, straight in uh, looks like uh, we're uh, we're uh, cutting down the delays a little bit to, between each uh, competitor oh, thank you. so we saw a brief look at the leaderboard <laughs> sorry about that. that's okay That leaderboard sh still shows that Sam Weber is in the lead with uh, with three on 12 meters. So coming into the course, coming in on 16 meters, Wesley Corey Pohl. Skiing out of the western region of the United States. Produced a three and a quarter buoys on the 12 meters at the Good Water Ski National Championships, and about a quarter of a buoy more than that in the Western Regionals in uh, Bel Aqua and Rio Linda, California. Those are among his uh, better scores of the season. Wesley Corey Paul. Sixteen meters, just holding his angle, holding his nerve out there on the slalom course, and just riding that KD slalom ski to good effect from the start all the way through to the end of pass number one. Wesley Corey Paul. Keeps me. Here we go. Coming to us out of Sacramento in California. Good looking skiing there from him. While I was able to pull up a few more results uh, from him uh, this season using the AWSA uh, uh, database. Uh, do have to apologize straight away. Uh, kind of muddled up his uh, name a little bit. It is Paul Wesley Corey. Should have actually known better, but uh, but there you go. It's a li Liz a little bit early in the, in the morning here in uh, Lago Los Morris in Santiago de Chile. So Paul Wesley Corey, first two passes under his belt with uh, 16 and 14.25 meters. So he gave me like five slalom uh, rounds of uh, of skiing that he's uh, produced yeah, this season. Skied at the uh, Junior US Open, where he scored two and a half on 12 meters. He's a little ways away from that, however. He's on 30 meters now. And needing three on 12 in order to. Uh, to at least put himself in with a shot of uh, taking the lead. Paul Wesley Corey. Oh, nicely done off number four. He's good to go around number five, getting into one or two tricky situations there towards the end of the run. But uh, he's happy that he's able to get through that run and uh, Keeping on his successful streak of being able to get at least through 30 meters on every single uh, attempt of a slalom in tournament this season. Just being very patient at the end of the turn and allowing that ski to rotate as far as it uh, is designed to do. All he needs to do is just maintain his balance on the ski, get his position right, especially on that number five where he approaches it being left foot forward as uh, definitely has better balance on that side. So Paul Wesley Corey.
Here he comes. Oh, and not the best of starts on number one. Goes down on half a buoy on the 12 meter line. So half a buoy on 12 meters there for, uh, for Paul Wesley Corey. And getting pulled into the, into the uh, buoy and uh, getting rather narrow on his approach. So uh, unable to fully utilize the, uh, the angle that that ski uh, would have generated as a result. Skiing directly at number one. Not much angle or resistance uh, off his gate shot into number one. And that results in a uh, in a rather lackluster turn on half a buoy on 12 meters all right then patricio font from mexico will come up next actually mateo chinko is our next competitor to go i do beg your pardon and he also from mexico Okay, so skier on the water is Mateo Chico of Mexico. Here we go. Nicely done. Opening pass. That is uh, Mateo Chinko, or Chico, as uh, I would uh, I would say correctly. Nice opening run, and we'll see what he's got coming up next. I'm sure Matteo Chinko has an eye to what uh, what's coming up uh, this uh, next upcoming season. All right then, so Matteo Cinco, as I was saying, he has his eye on uh, on next season because uh, the U21 World Championships will take place in uh, in Chapala, in Mexico. So wanted to try and. Uh, Get a good score here and, uh, and keep his selection hopes very much uh, alive for that for that competition. Okay, so uh, Matteo Cinco looking very, very uh, precise there. He's gone through, uh, I believe, 16 and 14.25 meters. 13 meters is coming up next uh, for him. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the TWBC on the YouTube channel. You'll get live notifications when uh, when each event takes place, including the Junior World Championships, which will uh, take place in uh, in January of uh, next year. Okay, so okay, so he's gone through 14 and 13. This is now 12 meters. I beg your pardon. So coming in on the 12 meter line. 
Matteo Cinco. Ah, oh, good stuff there on number two. He's good to go round number three. He's taken the lead, provided he gets speeds of four, which he does. He's round number five. Can he make it round number six? Oh, oh, and he just about does it too, and he knows it. So, uh, Mexico's Mateo Chico. Six buoy count on 12 meters. Remarkable skiing. Drove that ski hard off buoy number one. Number two looked very, very impressive indeed. A right foot forward skier. And had to wait on that ski a little bit longer for, for it to rotate round on buoy number three. A little bit of a delay off number four. He was running out of time here off number five. And how close was he? Yes, very, very close there to being inside on number six. But he just about got that ski on the outside. And, and enough line control was present to where he could actually get through the exit gates to run that pass of 12. So he has now taken the lead. And because we have had a revision uh, to the starting list, uh, to the best of my understanding, uh, Patricio Font not competing in this event. So that actually uh, reduces the amount of skiers that will make it through to the final round from, uh, from six to five. Okay, looks like according to communication from uh, to and from the boat, uh, the, uh, the, the score is being reviewed. So just trying to make sure that he actually cleanly got round buoy number six. All right, let's take a look at the instant replay one more time. Yes, and uh, clearly getting round buoy number six there with the reverse angle showing us can, and confirming what we already know, a six buoy count there for, uh, for Matteo Chico. And now continuing on, it's six buoys. 12 meters now our first look at 11.25 meters in the u21 men's slalom competition this is mateo chico entrance gates number one gets a good start he's round number two does he continue on to three no not quite but it's one and one half on 11.25 meters one and one half on 11.25 meters from mateo chico which is actually equal to his best score all season long, that score being the one and a half at 11.25 meters that he produced at the Swiss Spring Classic earlier on this season in, uh, in May. So good, good skiing there. Obviously hoping for a little bit more than that, of course, but uh, he's taken the lead. All right, so now we move right along to our next competitor. This is Bradley Gibbons. So. All right then, so confirming from the dock, a 14.25 meter start. Good start there for Bradley Gibbons. 
Nice extension there on uh, on number three. Good approach into number four. Keeping everything flowing there around five and round number six. Opening pass, 14.25 meters. No worries there for him. So Bradley Givens, who seems to have done uh, the uh, the majority of his uh, of his events, actually all of the tournaments that he's uh, been to this season, according to the IWWF uh, uh, database, so far as his scoring is concerned, uh, almost every every single event that he's been to has uh, been in Alberta, in in Canada, and where he's uh, produced scores into 11.25 meters on about half a dozen occasions. Best of score all season long. Uh, five buoys, uh, well, actually half a buoy on 10.75 meters at the Canadian National Championships at Shalom Park in Edmonton, Alberta. So that's the kind of form that we're dealing with, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if he is equal to that task going forwards. This is Bradley Gibbons, age 21, so his uh, last uh, U21 tournament of uh, of eligibility here he comes Bradley Gibbons like his style out there good good skiing all the way through Bradley Gibbons Little on the back foot coming uh, coming across the wake off is a gate shot into number one, but he uh, holds the pressure off from the Malibu towboat effectively enough to get a good start on number one on his offside and then uh, then takes a neutral approach into his, uh, his onside turn and allows that ski to just fully rotate with a better handle turn on his 246 side. So good, good, strong effort there from Bradley Gibbons. Uh, 14 of 13 meters now, 12 meters comes up next. Here he comes, Bradley Gibbons. Good start on 12 meters. There you go on number four. Just absolutely hammering the boat. There you go, a six buoy count on 12 meters. Looked in a very precise form from start to finish. Going back to some of his performances back in 2021, he was uh, he got two and a half on 11.25 meters in the uh, the Western uh, the Canadian Western and Nationals uh, in August of last year. Looking back at some of his other performances, a smattering of scores on 30 meters on 12. So uh, within about the the last a season or two, he's uh, been able to produce some scores into 11.25 meters for the first time. In fact, I'm seeing scores uh, according to the IWWF uh, database on the EMS system that uh, that he's uh, that he's uh, produced uh, pre produced scores uh, fairly deep into 11.25 meters. Let's see if he can do so right here. In fact, he's run it once with half a buoy at 10.75 meters at the Canadian Nationals. Let's see if he can do it again. Round number two, he's good to go. Round number three, bulked on number three, but he gets halfway down 11.25 meters. He's taken the lead. That is uh, Bradley Gibbons with three at 11.25 meters. He'll be pretty impressed with that. 
and, uh, and should be uh, comfortably safe through to the next round of the competition. The top five out of uh, the originally slated 11 competitors on this list will make it through. We've had, uh, we've had two scratches so far, one of them uh, being Patricio Font and the other one being Vincente uh, Tiza. Therefore, five competitors make it through. And as we uh, see the instant replay there of uh, Bradley Gibbons going inside buoy number four. We're looking, uh, looking towards our remaining skiers to, uh, to determine who will make it through to the next round of the competition. So Bradley Gibbons uh, put in three at 11.25 meters next to his name. Three competitors remaining. I would say that... Uh, that Bradley Gibbons provisionally through to the uh, to the next round of the competition. He and uh, uh, Matteo Chico, Chico, of course. Three competitors left, five through. The top two are uh, are through to the next round of the competition, and uh, Chico and Gibbons advancing. Skier on the water, Gustavo Kretzmer of Chile. Good solid effort there, pass number one, 14.25 meters, just trying to get his eye in on that uh, slalom course that he's, uh, he's competed on on, for, uh, on so many occasions over the years. Gustavo Kretzmer. So Gustavo Kretzmer, a whole slew of scores that he's been able to produce this season, including that the uh, the recent uh, record capability tournament that was held here about, I would say, about a week and a half ago. Four and a half on 11.25 he produced in uh, the second round and uh, scored one and a half at 10.75 meters in the first round, which is which actually turns out to be his best score of the season all year long. So he has run 11.25 meters, albeit once uh, this season. And most of the scores that he's uh, produced have been into 11.25 meters. Little down course off number five, but he's still able to, uh, to take that pass down. He's gone through 14 and 13. Just looking at Gustavo again. Good, good, solid, stout skiing there from him. Just bringing the handle uh, low and on his inside there on buoy number four and managing to, to make a, uh, a serious impact on five and number six and working his way through. A little bit of exaggerated knee bend at the end of uh, number six to, uh, to slow the ski down enough. So the line tightens and he is able to get through the exit gates. So here we go, folks. Gustavo Kretzmer. This is 12 meters. Looking to get more than halfway down this run. He's already at that point. And he gets round all six there on 12. For Gustavo Kretzmer. That vaults him into, uh, into third place at this time. 
keeping his nose ahead of uh, Samuel uh, Weber. And he's still continuing to ski, however. Let's see how far he can get down 11.25 meters. Starting dock, we're seeing our penultimate uh, competitor, uh, Tobias Georges uh, from Argentina. Just getting ready for his turn out in the water. And here he comes, 11.25 meters, Gustavo Kretzma. First immediate target to move up the ladder is more than one and a half. Yes, and he gets more than that. Look at that. He's a... Uh, Wow, he loaded up a pretty good off, off number two, getting round number three and uh, scoring uh, two and one half at 11.25 meters. That vaults him into second place right now. Gustavo Kretzma, two and one half at 11.25 meters. Producing uh, that score there, and that's been about his average all season long, so... So he should be uh, reasonably pleased with that performance as he knows that that is uh, good enough to put him through to the next round of the competition. So still in the lead with a score of three at 11.25 meters is uh, Bradley Gibbons. Just ahead of Gustavo Kretzmer with two and one half at 11.25 meters and Matteo Gico with one and a half at 11.25 meters holding the third spot right now. Sam Weber on the outside looking in at this time with two competitors remaining. Here we go, this is uh, Tobias Georges. Skiing uh, for Argentina. And doing all right on the opening run. Getting around all six buoys on the opening pass of 14.25 meters. So, Tobias Georges representing Argentina at the, at the recent uh, World Games in, uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. Didn't slalom in that event, but he, but he, uh, but he tricked over 7,900 points and jumped a 62-meter uh, effort there. His slaloming, uh, for the most part this season, has been been pretty spectacular, getting into 10.75 meters on a number of occasions. And we'll see uh, what he can uh, he can produce as we look at Blaze Grubs on the dockside there, out of uh, out of Rio Linda in uh, in California from in the United States, and he'll be our last competitor out. Here we go, folks, to be assured. Nicely done. Getting around all six buoys, no, uh, no troubles there on 13 meters. Has that pass very, very much in hand.
So Tobias Georges, who, uh, who placed himself on the podium in the men's overall competition at the U21 World Championships, uh, the, the, the World Championships, which took place uh, last season in, uh, in 2021. That took place in Santa Rosa Beach in the panhandle of, uh, of Florida. To be a is uh, certainly a uh, skier out of Argentina that has uh, plenty of uh, pedigree. Let's see what he's got. And he's also eligible to ski in the upcoming U21 World Championships, which will take place in Chapala in Mexico uh, this, uh, this upcoming summer. Still only 20 years of age. Here he comes. Tobias Georges drops in hard on number two. This is 12 meters. Needing to get more than halfway down this run to uh, book his spot through to the next round. And uh, not content with going just halfway down, he wants to take the entire pass, and he does just that. Six buoy count for Tobias Georges. So there, one more time, getting round all six buoys and uh, just, just working his way meticulously towards the uh, the lead uh, lead scores. The lead is still three on 11.25 meters, courtesy of Bradley Gibbons. Here we go, Tobias Georges. Round number one gets a good start. Round now, oh no, and he blows the tail round buoy number two. Equals the score of uh, Mateo Chico uh, from, uh, from Mexico with one and a half at 11.25 meters. Took a huge risk on buoy number two and it didn't quite pay off. Right foot forward skier, just risked everything into that turn, brought the hand, brought his outside arm across his body and brought the handle up high, just absolutely, just, and just absolutely blows the tail. A left foot forward skier, I beg your pardon, which mean that, meant that that number two side turn was actually on his offside. Even so, he still brought his uh, outside hand on the handle just a little bit too soon. The weight distribution was, was all crooked coming towards the end and unfortunately unable to continue skiing beyond one and a half. One and one half and 11.25 meters is, is enough for uh, Tobias Georges. See him go through to the five skier final in the U21 men's slalom competition. Here we go. Last gear out from the United States is Blaze Grubs. There we go, Blaze Grubbs. Uh, superb looking effort there on uh, pass number one. That is 14.25 uh, meters, making that one look very, very uh, smooth indeed. And uh, just wanting to, uh, to take a, a smooth approach into this run, uh, get, uh, get a few of the, uh, the kinks out of his uh, system and then gets ready for the next run of 30 meters. Looking at his scores uh, all season long, gotten into 10.75 meters 
on a good few of his occasions out there on the water. Most of the time spent in uh, California, uh, a <laughs> native of uh, Rio Linda. Ski is on uh, one of the Belacqua uh, lakes, the Belacqua 2, as a matter of fact. And also uh, ventures out towards the Santa Rosa Beach on a few occasions during the course of the season to, to ski over there. Here we go, this is Blaze Grubs. Not much more you can say about this uh, run here from uh, from Blaze Grubs. He's gone through uh, 14 and 13. It looks very, very uh, smooth indeed. So smooth, smooth skiing there, especially off that number two. And just really, really hammering uh, number three and uh, getting a good, good, solid approach into number four. 30 meters, not a problem here for Blaze Grubs as he tries to work his way towards an appearance in the U21 Boys Slalom Final. <laughs> Uh, Blaze Grubs, much like Neely Ross, uh, the designated uh, dual event competitor, able to ski in U21 and uh, open uh, divisions. So this will not be the first time, this will not be the only time that we will see Blaze Grubs slalom today. Round number one, good to go. This is 12 meters. Round number three is in very, very good shape here. None, number four, five, no worries there. Six buoys for Blades Grubs. Only needed to get more than halfway down the 12 meter line to assure his future passage and uh, be part of the U21 men's slalom final tomorrow. He's done that, so he joins Tobias Georges, Gustavo Gretzmer, Bradley Gibbons, and Matteo Chico in no particular order. They are going to be making appearances tomorrow in the under-21 men's slalom final, but still continuing to ski and looking to try and... Uh, Boost his ranking going into that men's slalom final in the U21s, Blaze Grubs. So coming in, Blaze Grubs, 11.25 meters. Needs more than three for the lead here, gets the start that he wants. There he go, number two. He's there on number three. Takes a bite off four, which gives him the lead. Round number five, oh my word, and that ski just doesn't quite cooperate with him on number five, was looking to get set to run that. But a five buoy count on 11.25 meters. Completes his scoring and definitely puts him through to the next round of the competition without any shadow of a doubt. That concludes the, uh, the U21 men's slalom competition in the elimination round. And Blaze Grubs, as I mentioned before, joining Tobias Georges, Gustavo Gretzma, Bradley Gibbons, and uh, Mat Matteo Chico as competitors in that final, which will take place tomorrow. Looking at, taking a look at Blaze Grubs one more time with this instant replay. 
I mean, just absolutely picture perfect number one. No, no speed loss at all into that turn or out of it. Just skiing essentially one speed from one buoy to the next. No discernible up or down in terms of uh, acceleration or deceleration. But then he brought his outside arm towards the handle. It stopped the turn cold and uh, gave him the score of five buoys at 11.25 meters, which you see as the score at the very top of that leaderboard. Blaze Grubbs, 5 at 11. Bradley Gibbons, 3 at 11. Gustavo Kretzmer, 2.5 at 11. Matteo Chico with 1.5 at 11. In tied fourth with uh, Tobias Georges. In sixth place, Samuel Weber with 3 on 12. Ben Wheeler with 2.5 on 12. Uh, Paul Wesley uh, Corey with uh, with a half on 12 and Mickey Geller with two and a half on 30 meters. Next event uh, we'll take out there on the water is the Open Women's Slalom Elimination Round. The names you see up on the, uh, the screen. All right, and uh, when we come back, we'll bring to you the running order for Series 2 uh, for, the, for the Open uh, Women. We're, uh, we'll have that event coming up to you next as we continue on the 2022 Pan American Water Ski Championships. And we'll be back right after these. Times, how about you? Yeah, I got to set in. Uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here. Oh, of course. Can you get that, Will? Yeah, man, I got it. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Will. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got those in stock. All right, then, returning to continuing coverage of the 2022 Pan American Water Ski Championships. And my name's Tony Lightfoot. Uh, glad to have the pleasure of your company once again. All right, then, the, uh, the Open Women Series 2 uh, slalomers uh, consist of uh, uh, Manuela Jaramillo, followed by Emilia Vara of uh, Chile, uh, Violeta Mikulski of, uh, of Argentina, then uh, Christiana uh, de Osma from Peru, Erica Lang from the United States, and uh, Taryn Grant of uh, Canada. Because he's in, he's in, he's in under 21 and open, all three of us. Well, he's going to get his skiing caught up. Yeah. 
Bueno, tercero, una brisita de frente, de cola casi no hay. Sobre todo, ahí está el gay. ¿Sabes qué? Ay, me va a probar. No sabía, la semana pasada. Desde la primera fecha quiero que quiero que era solo progresivo, pero salí. Ya es progresivo y no sé. Está la brisita que está justo. Como que al desastre, yo creo. Pero seguilo. Seguilo porque si no, ¿cómo hiciste? ¿Cómo que esto está? All right, so. First gear about to take to the water. Just wait for the uh, for the green light to be given by our officials uh, to uh, to get that uh, done. And well, Jaramillo, our first competitor, out. All right, coming in on the open pass is 16 meters at 55k. Women's Slalom Series 2. Open women's competition. Manuela Jaramillo. Looking good for the most part and gets around all six. So good, good skiing there for her. Manuela Jaramillo is breaking that ski into the turn. Looking good on the opening pass of 16 meters. No worries there for her. The next line length for, for, uh, for her going forwards is going to be 14.25 meters. So there are two series of uh, open women's slalom. We've got six skiers in uh, in this one. We've got seven on the other. So uh, seven skiers will actually make their way through to the open women's slalom final. number one oh and getting in a little bit deep on that pass there of 14.25 meters just unable to keep a rhythm going Start wasn't that bad, although she did look up early on buoy number two, sliding past number two. But just dipping in just a little bit too soon and unable to hold her position all the way to number four. So it's going to be a three buoy count. So uh, Manuela Jaramillo whose uh, best score of the season uh, has been uh, three on 13, uh, 13 meters. Won't be getting anywhere close to that this time around. So uh, that was uh, Manuela. Next competitor to go is Amelia Vara, and uh, she comes to us out of Chile. We'll get the, uh, the particulars on her in just a moment so far as uh, starting line length. It's going to be 16 meters at 55k. Coming right through there. Hi. 
Yep, looking strong. Yeah, that was Amelia Vara. Hasn't skied that many times uh, this season in competition, but uh, the times that she has uh, performed has be have been uh, mostly into 14.25 metres uh, with the one outstanding score with a one on 30 metres. That took place at a tournament here, actually, uh, in October, so well over a month ago now. So, Amelia Vara. So, here is your top, uh, here's your format, preliminary and final. The top seven scores out of, uh, out of this uh, category move on to the final. Irrespective of what series uh, that score or performance came out of. Here we go, folks. This is Amelia Vara. Bringing the handle down very, very quickly. Oh, and even quicker there on number two. She barely gets outside number three. She won't make it outside number four. So we've got a tie for the lead at this time between Manuela Jaramillo and Emilia Vara with three on 14.25 meters. And looking at some of the previous scores that... Uh, that Amelia had, had produced uh, about halfway down, 14.25 metres. This would appear to be uh, about her average at this time. Right then, so we're on to skiing number three. Okay, coming into the course, 14.25 meters. Violetta Mozuski, a skier who's spending uh, much of her time right now studying at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Representing Argentina here, Violetta Molzuski. Take a look at some of her previous scores uh, in, uh, in record tournament this season. Skied in the October record in uh, Zachary, Louisiana, and uh, scored uh, two buoys on 12 meters. Scored two and a half on that same line length a little earlier on in the season in, in October. And then looking a little further down, we saw a, see a smattering of scores into 12 meters, uh, the best of which being three from a, uh, from a tournament over in Lymanland uh, in June of this year. And uh, Lymanland was, uh, was the host of the Malibu Open uh, this season. You can actually re-watch the, uh, the action at the Malibu Open by going to the TWBC YouTube channel. Search for it, for, search for that, and uh, check out the, uh, the previous action from that tournament that came to us uh, from uh, Alabama. Violetta Mikulski. Nice. Solid skiing there for Violetta. Oh. 
And they're uh, taking a look there at uh, Violetta's style and technique. So coming in on uh, on the next line length of uh, coming back on 12 meters, it's going to be Violetta uh, so. Uh, Violetta Mozuski coming into the course right now. 14 and 13, uh, she's, uh, she's run at this time. This is now 12. Pretty much every final score that she's had so far this season in competition have been on 12 meters, and she continues that streak here into the Pan American Championships. She's round number three. Does she get to the wake? Yes, she takes the lead with three buoys on 12 meters. Violetta doing a, a grand, grand job out there with that score halfway down the run. 12 metres, no worries there for her. Oh, taking a big old hit there off number one, but stayed aggressive into number two. And then made a straight path for number three. Got, got the ski outside number three and then ski to the wakes. And uh, remarkable skiing there for her. And that's uh, been about to about where she's uh, ended up scoring. Actually uh, equals to her best uh, score all season long. As I mentioned before, her best score was three on 12. So she's equaled that. So well done to her. So Violetta Mikulski of, uh, of Argentina. In a very, very strong position there. All right, take a quick look at the leader. We'll take a quick look at the uh, the start list. Cristiana de, de Osma will be our uh, next competitor. Quick look at the leaderboard shows. Violetta will, uh, will take the lead ahead of Jaramillo and Vara. And when we return, we'll bring our Peruvian skier out to the water next. I'm involved with the Flowpoint Method because I think it's a really strong program. We've been working on a couple things and it's just fine tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. All right, so skier on the water, Cristiana de Osma from Peru. So Cristiana de Osma, who actually uh, competed earlier on in this uh, competition in the U17s. Now also competing in the open competition. There you go, good looking opening pass, 14.25 meters, no worries there.
employing some uh, methodical technique uh, off uh, off one, three, and five, uh, keeping her, uh, her arms bolt straight out and just trying to rotate underneath them. And uh, getting through 14.25 meters, and we'll see what she's got on 13. So as we look out towards the dock, we see Erica Lang. So there you go, good, good skiing there from uh, Christiana de Osma, uh, round all six on the 13 meters. Looking in very, very good shape there. And uh, as I mentioned, skied a little bit earlier on in the competition and produced uh, some, uh, some pretty decent uh, uh, slalom scores at, uh, at that time as well. But uh, we'll certainly need to uh, to pile on more pressure here in order to uh, keep her nose out in front and uh, put her in a position where she could be slaloming in the open women's uh, competition. But it's uh, it's a little early to uh, to gauge who will make it through at this time because there are seven skiers in uh, women's uh, series one and uh, we've still got two skiers to go in uh, in series two i know i was like why are we waiting everybody should be jumping <laughs> So, as, uh, as the wind starts to pick up, and uh, it is a headwind on the, uh, on the even-numbered passes, including this one, uh, the odd-numbered passes, I beg your pardon. Here we go, Christiana de Osma. Skiing into a bit of a headwind here on 13 metres. She's gone through 16 and 14. This is now 13. And right on track there. So working her edges, working everything that she needs uh, to uh, to keep on a positive uh, track here towards the end of the slalom course. She's gone through 16 and 14 and 13 meters. Uh, looks in very, very good shape indeed. All right, now she's gotten the first three passes under her belt. What does she have on pass number four? It's gonna be the 12 meter line. Uh, looking at her uh, best performances this season, she's been into 12 meters uh, almost every time that she's that she's gone out at least, and has had a smatter of her scores into 11.25 meters as well. Best of those scores being two, but let's see if she can get past 12 first. It's going to be a bit of a tall order with the tailwind uh, behind her. That's producing some slack off number three, which she was able to get under a belt. There we go, she's good to go round number four. Yes, here she goes, a round buoy number six on 12. Wonderful, wonderful pass, especially with the tailwind. Wow, great, great skin. I think she's even surprised that she did that herself. So 12 meters, grand, grand skiing there. And just round the turn and uh, round and round number two now. Normally what, uh, what would typically happen there for Christiana de Osma is uh, she wouldn't actively try to bring that ski round and uh, put it on a, on a positive edge towards number three, would wait on the line on, uh, for her and then, uh, then went, went after that. 
However, she, she made uh, a more positive motion off number two, got round number three, was early enough for the remaining buoys of the slalom course, run through that pass, effectively uh, took out the, the slack line that would inevitably appear on a pass that was run with the wind behind you. So here we go. Optimal conditions now. Headwind, 11.25 meter run. If she can get past two, it would be a best score of the season. There's one. And uh, tries to make a play on number two. Whoa. And I don't know if she actually made it round buoy number two, but she certainly waited before she took the slack of the line and skied for the weight. Now, this is going to provide us with our best view uh, to determine whether she actually made it round the second buoy. The first buoy didn't look too bad. Good, good start. Good line management. Then barrels in towards number two. Yes, cleanly outside number two. Waits on the line. Skis rapidly towards the wakes to make sure that she got ahead of the, bo ahead of the boat guides. And there it is. There it is. That is... Christiana de Osma with two buoys at 11.25 meters. So she takes the lead in the slalom competition in the open women's category. There she is ahead of uh, Mikulski, ahead of uh, Jaramillo and Lavara. We got two skiers to go in uh, the open women's series too. And when we return, we'll bring on Erica Lang next. Right then, opening pass for our penultimate competitor in the women's Series 2 slalom. It's going to be Erica Lang. So when it comes down to, uh, to trick skiing, uh, the name Erica Lang very, very high up there in the consciousness of most people. World record holder, world champion in, uh, in on one or two past occasions. Look at this, Erica Lang, opening pass, 60 meters on the slalom lake, beautifully executed, nicely done. So far as her best scores are concerned, she's certainly no slouch there on the slalom course either. With scores are recorded into 11.25 meters on a uh, on a fairly frequent basis. And Erica Lang, as a matter of fact, uh, has a uh, has a pending uh, world uh, world tricking record. Uh, up for uh, for ratification uh took uh, the, she uh, produced that score of 11 250 uh not too long ago at uh, the uh, the sunset fall classic and actually had uh, exactly the same score at the the fluid uh, summer showdown uh, in june of this year so far as tricking is concerned but uh, let's see if we can concentrate a little bit more so far as a slalom performance uh, is uh, is concerned 
As I said, she's gone into 11.25 meters on a number of occasions. And uh, looking down and seeing uh, her best result is around two on 11.25 meters. And two on 11.25 meters is indeed the current top score, courtesy of a Cristiana de Osma of Peru. She's going to have to take the long way there because she started it on 16 meters. That was 14 coming back. So a native of uh, Gilbert in Arizona. Working these days as a, a farm in pharmaceutical cells. Certainly doing pretty well by all accounts. If you excuse the pun. And there you go. Six buoys round uh, on that 14.25 meter line pass. So there is your uh, current leaderboard. De Osmar in the lead with two at 11.25 minutes. Mikulski with, uh, with three on 12. And uh, Manuela Jaramillo and Emilia Vara both tying with three on 14.25 meters. Seven skiers making it to the next round out of the eliminations. This is 13. Probably not uh, not one of our tallest land skiers in this event, but she's incredibly effective and uh, is able to turn uh, like you wouldn't believe out there, but uh, goes part and parcel with uh, being a, a top class uh, water ski uh, tricker. tricker. Former high level uh, gymnast. Only a few uh, few steps behind uh, Olympic uh, level. And certainly using all of that flexibility and all that strength gained from many, many years of uh, gymnastic training and, uh, and also training uh, in, the, in the other events in which it competes in. Obviously, more known for a trick than anything else, but she is quite an effective uh, jumper and indeed a slalomer as well. Here comes Erica Lang from the United States of America. Good heart. Oh, Again, in a little bit deep there on number three and uh, just not getting the uh, the rhythm and, uh, and everything working for her in that direction on uh, 12 meters. Head uh, tailwind on that pass there, which uh, does complicate matters, especially when it comes to bleeding speed off uh, into the entrance gates. Just didn't quite get the approach needed into number one and lost that connection and uh, things didn't help on uh, on number two then try to s turn away out of it and uh, to no avail so it's going to be two and a half on the 12 meter line two and a half on 12 meter line that puts her just marginally behind uh, violetta mikulski two and one half on 12 meters last competitor in series two uh, women's slalom in the open women's competition will be Taryn Grant. There's our remaining skier on the start list for this series and uh, Taryn Grant ready to take to the water. All right, working our way down towards the end of the list in the open women's slalom. We've still got seven skiers to go after this series. 
We've got the likes of uh, Valentina Gonzalez and Kennedy Hansen and Anna Gay and Neely Ross and Paige Reaney, Whitney McClintock Reaney and uh, Regina Jaquis. Looks like she's going to come into the course, yes, on 13 metres, opener. Try not to leave too much to chance out there of 13 metres. Certainly a pass that she's capable of running. Looking good though. Looking to try and put the, uh, the wind in her face uh, by the time she gets to 11.25 metres. That's the plan. Wind is still very much a factor here at uh, Laga Los Maros. The, uh, the wind uh, coming from a direction where it also brings a little bit of uh, cooler temperatures as well. Here we go. So far in this Open Women's Slalom competition, only one person has run through 12 meters. And that is Christiana de Osma. She ran it from this di uh, She uh, ran it from that direction. And it looks like uh, true to form, uh, Taryn Grant getting through a 13 and 12 meters in successive passes. And now uh, getting her eyes set for the next run which will be 11.25 meters. Canada's Taryn Grant. So folks, let's have a look at some of the, uh, the scores that she's uh, produced this season. She's had a couple of uh, instances where she skied into 10.75 meters. And that's what she's looking to produce here. She's, her strategy uh, called for uh, an 11.25 meter run to be uh, done into the wind. And that's certainly gonna help her out. Best score at 10.75 meters this season for a Taryn Grant has been two. not put the cart in front of the horse so much as we concentrate on 11.25 meters here she comes Taryn Grant round number one decent start round number two she's still down course a little bit round number four. Oh, and tries to pick up the pace a little bit but unfortunately unable to uh, to do that and uh, get two and one half two and a half buoys at 11.25 meters, that puts her marginally in front of uh, Christiana de Osma. And being ahead of uh, Christiana de Osma means that she's taken the lead with uh, the entirety of the Series 1 uh, women's uh, competitors to go. And only seven make it through to the next round of the competition. So Taryn Grant, by taking the lead with that many skiers left, has therefore established the bar. To which the... Uh, which means that a score of 3 and 11 at 11.25 meters would be needed in order to advance. Here is our current leaderboard after Series 2. Then we see Amelia Vara in fifth place, tied with uh, Manuela Jaramillo. Fourth place, uh, uh, Erica Lang with 
two and a half on 12. Valita Mikulski with uh, three on 12. Christiana de Osmar with two on 11. And with two and a half on 11 is Taryn Grant. We'll return in just a moment uh, after we have a look at the list of, of our remaining skiers in the the Open Women's Series 1. We've got Valentina, Valentina Gonzalez to take to water first, followed by Kennedy Hansen, Anna Gay from the United States, a trio of Canadians starting with Neely Ross, Paige Reaney, and ended off with Whitney McClintock Reaney. And then our final competitor out in Series 1 in the Open Women's Slalom Competition is going to be none other than Regina Jaquis. No time to lose. Valentina Gonzalez on the water. So, the cut score is three at 11.25 meters. Fourteen point two five meter start, which would put eleven point two five meters for her with the tailwind, should she get that far. So looking at that, and that's Valentina Gonzalez, and, uh, and Valentina also for her part is uh, is a, a viable overall uh, competitor as is uh, a good portion of the remaining skiers on this list in Open Women's uh, Series 1, including the likes of uh, Kennedy Hansen and, uh, and, Re and Regina Jaquis, along with Paige Reaney. They're looking to see where the, uh, where the overall title uh, will, be, will be heading, but we're on event number one of three, so a little premature to talk about uh, the uh, the overall uh, competition in at the, at this time but uh, always need to keep an eye open for uh, for what could potentially happen going forward all right so uh, valentina gonzalez out of chile scores uh, that she's recorded this season have been in a lot of them have been into 11.25 meters but as far as i can see not one of them has been more than halfway down that pass so she would effectively have to produce a season's best score in order to uh, to unseat uh, taryn grant from uh, the lead position at this time so there we go, Valentina Gonzalez through 14 and 13, and now getting ready for 12. So a skier out of Chile and uh, still at uh, university uh, skiing for the uh, for the moccasins of. Uh, Florida Southern College. As a matter of fact, uh, she uh, she has about another uh, semester to go of studies before she graduates. Valentina Gonzalez yesterday very graciously uh, took uh, the uh, the guest microphone and uh, took us through uh, some of the uh, the jumping competitors uh, uh, ye yesterday or the day before. Thank her for her efforts in that regard. Let's see what uh, Val Gonzalez has by way of this pass attempt at 12 meters. Good push out there for the uh, entrance gate. Round one, oh, a little bit backwards on the ski. Round number number two. Now she's really going to have to work hard on this one and try to get ahead a little bit on number two. Slap in the water, realizing that the gig is up. So it looks like it's going to be two and a half. It's going to be two and a half on 12 meters. And that means that our first finalist is confirmed with six skiers remaining. It is Taryn Grant. 
And just looked completely out of sorts going into number one there, uh, Valenti uh, Valentina Gonzalez on 12, working against uh, the headwind, which should have provided a little bit of an advantage for her, but unfortunately trying to get ahead of the line and uh, the ski maker contact and down she goes. So now that drops the score to two and a half in order to advance two and a half. On 11.25 meters in order to advance. So there we go. That is Valentina Gonzalez and our next skier up to take to the water. A skier from the United States of America, it is going to be Kennedy Hansen. So with that score from Valentina Gonzalez, it means that the, the cut line has dropped from, uh, from three buoys at 11.25 meters to, uh, to anything more than two at 11.25 meters. That score of two at 11.25 meters belongs to uh, Christiana de Osma. All right then, we'll return right after this. Right there, now on top of the water and get ready for pass number one. This is going to be Kennedy Hansen. Kennedy Hansen, part of the Raging Cajun water ski team at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. A team that has uh, recently won its uh, ninth national championship title. And certainly a, uh, a crucial part of uh, that, uh, that team win was the overall efforts of, uh, of Kennedy Hansen, who we see go through on the opening pass, which I believe was on 14.25 meters. Just looking in very, very good shape indeed. Just allowing the ski to rotate underneath her. And Kennedy Hansen has certainly had uh, uh, plenty of uh, wins, plenty of opportunities uh, to win in uh, competitions such as the World U21s uh, last season in Santa Rosa Beach. All right. All right, Mario Pagozzi. At the helm of that towboat. Kennedy Hansen, 30 meters further back. Round number one, good, good strike on number two, excellent. Round number three, brings it on home into number four. 
A little off balance into number four, mind you, but managing to uh, to get back into decent shape and ski all the way through that pass of 13 meters. So just looking at her pass once again, it just looks very, very smooth and almost effortless from uh, from one uh, one buoy to the next. through us out of Milton in uh, Florida in the uh, northern part of, uh, of that state. Specifically from Escambia County. Here comes Kennedy Hansen. Just looking at some of the scores that she has uh, produced this season uh, from uh, a couple of different databases, one of them being the IWWF, the other one being the AWSA uh, scoring database, and uh, shows that she's had uh, a pretty even smattering of scores uh, on uh, 12 meters and 11.25. The best score on 11.25 meters when she's uh, when she's gotten there is uh, is three. But looking in very, very good uh, uh, shape there on top of her ski. Just making sure that her hips are far enough forward so that when the line goes tight, she is in the optimal stack position behind the boat and, uh, and follows along with the angle generated out of that slalom ski so she can effectively slingshot from one buoy to the next. So she's gone for... So she's uh, gone through 14, 13, and 12 into the wind, deciding to put 11.25 meters with the wind behind her. As we take a first look there, Anna Gay, as she gets ready to, uh, to take to the water. Let's see what Kennedy Hansen could do. She needs to get more than two to advance. Entrance, buoy number one, gets the one. Oh, and does she get round two? I believe she does. Good, good skiing there from Kennedy Hansen. I'm not too sure why she didn't try to turn number two, but it is what it is. So it's going to be a two buoy count there for Kennedy Hansen. So good number one, and the approach into number two didn't look too bad, but unfortunately it didn't, didn't try to turn that ski on number two and uh, making do with a two buoy count at 11.25 meters. Maybe she saw or felt something that was just didn't, wasn't right. Bringing the handle up high, a little bit off number one. Maybe that was that was it, or maybe that uh, her her extension into buoy number two was bringing her too close to the tip of the, uh, the ski, and she ends up with a score of two on 11.25 meters. So she's going to have to play the weight game. at this time two buoys 11.25 meters is a tie with Christiana de Osma in the meantime on 14.25 meters is Anna Gay
decent looking opening pass, no no two ways about it. So great skiing from uh, from Anna Gay, who comes to us out of Winter Garden in uh, in Central Florida. Recent graduate of the uh, the University of Alabama. And uh, currently a realtor these days. So there we go. That is uh, Anna Gay, two-time world women's trick champion, multiple-time uh, world champion in uh, in the junior events, in, including the uh, the U21 when she was el eligible to ski in those categories, of course. Right on the money with that pass. Once again, that is uh, Anna Gay. So Anna Gay, yes, uh, out of Win of Garden once again. Taking a look at some of her slalom scores uh, during the course of the season. It's been very, very consistent through the 12 meter line of which that, that pass is going to be the next one that will be uh, be on her uh, her agenda next. Her scores on 11.25 meters uh, have ranged from half a buoy all the way up to four buoys on 11 and uh, one on a, one occasion this season actually got through 11.25 meters and registers a score of half at 10.75. So coming into the course and selecting a 12 meter pass into the headwind. This now is Anna Gay. Entrance number one. Brings the handle in nice and low. Little bit broken over on number two, but she's still there on number three. Continues to rock it on number four, and she will run 12 meters. Good tight line skiing there from her. And now the, uh, the big question is, how far does she get down 11.25 meters? To put herself in a position outright to to ski into the final she would need to get past number two to do that for absolute certainty currently the only confirmed skier that we had outright that is uh, going to be making an appearance into the slalom final is uh, Taryn Grant with her score of uh, three buoys on 11.25 meters Actually, two and a half and 11.25 meters, I'm, I beg your pardon. Three is what's needed to take the lead, of course. But, and I'm sure that uh, she is trying to aim for that. And three appears to be her average, whether it's the score that she produced at the Malibu Open or at the, uh, the Auburn Fall Tournament or even the America's Cup Invitational that took place in Mays in Kansas. Here we go. This is Anna Gay. Round number one, getting broken over a little bit. Round number, oh, and bulks up on two. So now we have got a pack jam of skiers with two on 11.25 meters. Wow. Didn't see this one coming. Christina De Osma, Kennedy Hansen, and Anna Gay all tying with two at 11.25 meters.
So as we work our way down towards the uh, the bottom uh, bottom half of this running order, it's uh, certainly proving to be quite dramatic. Right then, so coming into the course on 13 meters for our opening pass, this is Neely Ross. Already skied earlier on in this competition. So there we go, good, good skiing there from Neely Ross. 13 meter start. So deciding to go on 13 meters in this round as she went in on 14.25 meters in the U21 slalom round. By going in on 14.25 meters in the U21 round, it put, uh, put her with the, the tailwind on 11.25 meters but uh, this time around, deciding to go in on 13 meters, that puts the 11.25 meters as a headwind run. So that is her strategy going forward. She knows that she wants to try and get a little bit more by way of an advantage uh, through, uh, through wind strategy. And there you see the leaderboard, uh, Taryn Grant with two and a half and 11.25 meters. And then we've got three skiers uh, clamoring for two spots uh, available at this time to make it through to the next round of the competition. 12 meter pass, tailwind, a very, very important pass here. Here comes Neely Ross, round buoy number one. Can't afford to make too much of a foot wrong here on 12 meters. Wind strategy is one thing, but you've got to be able to get through the uh, preliminary passes to make that a reality. And there you go, yeah, there she goes. Six buoys, 12 meters, and now she has a shot at 11.25 meters. So Neely Ross, in order to make it through to the next round of the competition, effectively has to get a piece of three on 11.25 meters. Taryn Grant, the only skier that we see thus far with two and a half at, uh, at 11.25 meters, is absolutely guaranteed an outright spot through to the next round of the competition. There are two additional spots beyond her available uh, for uh, for two out of the uh, the three skiers that have run two at 11.25 meters. So there could be a potential runoff situation. We'll see how that uh, pales out, uh, how that pans out. Christiana de Osma, Kennedy Hansen, and Anna Gay all tying on two. Two and a quarter she needs at the very least, Neely Rost in order to advance. Oh, she's round number one, she's round number two. Does she get outside number three? Yes, she does, she's through. Does she make it round number four? She... I don't know, the officials are gonna have to take a look at that one. We're gonna take a look at this, uh, this run here from, uh, from Neely Ross. She gets the score necessary in order to advance through to the next round and probably takes the lead with that score. She gets round buoy number two. We're going to take a look at buoy number three. A little bit of a delay there. She, uh, she checked up on that number two, as a matter of fact, to make sure that uh, she was stable enough to get round number three. And uh, wow, and uh, I believe she got round number four. Does she get to the wakes in time? Yes, she does. 
four buoys at 11.25 meters. Looking a little bit dejected there. I mean, she, uh, she wanted to get, uh, get the start in order to run the pass. Nothing wrong with being ambitious, of course. But uh, the main job is to make it through to the final, and that's exactly what she did. It took a heck of a turn run at round number three to make that happen. We'll get the score, the official score from our officials in just a moment, but uh, it is four. Four from our officials, and uh, Neely Ross takes the lead. Three skiers remaining. We're going to see Whitney McClintock, Rainey, and Regina Jaquis take to the water in a few minutes. But before them, we will see Paige Rainey. All right then, folks, here we go. We got Paige Reaney coming into the course of 14.25 meters for opening run, setting up an 11.25 meter pass attempt with the wind. Strong effort on the first couple of buoys on 14.25 meters. Adrini, who has skied extensively in tournament this season. And has had scores, a uh, smattering of scores into 10.75 meters. Has skied really, really consistently this season. A number of pro events such as the Mastercraft Pro, the California Pro-Am Hilltop, Malibu Open, San Gervasio, Botaski. I mean, I mean, she's she's certainly one of the uh, the more, more prolific uh, professional women slam skiers in the world today, and uh, getting into 10.75 meters on a number of different occasions. So she's definitely got the uh, the chops uh, for uh, for this. And uh, we'll see if she can uh, get the score necessary. She needs more than two to guarantee herself a spot through to the next round of the competition. Seven slots are available for our uh, our women's slant skiers to make it through to the final. Two of them have been occupied. For certain, that's Needy Ross and Taryn Grant. And uh, Pedrini out there uh, trying to get amongst that number herself. All right, so looking at the Pedrini here and just working that uh, radar uh, vapor pro build from one side of the course to the next. Keeping everything on an even kill. Top of the water right now and uh, getting ready to uh, to come into the course uh, with uh, 12 meters into the wind. Very, very important pass are coming up.
Oh, 12 meters. Uh, she's uh, letting this go down course uh, on, a, on a couple of those turns, but uh, managing to, uh, to make up for lost time effectively. We have a couple of uh, excellent turns towards the, the last third of that run. We see uh, Whitney McClintock Reaney uh, getting ready for, uh, for her go out there on the water. She will be our next competitor up. Certainly there was a little cause for concern here with Paige Reaney with some of that, some of, some of those turns are resulting with the handle riding up a little high on her, uh, on her body and including that delay off her number three into four. But I think she's, uh, she's so experienced out there on the water that even, even one or two anomalies out there aren't enough to, uh, to completely phase her out on the water. That is uh, Paige Reaney. So Whitney McClintock Greeny, yeah, just trying to uh, to get into a, a good a good place, a good frame of mind before she heads out onto the water. So now we're on 11.25 meters. So Paige Greeny has set this up for an 11.25 meter run with the wind. Round one, there she goes. Round number two, she gets the two. She gets outside number three. She's through to the next round. She's round number four. She wants this run and unfortunately will come up short of running 11.25 meters. Looks like she won't, uh, she won't get outside five, but uh, looks like it's going to be a four buoy count. Ties up the lead with a fellow Canadian, uh, Neely Ross, on four on 11.25 meters. So it'll be a toss up between those two to decide who leaves the dock uh, uh, one before the other. So just getting. Getting a little bit out of shape there on number four and unfortunately unable to get outside number five. So it is a four buoy count for Paige Rini. That guarantees her a spot. So the only skiers that have made it through to the final so far are all Canadian. How'd you like that? And there's still the specter of a, of a multiple way runoff situation between three competitors. Those three competitors it's being like Kennedy Hansen, Anna Gay, and Christiana De Osma. And uh, coming in on 13, 13 meters and thus setting up the 11.25 meter run into the wind. This is Whitney McClintock Reaney. There, Whitney McClintock Reaney takes the opening pass, 13 meters. Not looking too bad on 13 meters. Just enough time for me to, to tell you that uh, one the, one of the latest podcasts uh, to uh, to come out of a TWBC, the TWBC podcast features Matt and Whitney McClintock Reaney interviewed together at the same time. You can actually listen to that podcast on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and iHeart Podcast, and that podcast is being published right now so uh, in the next few moments you'll be able to listen to that and uh, check up on their perspective and uh, and how they feel about the future going forward amongst the many other topics TWBC podcast listen to it on Spotify here we go Whitney McClintock Reaney needs to run 12 meters to set herself up for an 11.25 meters attempt. It's been skiing very, very uh, well throughout the, in, uh, throughout the course of the season. Mm -hmm. 
So finished third on the Water Ski Pro Tour during the course of the season. Former world champion, former two-time world slalom champion. And it's been an absolute beacon of consistency throughout uh, the entirety of the season. Ski to the Miami Pro where she got one at 10.25 meters. Has been into 10.25 meters on a number of occasions, including halfway down that run, as far as I can see. Or almost halfway down, again, two at 10.25 meters at the Travis Grand Prix. But uh, the, the one uh, title which she covets uh, the, the most out of all of the ones that she has this season was the the Skier of the Day Award, which she, uh, which she won at the Swiss Pro Slalom, courtesy of 2U Nutritional Snacks. Needs more than two, and uh, needs more than two buoys, needs two and a quarter at the very least to advance. She gets round buoy number one. She's round number two, nice slide on number two. Good to go on number three. She's through to the next round. She's round number four, look at her go. Good, good aggression here. And here she comes, there we go. Whitney McClintock really through 11.25 meters. The first time that we've seen that in this event. And uh, that definitely advances her through to the next round of the competition. And gives her the lead with one competitor to go. And of course, it probably goes without saying that, uh, that Kennedy Hansen, Anna Gay, and uh, Christiana de Osma need to start making their way back towards uh, the slalom dot because the prospect of a runoff for the remaining places through to the slalom final, the open women's slalom final, is definitely a possibility. Coming in, 10.75 meters. Entrance, buoy number one. Wow. Round number two at 10.75 meters. She's running this with the tailwind. Look at this. She's round number four. Does she make it outside five? Not quite, but there you go. Great, great skin. And it really sets a, a, a target for our last competitor to, uh, to attack. It's a score of four at 10.75 meters. And uh, that belongs to Whitney mcclintock Rini. So just looking at this wonderful, wonderful skiing there from Whitney McClintock Greeny towards the end. So here we go, folks, our uh, last skier to go in the Open Women's Slalom Competition in the Pan American Water Ski Championships elimination round. This is Regina Jaquist. So Regina Jaquist, one of the most consistent slalomers in all of the world, men or women. 
Good looking opening pass and uh, getting uh, get around all six buoys on 13 meters, uh, setting herself up with the uh, the headwind for 11.25 uh, meters. Needing more than two buoys in order to advance on 11.25 meters and uh, just looking at uh, the scores on the entirety of the season. Absolutely consistent from uh, from start to finish. Scores that start with uh, with 10 and end in either 10.75 or 10.25 meters. Current world record holder, former multiple time world slalom champion and world overall champion to boot. And only a few months away from uh, from actually uh, taking off uh, that uh, that knee brace and slalom uh, unimpeded uh, without it, and uh, actually returned to jump in action at the Malibu Open uh, this this past October. Regina Jaquis, who uh, who injured her knee in uh, May of last uh, season, uh, preparing for the uh, the Masters water ski competition, rehabbed extraordinarily quick to uh, to compete in last uh, season's visit Lake County, Florida IWWF World Water Ski Championships. Uh, has done a fine job uh, this season in uh, staying consistent and uh, being amongst the uh, the very best out there on the water in the slalom event. Just look at that uh, fantastic turn on her uh, on her onside. I mean, she's uh, she skis a. Uh, very evenly from uh, from one side to the next and probably one of the reasons why she is the very best out there and uh, skiing on that to good slant ski which uh, she has uh, been on for many many seasons right now a uh, brand ambassador for uh, for that company we certainly uh, thank good for their support here at the pan american water ski championships along with our other sponsors needs more than two on this next line length, this pass, in order to advance. Coming in 11.25 meters, round buoy number one, not too much of a delay there, round number two, she's good to go there. A piece of three is good, she's through to the next round, no worries there. Mission one complete, mission two, get through 11, and she does just that. So that confirms the uh, so that confirms the runoff between Kennedy Hansen, Anna Gay, and Christiana De Osma. Three skiers for two remaining spots, and they should be on dockside around about now. So as soon as uh, Regina Jaquis gets done, then we will take them straight out to determine the top two two skiers out of the three to advance in spots four and uh, spots six and seven. Already the top five spots belong to Taryn Grant, Neely Ross, Paige Rini, Winnie McClintock Rini, and Regina Jaquis. Uh, the hook, yeah, it gets measured when she comes back, but we'll get, yep. yeah, it's, it's fine, when she comes back, it's fine. Okay. All right then, so here we go, and uh, we're looking at the uh, the starting dock right now. It looks like they've already uh, tossed the coin. And it looks like Christiana De Osmar is going to be the first person out in the runoff situation, but let's have a look at Regina Jaquis. The, uh, the best score that we've seen so far from Whitney McClintock Rainey is four. Look at that turn on number two. She is early as you like into number three. Four buoys so far. Does she make it outside five? Yes, she does. Does she make the run? Oh, my word. How far back was she on that ski and still able to run it? Regina Jake Worth. <laughs> wow. 
Fantastic skiing there, always in the hunt. As long as she's still got the handle in her hand, she always has a chance and always creates them no matter what. Regina Jaquis, fantastic skiing round buoy number one. So Regina Jaquis, who ended up uh, being a second on the Water Ski Pro Tour, the, the season-long uh, Pro Tour for water skiing. You can find out more by going to waterskiprotour.com, waterskiprotour.com to find out more. And there is Regina Jaquis uh, looking at it from our opposing view from the starting dock and a fantastic effort once again, just absolutely on fire. So she is, uh, she's in first. She'll be last off that dock. Now we are on for 10.25 meters. She set herself up with the headwind. She's behind a photo choice. It's the Malibu. She's round buoy number one. She's round, uh, I don't think she actually makes it round number two. She doesn't sell us on that. But it is one buoy at least at 10.25 meters. Let's give it up for Regina Jaquis. Valissimo. Entrance round buoy number one, getting a little bit broken at the waist and uh, any delay off a turn at this line length. Oh, did she make it round number two? I don't think she's even convinced of that, so. It looks like one buoy from my perspective. I'm sure the, the, the judges are going to have something to say about that, of course. But one at 10.25 meters ensures that uh, the Regina Jaquis will ski one more time in the final and that she will be the last skier off the dock in that final. Let's give it up, Regina Jaquis, one at 10.25 meters. We go straight into the runoff for the sixth and seventh remaining spots in the women's slalom final, the open women's slalom final. It'll be contested between three competitors, Kennedy Hansen, Anna Gay, and our Peruvian competitor, Cristiana De Osma. And they will go in on their last complete pass the last complete pass for each of these individuals is 12 meters. So, so in this runoff, two skiers come out of series one. Only one comes out of series two, and that is Christiana de Osma. She is the first competitor out. Okay, so let's have a look at the leaderboard so far. Regina Jaquis in the lead with one at 10.25 meters. Then we've got four Canadians. In that order, Whitney McClintock Rainey with four at 10.75 meters, then four at 11 for Neely Ross, then tying with Paige Rainey with that same score with four at 11.25 meters, Taryn Grant with two and a half at 11.25 meters. Those are the only five that we know that have made it through to the seven skier final. And there you see the three way tie for six. And uh, for Christiana de Osma, Anna Gay, and Kennedy Hansen. We'll be back in a moment for the runoff for the final two spots.
All right, welcome back. And for those of you that are just joining the coverage, you have arrived at a very opportune time. We have a three-way three -way runoff for two remaining spots. There is your current leaderboard. The top five are already through. Jaquis, uh, McClintock Reaney, Ross, Reaney, and Grant. The remaining two spots to be contested between three athletes. We've got Kennedy Hansen and Anna Gay, and the first to contest for one of those two remaining spots comes to us out of Peru. Her name is Cristiana de Osma. And she's gonna go into the course on 12 meters. Runoff rules dictate that each competitor concerned has to go into the course on the last completed pass. In this case, it's 12 meters. Here we go, folks. This here is Christiana de Osma. Looks like the wind has come down a little bit. That's gonna make life a little bit easier for her going forward. She's round number two. A little bit down course off number three. Does she still go there for four? Inside four. So it looks like she's going to get three on 12 uh, for, that, for that effort. And that therefore means that as she sets the bar, she set the bar on three on 12 meters. Therefore, the remaining two competitors now know that at the very least, they've got to get a piece of four on 12 meters in order to advance. So there we go. Christiana de Osma has set the bar on their opening pass. Didn't run it, but Three on 12 is still not a shabby score to, uh, to come up with. Christiana de Osma coming out of series two, which meant that she had to wait the longest before she got back on the water. But ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our first skier in this three-way runoff, Christiana de Osma. All right then, folks, working our way down towards our next competitor. This will be Anna Gay. Coming to us out of Winter Garden in Central Florida. She too has to go in on the last completed pass. That pass is 12 meters. Now, the task is, well, I'd say relatively simple. She's got to get a piece of four. Now, Anna Gay skied uh, more recently out of the three competitors in this, uh, in this slalom competition. This is 12 meters. Look at this. She's round, round number, number, number three and four. She's through to the next round. She gets round number five and straight off the dock runs 12 meters like she knew what she was doing. So technically she doesn't have to ski anymore. She knows that she's gone uh, higher and higher than, uh, than the, the score of Christiana de Osma.
And even if she does end up with a better score or run through 11.25 meters coming up next, I mean, uh, I, mean uh, I mean, it doesn't hurt to be ambitious, of course. But even if she does conjure up that score, it won't, won't count as an official score because uh, the, the skin that, is, that you're seeing here is only used to determine who makes it out of a multiple way tie situation. Now she's got to think about, well, she's, she's already through to the next round. Now she's got to think about uh, staying fresh for the, for the Drix event, which, uh, which will be coming up re relatively soon after the jump event. Here we go. This is Anna Gay, 11.25 minutes. Let's see what she does anyway. Entrance gate, number one. Takes a good hard snap on number one. She's round number two. She's still there, you know. She's round number three. Can she continue on for four? Oh, and blows the tail on number four. She gets three and a half. There you go. Good, good skiing there from Anna Gay. Through to the next round of the competition. She had to do it the hard way, but uh, she is through to that slalom final no matter what. All right, so looking at uh, Anna Gay once again with the instant uh, replay. She's swimming her way out of course, and uh, well done to her. She's through to the next round of the competition. And now it comes down to our final competitor to determine who takes the final spot. Spot number six has been taken. Spot number seven. Thank you. It's now a straight up battle between the score produced by yeah. Cristiana de Osma with, uh, with her score of, of three at 12 meters. Now she's got to get a piece of four on this opening pass to ensure that she joins Anna Gay in the girls, in the women's slalom final. Let's have a look and see. The gate shot is critical. She's good to go round number one. Round number two, does she make it outside number three? Yes, needs the piece of this buoy and gets it. She's through to the next round. Round number five, and she absolutely wallops number six. Straight into the course on 12 meters, no messing about. So uh, Kennedy Hansen through to the next round. She joins Anna Gay, Neely Ross, Paige Reaney, Whitney McClintock Reaney, Regina Jaquis, and Taryn Grant. But just look at this, it doesn't look much different to how she slalomed uh, originally on 12 meters. Carbon copy. Coming to us out of Milton in Northern Florida, but making a temporary residence in Lafayette, Louisiana, where she is a Raging Cajun, a member of the Raging Cajun water ski team that competes at national collegiate level in the United States and is recently the nine-time national champion. Here we go, Kennedy Hansen. Entrance, buoy number one. A little bit down course, she's round number two, but she doesn't really have to uh, work anymore from there so one at 11.25 meters the final runoff score there for kennedy hansen but she is through to the next round anywho because she has gotten more than three the lowest score in this three-way runoff for two spots 
So there we go, Kennedy Hansen swims it to shore. Well done to her. Commiserations to uh, Cristiano de Osma, who's three on the opening pass at 12 meters. Unfortunately, it's not enough to uh, put her in the top seven. So the, uh, the skiers that have made it through to the women's slalom final in the open division in no particular order. And we'll bring that up on the leaderboard in just a moment or so. But uh, Kennedy Hansen just looking at her on the instant replay. Looking to get a decent gait for, uh, for 11.25 meters. And got it into buoy number one. But she knew that a heart rule <coughs> wasn't really to <coughs> in it coming into buoy number two. Okay, so there is your leaderboard, finally. Regina Jaquis, top of the heap there with one at 10.25 meters. Then Whitney McClintock Greeny with four at 10.75. Neely Ross, one pass back with four at 11.25 meters. Tying with Paige Greeny with the same score. And uh, there was that uh, score from, uh, from Taryn Grant as well. That, that score was two and a half at... 11.25 meters and then going to the, uh, the the tied scores between Anna Gay, Kennedy Hansen and Christiana de Osmar. Uh, Anna Gay and Kennedy Hansen uh, making their way through to the uh, to the finals with uh, with their runoff scores but originally tying with two that's between Taryn Grant, Kennedy Hansen and Christiana de Osmar. In ninth spot, uh, Violetta McCluskey with uh, with three on 12 meters. Erica Lang in uh, tied 10th with Valentina Gonzalez with two and a half on 12. And Manuela Jaramillo with three on 14.25 meters, uh, currently in 12th spot. All right, then. Our next event uh, will involve uh, the jump, uh, the uh, the open men's slalom. We've got one more slalom event before we go into the next discipline, which is the jump. Uh, there is a schedule. We've got uh, we've got uh, tricks. We've got jumper coming up after this uh, this next event, which is the open men's slalom, and uh, we'll have that coming up in just a moment. You're watching continuing action of the of the Pan American Water Ski Championships, and we'll have more action right after this.
Hi, my name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. Once I got in here, it was a big eye opener how much different that they go about everything. What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat? place where that summer feeling lasts all year long. A place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers. A place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome uh, back to the action here at uh, uh, Lagos Los Moros in uh, Santiago de Chile for continuing action of the uh, the Pan American Water Ski Championships for uh, for 2022. All right, then we're going to go into the Open Main Slalom Series Two. We've got uh, ten skiers here, and uh, out of the total skiers that we will have in Series Two and Series One, eight will make it through to the slalom final. Uh, Felipe Simeone of uh, Brazil will be our first competitor out, uh, according to this list, followed by Alex Paradi of Canada, then Andrea Pagozzi, Patricio Font of Mexico, Samuel Chicaro of Chile, Diego Chicaro of Chile will follow, followed by Alvaro La Madrid, Santiago Correa, Juan Luis Poanca of Chile, and then Carlos La Madrid to round off the last skier in Series 2. Felipe Simeone, 40.25 meter opening pass. Getting everything dialed in, no worries there for him. So our first competitor out on 14.25 meters is uh, Felipe uh, Simeone. And uh, maximum speed now is uh, 36 miles an hour or 58K. And looking in uh, very, very good shape, I would say, on the opening pass. Looking uh, very much dialed in with the conditions. So our sole competitor out of Brazil and hasn't skied an awful lot uh, this, uh, this season. Coming in on 13 meters. This is Felipe uh, Simeone. Felipe Simeone, who, uh, who got four and a half buoys on 11.25 meters in the second round of the uh, the South American Games in uh, Asuncion uh, this season. 
like I said, hasn't skied all that much. And that was the uh, the only tournament that I was able to to find a score for for him uh, based upon uh, a current current records in the in the IWWF database. But he's gone through the first couple of passes at least. He's gone through 14 and 13 meters. Just working his way, just trying to get good leverage behind the boat and work from one side to the next. So there we go, excellent skiing there from, uh, from Felipe Simeone. Now, 12 meters. Just to let you know that in uh, Series 1, there are nine skiers total, so... Uh, so the, uh, it'll be a while before we know how many, how many uh, uh, of the, uh, the remaining skiers will make it through. Actually, eight, the top eight, make, uh, make it through to the next round, but it'll be a while before we're able to determine those top eight based upon the amount of skiers in this Series 2 and also uh, the, the skiers to come in Series 1. So not looking too bad for the most part. He's gotten through the first three passes. He's gotten through 14, 13, and 12. So he's getting very, very close to where he uh, he normally slaloms uh, in the, among his uh, higher echelon performances. Uh, four and a half is best scorer uh, this season in the one and only tournament that he's uh, that he's competed at this season. That's the uh, the South American uh, South American Games. Here we go, 11.25 meters. Round up, oh, good start on number one. He's there on number two and uh, almost a little too early into number two, unfortunately. Uh, had quite a lot of uh, room to work with and uh, a lot of time to get that ski round and uh, get across course. But he had probably one of his better starts on 11.25 meters, and that probably put him into a false sense of security into number two. Just waited on the buoy, brought the, brought the handle in a little bit too early to get on the good foot. And unfortunately, he ends up with one and one half buoys on 11.25 meters. Right, so waiting on our next competitor to take to the water. Coming out of Canada, it is going to be Alex Parody. So Alex Parody. Certainly more known for his jumping skill than, uh, than his performances in any other event that he skis in. Having said that, his, uh, his best performance, his only slalom performance so far this season at the Canadian Nationals is two and a half on 12 meters. And he started in on 14.25 meters, so looking to, uh, to make quick work of uh, this, uh, this slalom course and getting round all six to get things up and running.
Alex Paradis just trying to work the edge changes, keeping the uh, keeping both hands on the handle, very uh, very long into his uh, edge change. So now getting ready for pass number two for Alex Parody. Setting himself up for 13 meters. Ski, ski a little bit behind him on buoy number one. Even more so on number three, but he's uh, got got plenty of power behind the boat uh, to uh, to get him back into into the frame. He was a little bit late into number six and had to really throw that ski onto its inside edge almost as quickly as he got past the second wake into number six. But there you go. That is a six buoy count. That was on 13 meters. So Alex Parody getting himself set up for the next line length. It's going to be 12 meters. That's where his only score of the season has ended up being. Alex Parody, a former athlete for the Moccasins of Florida Southern College from way back in the day. Round number one, a little bit stored on number one. He's still there on number two, though. Round number three, about equal to where he is this season. Now he's exceeded it. He's round number four. He's good to go round number five. Can he make it round number six? Oh, whoa! And he got the ski. Barely round number six and almost making the run. But uh, tried to S-turn his way out of it and found that he had too much speed to, uh, to bleed down in too short of a distance. Don't forget that the distance between the entrance gates and the first set of boat guides is uh, is way shorter than the boat guides are to themselves. So certainly making an S turn in that region is a heck of a lot harder to achieve than it would be any other place on the slalom course. Getting round buoy number five, bringing the high on the outside, getting the ski round. Actually, actually the ski ended up being inside. So even if he managed to uh, to get that s turn uh, uh, situated it would have been a moot point as he got five on 11.25 meters uh, 12 meters i beg your pardon five on 12 meters and getting round uh, as many of the booze as he can and just look at him go further and further down course it was basically in full-on survival mode and then when he tried to uh, to work five into into something that he could use for six that's when things totally collapsed on him it's a five buoy count on 12 meters that is alex parody of canada next competitor up there is our uh, leaderboard. Our next competitor up is going to be Andrea Pagotzi of the Dominican Republic.
All right, then returning to action, we got Andrea Pagozzi from the Dominican Republic. Skis over at the Catalina facility, not too far outside of the nation's capital, Santo Domingo. And there you go, good, good, solid effort there on the opening run, all the way through six buoys. Good, uh, good, good skiing there from start to finish. A skier who uh, featured as uh, one of our uh, featured one of our U17 competitors in the earlier junior competition. And there you go, uh, having an experience here in the Open Men's Slalom competition. That is Andrea Pagozzi. I'm Tony Lightfoot, glad to have the pleasure of your company here at the Pan American Water Ski Championships. There is our schedule for, uh, for today. We've just seen the Open Women's Slalom. We're now seeing the Open Men's Slalom in two series of uh, competitive action. Top eight Open Men's Slalom skiers uh, advance through to tomorrow's final. All right, here we go, Andrea Pagazzi. Little twisted off buoy number one. This is 13 meters now. The difference here in this round of skiing is where he, where he was able to slalom ski at 55K as the maximum speed. This time around, he's got to ski at men's, open men's maximum speed, which is 58K. It doesn't seem to have faced him uh, any way, shape or form thus far. Andrea Pagozzi. Just waiting on that ski to, uh, to work its way under the line before he uh, goes. Goes cross course and uh, does that in very, very spectacular fashion. Andrea Pagozzi. Good, good skiing there from him. We'll see how he manages on 12 meters. He set up the 12 meter pass to be against the wind. The, uh, the skier for the Dominican, uh, the coach for the Dominican Republic, uh, Claudio Bernati there standing on dockside. Looking to see what, uh, what what one of his skiers is capable of doing out there. This is 12 meters. This is Andrea Pagazzi running with B2. Medium timing, medium intensity. Oh, look at that. Oh, and a big error there on buoy number four, sliding out towards the back and just unable to get the front of that ski down in time to go cross course and get uh, a sufficient enough angle. Andrea Pagazzi bringing the handle down off buoy number one and uh, established a really, really good rhythm here. Getting good enough angle and looked in very, very good shape. Bearing in mind, of course, that he was a junior skier uh, the other from uh, a day or so ago, which means that the maximum boat speed has moved up on him. But even so, able to get two thirds of the way down that course and get four on the 12 meter line. Currently putting him in third spot right now after three competitors, but certainly a worthy, worthy effort in the open men's competition from, uh, from this junior athlete. That is Andrea Pagazzi, who is aged 16. All right, so looking at uh, Andrea Pagozzi and uh, he's skiing his way back to the dock. Looking at the remaining skiers on the running order, Patricio Font uh, should, be, uh, should be coming up uh, next. 
And then we'll have a look at the leaderboard. Simeone still in the lead with one half and 11. Parody with five on 12. Bagotzi with four on 12. We'll be back right after these. <laughs> So it looks like breaking news here. Uh, Patricio Font not skiing in this uh, slalom event, which means we go straight to our next competitor. It'll be Samuel Chicaro of Chile. Samuel Chicaro coming in on 14.25 meters for the opener. Good knee bend into number two, allowing the ski to fully rotate and to uh, get uh, get cross course in the smoothest of fashions there you go it's a six buoy count 14.25 meters absolutely on fire there with that run so there we go good effort there from uh, from samuel chicaro So keeping the uh, the handle very very close uh, to his uh, to his hip, or rather pushing his hip closer to the handle, whichever way works for him, it uh, appears to uh, be uh, serving uh, Samuel Chicaro's effort very very well indeed. All right, so now here we go. We've got Samuel Chicaro of uh, of Chile. I think his brother is on dockside as well, Diego Chicaro. All right, here we are, coming in on the second pass of 13 meters. Very low, very light on that slalom skin. Not, uh, not really digging himself too much of a hole behind the boat. Having said that, of course, he gets a little bit skittish off number five around buoy number six. but still managing to make its way through that pass and continue skiing. And uh, Samuel Chicaro uh, get, still getting a little pieces of advice uh, from, uh, from his uh, brother, uh, Diego Chicaro, who is waiting in the wings, uh, uh, ready to take to the water. Yeah, almost lost it out the back on buoy number two, but he had the presence of mind to stop where he was and uh, just take whatever angle that he had and uh, use that to get outside number three without pushing the issue too much. Getting round buoy number five and almost slid out the back there too, but once again, a skier with an immense amount of experience and uh, knows exactly what to do in, uh, in most given situations should things start to go sideways on him. Samuel Chicaro this season uh, hasn't had an awful lot of opportunity to ski tournaments. However, he has uh, skied into, uh, into 11.25 meters over at, uh, over at the National Championships at this season, earlier on this season in, uh, in March at the, uh, the Nationals here. Oh, and going down very early there on the 12 meters, he gets half a buoy for that effort. So visibly annoyed with himself. And so he'll have to do with uh, that score of half on 12 and just bringing that handle just too forcefully and, and affecting his weight distribution to the point where uh, 
the front of his ski got trapped and unfortunately unable to continue skiing. Leaderboard uh, is is right there with uh, Simeone with uh, with one half and eleven point two five meters taking the lead. The only person to get through twelve meters, and we'll be back right after this. Right, welcome back to action. We got Diego Chicaro about to uh, to take to the water. We are about halfway down this list in men's series two of uh, ten competitors. We have just seen Samuel Chicaro take to the water and get half a buoy on 12 meters. His brother is on the water right now and started in on 40.25 meters. It's going to be Diego Chicaro. Diego Chicaro, unlike his brother, has actually skied a fair amount to during the course of the season and uh, gotten uh, scores into 10.75 meters at least on one occasion. Actually uh, scored that in the second round of the Lake 38 to Pro-Am. So he's definitely got some chops out there so far as slalom in talent is concerned. This is the Diego Chicaro out of Chile and gets it all the way through on 40.25 meters to open it up his account here at the Pan American Championships in the Open Men's Slalom competition. So Diego Chicaro, a nice smooth slalom style, tends to turn and just hold whatever he has all the way through the wakes there, employing not an insignificant amount of arm strength to be able to make uh, make that kind of technique work for him. Not really rotating uh, too much at this point. However, this is 14.25 meters, and it is a, a pretty a pretty easy run to uh, to get through, uh, at least for skiers of, the, of this uh, talent level. As we see uh, Alvaro uh, La Madrid get ready for his turn, skier out of uh, out of Chapala in uh, Mexico, and skiing at the Boca Laguna facility, which will hold the uh, the upcoming Under 21 World Water Ski Championships. Looking good, though, Diego Chicaro. Just trying to be very, very light on his ski. Not trying to dig the edges down too much and, uh, and, and have to fight his way through that run. It's one of those skiers where if you can ski light and ski, and ski to where you want to be, then get after it. There you go for uh, Diego Chicaro of uh, Chile. Working his way through the uh, the first opening passes of 14 and 13. Let's see if he can uh, st get somewhere uh, close to picking off some of the uh, the scores that he's uh, produced uh, so far this season. A season which has seen him uh, get uh, through, uh, through 12 meters. Uh, Almost every, pretty much every single time that he's gotten out onto the water, save for uh, for a uh, for an error that uh, 
that cost him a deep score in the uh, in the Los Andes uh, National uh, Tournament Cup uh, competition in October of uh, this season. This is 12 meters. Should be very, very familiar with these settings here. Diego Chicaro, oh look at, oh getting broken over there, but he's still there on five. Can he make it around buoy number six? Just about makes it. Well, he's certainly selling us on six, but are we buying though? Gonna take a look at this uh, VRA instant replay, just not getting off to a particularly brisk start on number one. And just going further and further down course as every time he brings the handle up higher, that costs him a good few feet in distance in terms of being able to stay early. Gets round number five now. Let's have a look at this on the instant replay. Does it make it round buoy number six? Five buoys it looks like from our perspective. The ski tip and the entire ski itself on the totally on the inside of that buoy. And the officials uh, seem to be in concurrence with that assessment. And it is five buoys at 11.25 meters. Yeah, that was five on 12 meters. I beg your pardon. Almost going uh, a little bit ahead of ourselves, but there you go. It's five on 12 meters. Five on 12 meters there for Diego uh, uh, Chicago. Taking a look at the starting list, uh, Carlos La Madrid, uh, actually uh, Alvaro La Madrid uh, takes the water next. And uh, we'll be back right after these. Then next competitor up and representing Mexico. This is going to be Alvaro La Madrid. Okay, so bold move here from uh, Alvaro La Madrid. It's going to be a 13 meter start. Set himself up for his opening pass. This is Alvaro La Madrid. Good form, allowing for the ski to fully rotate before uh, dropping the hammer behind the boat. Nicely done. Getting around all six buoys on the opener. That is Alvaro La Madrid. Good iron-like grip there into his gate shot and uh, working his way off number one and no, not putting too much beef behind the boat, but working his way from one side of the course to, to the next in uh, very, very good form. Thank <laughs> you. 
So, continuing to roll right along. Only one person has run through 12 meters at this time. And that is our very first competitor, Felipe Simeone of Brazil. Oh, getting in a little bit deep here on 12 meters and uh, becoming the second person in this competition that's so far to run through 12 meters and set himself up really well with an 11.25 meter attempt coming right at him with the headwind. Just looking very, very good here and uh, using, employing his uh, strength to get from one side of the course to the next. And then uh, using the ski's design to execute some fine turns without too much input from him by way of any kind of overbalance. Here we go, one and a half buoys is our current lead right now. And uh, if he can get round two into the wakes, he'll take that lead, but he has half as much deeper aspirations than that. Look at that, he's round number three. He's good to go round number four. And ladies and gentlemen, look at this round. Of, oh no, and he's inside number six. It's certainly the best score that we've seen so far among our, uh, our open men's uh, competitors. but would have wanted to have gone all the way through 11.25 meters to at least put himself in a, in a really, really viable shout for being one of the eight, uh, eight finalists that will uh, come out of this open men's slalom competition. So it looks like that score of five on 11.25 meters gives Alvaro La Madrid the, uh, the lead. Five on 11 gives him the lead and we're gonna take a quick look at the, uh, the, the remaining skiers on the start list. Correa, Pawonka and Carlos La Madrid Jr. We'll be back right after this. Started in on 14.25 meters. Our next competitor coming to us out of Colombia. It is going to be Santiago Correa. All right. Continuing right along, we've got uh, Santiago Correa making his turn around the dockside island and uh, getting the boat speed set up. I believe it's going to be 14.25 meter start. Indeed it is. It 
Santiago Correa, who's had some pretty decent scores this season. Scores in Colombia and the United States, in Paraguay as a, as a member of uh, the Colombian team for the Pan America for the South American Games, and also uh, skied in the Colombian Nationals as well uh, recently. But looking strong on 14.25 meters. And with 14.25 meters, he's trying to set up 11.25 meters with the tail. Maybe with a possible attempt at uh, 10.75 meters, the pass to come afterwards with a more advantageous headwind. Certainly was a lot uh, going on. Uh, right here at the Pan America Water Ski Championships and, uh, and a lot, lot going on uh, a little bit further afield from here in Qatar where uh, two games are going on right now with simultaneous kickoffs. South Korea versus Portugal and Ghana versus Uruguay. Here we go, this here from Colombia is Santiago Correa. And nicely done all the way through on the, that particular run. Looking very smooth, very compact out there and not putting too much of a foot wrong. That is Santiago Correa. Santiago Correa, who's the best scorer of the season. Actually, a couple of good scores, as a matter of fact, uh, scored into 10.75 meters and uh, scored a best of two on that, that line length. Going back to some of his other scores uh, in previous seasons, he scored into 10.75 meters in a tournament on Christmas Eve in... Uh, last year last year being 2021 of course of course there was a heck of a lot of upheaval uh, within uh, within the last uh, couple of seasons last couple of years what with the pandemic and all here we go we've got on the water at this time this is Santiago Correa 14 and 13 under his belt this is now 12 Sets himself up well for the first half of the course. Leaving himself a little bit late off here, two, four side, and even later off number five with that, uh, that handle pull up on his body. That could have uh, really have been curtains for him had he have uh, not reacted positively to, uh, to that situation. But managing to, uh, to make the most of, uh, of his of his set out there, 12 meters for Santiago Correa. Currently with a six buoy count on 12 meters. All right, here we are, folks. Santiago Correa. Up and running, coming into course, 11.25 meters. We've had a couple of scores at that line length. The top score is from Alvaro La Madrid with five. Let's see how well he can attack that. Look at him go, he's round number two. Keeping the flow going, he's round number four, he's good to go. Round that number four, he's good to go, round number five. Oh, he breaks in the waist, and now we've got a two-way tie for the lead between Santiago Correa and Alvaro La Madrid. And 
What are the chances of another runoff? Coming into play. We won't know that, obviously, until we get a little bit deeper into the Open Men's Slalom Series 2 and then one or two skiers into Series 1. But the spectre of that particular uh, scenario is most definitely there, having seen Santiago Correa get in round number four and then round number five on 11.25 meters. Just not able to get that ski turned round enough or put him or put him in a uh, body position enough to where he can attack number six and run the pass. So five at 11.25 meters, two-way tie between Alvaro La Madrid and Santiago Correa. All right then, folks, now working away towards our next competitor, Juan Luis Pawanka. Fourteen point two five meters, making light work of that run. So Juan Luis has uh, had uh, had some success out there on the slalom uh, course, aged 18. He's gone into 10.75 meters on uh, on uh, numerous occasions over the course of this season, and uh, certainly a little bit more consistent than last season uh, with uh, with that uh, with that endeavor. Tell you what, he's been skiing very, very extensively uh, through uh, through 2021 and 2022. So the experience of uh, of that uh, certainly uh, providing great value to him going forward. Juan Luis Pawanka. Here comes Juan Luis out of Chile. Round the first few and all the way around six buoys. Wonderful skiing there for Juan Luis Pawanka. So it's just really working the handle and uh, like his uh, line management here, uh, being able to have the presence of bringing the handle across and then bringing it down where he needs it to be at any given time. Juan Luis Pawanka out of Chile through the exit gates. And now we're, uh, we're going to bring him into the course. Another time, he's gone through 14 of 13. 12 meters is up next. Here he goes, entrance gates number one. Oh, look at this, 12 meters, like he knew what he was doing. Absolutely, one end to the next. Guy's got tremendous style, tremendous poise, and a good, good, solid head on his shoulders. 
when it comes to attacking passes such as 12 meters. Now we're getting towards the heavy hitters here with one Luis Pawonka wielding the largest hammer so far, it would seem. We'll see how far he can get down 11.25 meters, but if his 12 meter run, which you see here, is anything to go by, we could be seeing a spectacular performance uh, towards the end. One that would one that would or maybe could put him through to the next round of the competition. First things first, 11.25 meters coming up next. Here we go, folks, Juan Luis Pawanka. As we see uh, early imagery of uh, Carlos La Madrid Jr. about to take to the water. Here we go. Juan Luis Pawanka all handle up high off number two. He's good to go around number three. Oh no, and he's down on buoy number three. Going down uh, prematurely there on that particular run and uh, will uh, not be best pleased with that effort uh, considering what he's been able to do this season. Juan Luis with two and a half there, but getting a delay off number one, which wouldn't, wouldn't have been a deal breaker had he have uh, gotten the handle down a little bit lower off number two, which was his strong side turn. And there you go, it's gonna be two and a half at 11.25 meters, which is good enough for third spot right now. Two and a half at 11.25 meters. And just the line management just completely deserting him on uh, on that turn off buoy number two and towards number three. That results in him unable to run that pass. Okay, skier about to take to the water. Is going to be Carlos La Madrid Jr. All right, here we go. Certainly been a challenge for him to travel over the last, the last couple of seasons, even this season with, uh, with stuff going on in uh, Mexico, as well as uh, recovering from the, from the whole pandemic and stuff like that. He's only been able to ski uh, for uh, four tournaments uh, so far this season, all of, almost all of them uh, being at his home site of, uh, of Boca Laguna in Guadalajara. But in each instance, he was able to get at least through 12 meters and in, uh, and in uh, at least half of his uh, results into 10.75 meters at the extreme least. Carlos La Madrid Jr. All right, so that uh, was uh, Carlos La Madrid Jr. We're looking at the dock to see the first of our... Uh... Looking at the dock to see the first of our uh, Series 1 slalomers. Coming in. Carlos La Madrid Jr. Oh, very nicely done there with that number four. Good to go on five and uh, stylishly makes that one look easy. It was 13 meters. Carlos La Madrid Jr. So looking in great, great shape here. Can't really point to any uh, any significant errors out there on the slalom course. 
just waiting for the uh, the ski to fully rotate and then it is most certainly off to the races he established good rhythm off the first couple of buoys and all he had to do was just replicate that rhythm a couple more times to make the three and four and the five and six happen in quick succession five buoys 11.25 meters courtesy of uh, Alvaro La Madrid and right now Carlos La Madrid Jr has gotten through 30 meters and uh, will now have an attempt on the 12 meter line. Oh, looking okay, looking good. Whoa, look at this. Okay, so there we go. That is Carlos La Madrid Jr. And I've just been informed that that pass was 11.25 meters. And thus, he went in on 13 meters. My, uh, my bad, folks. Uh, he went in on 13 instead of 14. But I tell you what, it uh, certainly was a good thing that he did because he used uh, that headwind to absolutely uh, scintillate in effect there on 11.25 meters taking a big hard slam off uh, number uh, three into four but managing to keep enough of that water speed up to execute a great number four and by the time it got uh, for him to turn round five he had an early early uh, path towards number six on 11.25 meters now it becomes 10.75 meters coming up next for Carlos La Madrid Jr. Here we go, folks, as uh, Patricio Zohar of uh, Argentina looks on from the starting dock. A long ways away from there is Carlos La Madrid Jr. coming in. Number one gets the start. Round number two. Does he continue? Does he even make it outside buoy number three? He's trying his best to S turn his way out of that, but uh, whether it's two or two and a half, it's enough for the lead. Let's give it up for Carlos La Madrid Jr. He'll know within about the first couple of skiers in series one whether he's uh, in with a chance of making it through to the next round of the competition whether it's a mathematical possibility or not. But he gets round number two. Does he make it out inside number three? No, he does not. So there we go. So let's have a look at this once again from our, uh, from our onboard video camera. Yeah, definitely inside it. So it's going to be two at 10.75 meters. And the leaderboard so far features La Madrid. Carlos La Madrid Jr. with two at 10.75 meters. Alvaro La Madrid with five at 11.25 meters. Tightly tying with, uh, with Santiago Correa. One Luis Puanca in fourth place. Let's have a look at the running order for uh, series one. Patricio Zohar going out first, followed by Martin Labra of Chile in second. Felipe Miranda of Chile in third off the dock. Then we've got Tobias Georges, fourth off the dock. Blaze Grubbs and uh, continuing on with the remainder of the list. Here we go. We've got Tobias Georges. Here we go. 14.25 meters. Actually, this is uh, Patricio Zohar, I beg your pardon. Uh, same country, though, Argentina. Patricio Zohar. We're going to see uh, his uh, compatriot, Tobias George, is a little bit later on. 
Sincere apologies, folks, uh, with uh, with that. But Patricio Zohar doing a fine job on 14.25 meters. As we see Martin Labra, our next gear to uh, to take to the water, and waiting in the wings to see what Patricio Zohar can do. Okay, it seems that the wind strategy appears to be a little bit more consistent now with uh, starts of 13 meters uh, becoming all the rage now. With the wind blowing the way that it is, it seems to be advantageous that, uh, that having the, the headwind on 11.25 meters is uh, the more critical and important thinking here. Patricio Zohar went in on 13 meters and he ran that. He's coming back on 12 meters. Oh, getting a little bit uh, twisted there off number two. He's still good to go for number four and five. Getting a little strung out into number six, but that is a six buoy count on 12 meters for Patrizio Zohar. So pretty good uh, handle management here from uh, from Patricio Zohar, especially round that number four, taking a bit of a shot there into number five, but uh, nothing that would have uh, ultimately uh, have prevented him from running that Brighton. So there we go. That is Patricio Zohar. Here we go, folks. Patricio Zoha. Coming in at 11.25 meters. Eight skiers make it through to the open men's slalom final, and we are on a nine skier list. And Patricio Zoha getting round half a buoy on 11.25 meters. Still yet to establish the bar for uh, for our uh, remaining skiers to exceed in order to make it through to the next round of the competition. But the closest to establishing the, the bar uh, thus far is that score from Carlos La Madrid Jr. with two at 10.75 meters. The current lead held by Mexico's Carlos La Madrid Jr. All right, Skia about to take to the water from Chile, Martin Labra. There's a look at the leaderboard, and when we return, we're going to bring uh, Martin Labra onto the water next. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. All right, we got Martin Labra about to take to the water. As we continue on, latest updates coming uh, coming to us thick and fast from uh, the World Cup. South Korea and Portugal all tied up one apiece, and uh, Ghana two goals behind Uruguay right now.
Okay, so looks like uh, our uh, skier about to take to the water. Actually, on the water right now is Martin Labra, and instead of going with uh, with what is becoming a more conventional wind strategy of going in on 13 meters, he's electing to ski at 16 meters. It achieves the same thing so far as wind strategy is concerned, except two more passes have to be run before he gets to that point. And there you go, all six buoys, 16 meters. No worries there for uh, Martin Labra, who won the jump, who won the overall. And the, uh, the tricking events yesterday in the juniors uh, competition. So not looking bad out there on that opener. 60 meters, you would expect him to uh, to feel uh, feel completely at ease out there. Here comes Martin Labra, 14.25 meters, deciding against going in on 13 and going for the softer option of 16, which meant that this pass was 14 coming back instead of 12. Now with two passes under his belt, now he can uh, assume, reassume the win strategy of going in on 13 meters essentially. Still looking for 11.25 meter attempt into the wind. We'll see how things turn out for him going forward. That is uh, Martin Labra as he works his way through the uh, the passes that take him closer and closer to where he wants to be. We are in Open Men's Series 1. Whoever still has the lead after this skier will book themselves a spot through to the next round. Incidentally, yesterday's action in the FIFA World Cup saw Japan and Spain advance through to the round of 16 eliminating Germany and in the other group Morocco was top of their group ahead of Croatia and both of those sides eliminating Belgium to book a spot through to the round of 16. Here we go Martin Labra look at him go that's 13 meters, the way it should be run. A good, good, solid effort there from, uh, from Martin Labra, who's certainly been making a name for himself uh, amongst the junior ranks, uh, certainly, and he'll be one of the top contenders in the IWWF World Junior Water Ski Championships, which will be taking place this January and will be brought to you exclusively live on TWBC coming to you in January of 2023. And uh, Martin Labra getting through those passes and uh, the view that we see on the dock is that of uh, Felipe Miranda multiple time world overall champion, multiple time Pan American Games champion. Certainly one of uh, the familiar faces in Chilean sport. 
Here comes Martin Labra. 12 meters. Oh, look at that. A little bit of a delayed start on 12. Can he make up for it? Yes, he can. He's round number three. He's back in it, you know. He's, oh no! Oh my word. I would not have thought that that was going to happen considering the ribbon that he was in for the first few buoys. Just went after the handle way, way too soon. Didn't get the best of starts on number one, but then he got round number two and he was back into it round buoy number three and number four. And just went for the handle, just went for the turn too, too soon. And you know, it's just one of those learning moments there so far as Martin Labra is concerned. And uh, wants to make sure that, uh, that he doesn't do the same in, the, within, in, the net, in a few weeks' time with the Junior World Championships take a place right here at Lago Los Moros outside of Santiago de Chile. What that therefore means, however, that with seven skiers remaining, whoever's in the lead has made it through to the next round. So congratulations to Carlos La Madrid Jr. in making it through to the next round of the competition. So well done to you, sir. All right, then. Ma we've got on the water Felipe Miranda. So not bad skiing there from uh, from Pipe Miranda. So looking at this from Pipe Miranda, and uh, we're uh, seeing some great skiing there from him from, uh, from side to side. Former world overall champion, uh, won that on two occasions. He uh, won that right here at uh, Lago Los Moros in 2013. Four years later, he replicated the same feat, 2017, uh, just outside of uh, Paris in, uh, in France. There you see the leaderboard as it stands right now. Carlos Lamadrid Jr. In, in the lead and into the next round. Waiting in the wings is Alvaro Lamadrid and also Santiago Correa, who both scored five on 11.25 meters. And could we be in a situation where we have multiple skiers contesting multiple spots? But Felipe Miranda, oh my word. Got into a little bit of a, a tricky situation on a couple of those turns and uh, he knows it. Oh, a quick exhale there, uh, just, just really, really exemplifying uh, the difficulties that he had in running that pass. So this was 12 meters, don't forget. He started in on 13. So trying to utilize a little bit of wind strategy here. So 11.25 meters comes up as the next run. Little bit of an inside uh, an elbow slam there on at least a couple of occasions to, uh, to try and uh, speed the works up a little bit. And uh, now because of the, uh, the score that was needed to see uh, Carlos Lamadrid Jr. through to the next round of the competition, any score that exceeds second place right now is enough to see that skier advance. In that instance, 
Felipe Miranda from Chile needs to run more than five on this run to advance through to the men's slalom final in the open division. Needs to start on one, gets to, to go round number two. Bumps it round buoy number three. Good to go round number four. Look at him go. He's round number five. Does he get a piece of six to seal the deal? Ah, oh, yes, he does. Six buoys at 11.25 meters for Felipe Miranda of Chile. If it's confirmed as six, then he will advance. The officials are confirming six. So Felipe Miranda, a little tick goes next to his name to signify that he is through to the next round of the competition and he still continues to ski. He will be chasing down that top score from Carlos Lavadrid Jr. with two buoys at 10.75 meters. Ooh. Took some Herculean strength to uh, to take that line at the end of 11.25 meters, but playing the win strategy to perfection there. Felipe Miranda. Lead score, two at 10.75 meters. Entrance, number one. Round number two, he's still there, you know. And does he make a play on three? Not quite, but he's through to the next round. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up, please, for Chile's own Felipe Miranda. That was a wumble, man. That's there I see. looking at him once again and just getting all twisted up there on number two on his uh, on his on his strong side turn knew that he had a chance of uh, maybe uh, running this 10.75 meter run but at that point he was playing with house money he had already made it through to the next round of the competition so uh, no nothing uh, Nothing lost there for trying. But there you go. That is Felipe Miranda with a tie for the lead, incidentally, with two at 10.75 meters. All right, now, the, uh, the bar is still remains unchanged. Anything more than five, we'll see that that skier advance. Skier on the water right now from Argentina. This is Tobias Georges, and he's going to go in on 13 meters as well. And working himself very, very well indeed with uh, the opening pass of 13 meters. A good solid opening run. We'll see how much further he gets uh, down uh, down these passes. Knowing full well that anything more than five will uh, will see him uh, uh, provisionally advance through to the next round of the competition. And incidentally, that five buoy score is a tie between Alvaro La Madrid and Santiago Correa. So in order for, uh, for those two competitors to outrightly uh, make their way through to the next round, two of the remaining scores from now until the end would need to be less than five at 11.25 minutes. For, Santi for Santiago Correa and Alvaro Madrid 
to see them through to the final. Tobias Georges. Oh, nice. There you go. That is a 12-meter run. Just like that. All right, here we go, folks. This is Tobias Georges. It's gone through 13 and 12. This is now 11.25 meters. Needs to start and gets it on number one. 11.25 meters. He needs to get more than five in order. Oh, it gets broken over off number four. He's good to go on five. Round number six, he's through to the next round. Oh, my word. Ooh. Little bit of Houdini action going on there around buoy number four. Not the best of turns he would have pulled off. But for the sake of getting round all number six, he'll take it. Big old body slam on buoy number one and, and a complete fin release going into buoy number two off the wakes. Certainly likes to be extremely active on the turns. Oh, my word. Almost dropped his locks into the lake there on number four. But I tell you what, round number five and a good to go round number six. Certainly not the easiest of passes. He would have run at 11.25 minutes, but he'll take that any day of the week. He's still got some slalomers to go, and then we'll go into the jump, and then finally into the tricks events to round off a day one action of the U21 and open men's section of the Pan American Water Ski Championships. 10.75 meters, two is the lead. Let's see if, how close he can get. He's round buoy number one. He gets it to, no, does he, does he get round number two? Yes, he does. So we got a three-way tie for the lead now between Felipe Miranda, Carlos La Madrid Jr. and Tobias Georges. So there we go, Tobias Georges getting the start that he, uh, well, not altogether needed. I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a decent start there into buoy number one at 10.75 meters. The, the ski released out of the water and uh, deprived him of the, uh, the time that he needed to make a decent turn on number two to, come, to try and uh, complete the run from that point. But he'll take two. He'll take a tie for the lead. And on the water right now, coming to us out of the Golden State, California. This now is Blaze Grubs. So going in on 14.25 meters, he's preferring a familiarity over strategy here.
looking strong and in good good shape there for the first pass six buoys there on 14.25 meters and looks like the wind has actually calmed down a little bit right right now so maybe the original wind strategy for some of our competitors to uh, to open up this uh this series one might be a moot point now. Okay, so having seen Blaze Grubbs go through his run, we're looking at uh, Antonio Colazzo from, uh, from Argentina. We'll see him ski next, but not until we're done with, uh, with Blaze Grubbs. This is 13 meters. Uh, seems to make very very light work of that uh, run that is Blaze Grubbs who's put scores into 10.75 meters on a number of occasions and uh, has already skied uh, and slalom once today in the U21 section only one uh, Only one male or one female skier from each nation uh, is, is, can be made eligible to ski in uh, U21 and Open as well in the same competition. And uh, that designated skier is uh, Blaze Grubbs. Here we go, folks. Plays grubs. Coming to us out of Rio Linda in California. Trades at Lake Two in uh, Balacqua. As well as over in Santa Rosa Beach in the northern part of uh, Florida. This is 12 meters. Good knee bend uh, on the first couple of buoys. Yes, all over this one, and wonderfully executed. Wonderfully, wonderful uh, skiing there. So let's have a look at the gate shot here on the instant replay for uh, for Blaze Grubbs. Turns to a certain position, holds it and doesn't really move too much uh, beyond that uh, beyond that edge change whatever movement that he does deem necessary to make uh, goes uh, is certainly with purpose but certainly when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, with slack line towards the turn he gets that other hand on and uh, just waits for that jolt from the boat to slingshot him from uh, from one side to the next. All right, 11.25 meters. 11.25 meters beckons for uh, for Blaze Grubs. Needing more than five to advance. Let's see what he can do. Entrance gates round buoy number wall getting uh, stored there on number two on number one into two. Round number three. Oh, and he drops the handle. Round buoy number three. And unfortunately there for Blaze Grubbs going down early, which means that the specter of a runoff is present between Santiago Correa and Alvaro Madrid. 
with both of those scores at five on 11.25 meters. Two skiers, two skiers fighting for one single spot going into the final. Unfortunately there for Blaze Grubs, unable to, uh, to get towards that area and having to make do with two and one half on 11.25 meters. That's Blaze Grubs from the United States of America. All right then, so as I just mentioned, two skiers are fighting for one potential spot. The two scores are five at 11.25 meters. Santiago Correa and Alvaro La Madrid. Let's see what Antonio Colazzo can do. 14.25 meter start, employing the same strategy as Blaze Grubs, whom we just saw a short while ago. Equal to the task in running the opening pass of 14.25 meters. And uh, looking at the, uh, the starting dock, we see another Argentine athlete, uh, Martin uh, Melazuk. Martin Melazuk, who once upon a long ago actually held the unofficial world record for the, the strongest man on the slalom ski at the Swiss Pro Slalom uh, many, many seasons ago you, with the rope tension measurement give you some more details about that uh, closer to time. Antonio Colazzo, he's run through 14 and uh, looking in good shape to run 13. However, he does get a little bit on the back foot there off number four, but uh, not so much to, uh, to preclude him from running that particular run. Antonio Colazzo. Here we go, folks. Right here, right now, Antonio Colazzo. This is 12 meters. Round number one gets it to go around buoy number two. Employing a slalom style very, very similar to his uh, compatriot uh, uh, to be. Oh, wow! Almost stepped over his ski a little bit to going into buoy number six. Drove that to inside edge hard into the water and almost stopped that ski cold. Ooh. And that was on 12 meters. 
Hopefully he'll be able to learn from that and uh, apply that going forwards because 11.25 meters, even though the wind has settled down a little bit, it's still very much present and it's still gusting as a tailwind for uh, for a pass uh, coming from the uh, from the even direction. So Antonio Colazzo, ooh. A little bit of a, a tricky situation going into number six, and we'll see what he has got going forwards. Antonio Colazzo. 11.25 meters. Needs in more than five to advance. Boat accelerating up to 58K, settling in right now. Entrance. Number one gets it to go round number number one. Round number two, he's still there, you know. He's good to go round number three. Round number four, now the critical turns. Number five, can he make it round number six? He's through to the next round of the competition with a six buoy count at 11.25 meters. So there you go, wonderful skiing there from Antonio Colazzo. He's uh, booked himself a spot through to the next round of the competition. Still plenty of skiing to come, folks, but uh, we've got three more competitors to come. We've got Martin uh, Melazuk, we've got uh, Robert uh, Pagosi and Nate Smith. Four skiers have booked themselves uh, passages through to the next round. Felipe Miranda, Tobias Georges, Antonio Colazzo, and Carlos Lamadrid Jr. Coming in. Lead score is two at 10.75 meters. Good to go round number one. Round number two, does he make it outside number three? Yo, oh, yeah, I think he got a piece of three, you know, and if he did, he's taken the lead from Argentina, folks. Antonio Colazzo. So just looking at this turn round, buoy number one got the best start he could have hoped for. Round number two, a little bit of a delay. And the officials have confirmed it's two and one half. Two and a half, the score for Antonio Colazzo of Argentina. He is through to the next round of the competition. And not only that, he has the lead with three competitors remaining. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Colazzo right there on top, followed by Carlos Lamadrid Jr., then Felipe Miranda, Tobias Georges. All right, we got uh, another skier from Argentina about to take to water, Martin Melazuk, and we'll see him next. What if I told you there was a place place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat. A place where that summer feeling lasts all year long. A place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers. A place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down, and your only job is to make lifelong memories. That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. Into the course. 
Coming into the course, our next competitor, Martin Malazuk, also from Argentina. But employing a different wind strategy here, going in on 30 meters. Martin Malazuk, I'm sure that he's very well aware of the target that he needs to achieve. Anything over five on 11.25 meters will do the trick for him in terms of making it through to the next round of the competition. So far, there is a two-way tie for, uh, for a five on 11.25 meters. That exists right now between Alvaro La Madrid and Santiago Correa. And uh, if things uh, work out as they should, so far as the seedings are concerned, it could mean that, uh, that Alvaro La Madrid and uh, Santiago Correa, the, both of those uh, individuals could be battling for one final spot going through to the next round of the competition. We see on the dock side from the Dominican Republic, the current Pan American Games men's slalom champion. That is uh, Robert Pigozzi. He'll be looking to defend that Pan American Games title uh, in October of next year, right here in Santiago de Chile. But in the meantime, we've got Martin Malazuk trying to put his best foot forward for Argentina. Out on the slalom course, here he is. Runs his own ski school in Argentina, as a matter of fact. Taking a little bit of a break from, uh, from the, the concerns of that to see if he can conjure up a performance that will be uh, worthy of him being included into the men's slalom final. So keeping a good head on his shoulders and keeping everything going in the proper direction. Martin Melazuk, he's uh, gone through 12 meters. Good knee bend into the turns, allowing for the ski to, uh, to curve and to ride deep in the water. And looking in very, very good shape. All right, as we continue to roll along with Martin Melazuk, just enough time to tell you about the TWBC podcast. Uh, the TWBC podcast on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, on Apple Podcasts, also on iHeart and wherever you happen to listen to your podcast. The latest edition that's been just been released. The conversation that I had yesterday with Whitney McClintock Reaney and Matt Reaney at the same time. 11.25 meters. Oh no, and he gets into a horrible start there and unfortunately unable to get deep enough into 11, which means that both skiers make it through. Alvaro La Madrid and Santiago Correa uh, both advance through to the next round of the competition because of this performance from Martin Melazuk. Unfortunately, getting slack in the line off number two, had an absolutely no shot of uh, continuing on with that run and has to make do with a three buoy count at 11.25 meters. So now that means that in order to advance, it goes down to the next highest score in terms of uh, 11.25 meters. I think in that respect, I'm just looking down the list and see where the remaining. Looking at the leaderboard right now, Martin Malazuk is the bubble score now. Any score that's less than three at, three at 11.25 meters between now and the end will see Martin Malazuk through to the next round, but the chances of that happening, given who the last two competitors are, are going to be somewhere, somewhere between slim and none. Because our next competitor to take to the water is going to be Robert Pagosi from the Dominican Republic. Oh, 
All right, here. All right, we've got Robert Pagosi about to take to the water next. Okay, here we go. Robert Pogazzi coming in 13 meters. So Robert Pagotzi chasing down the lead of Antonio Colazzo with two at 10.75 meters. Uh, the lead score and anything more than that will uh, will enable Robert Pagosi to take the lead. Starting off on the 13 meter line. It's remarkable stuff here for the defending Pan American Games men's slalom champion. Achieved that title in Lima, Peru, almost four years ago now. And he'll be looking to defend it right here in Santiago de Chile come October of next year, which is right here on this site. One of the selected uh, venues in that multi-sports games championship. There we go, we've got uh, Nate Smith, the current world men's slalom record holder. He'll be taken to the water within the next few minutes, but not before we've seen Robert Pagozzi produce his performance here in the Pan American Games Slalom Championship in the elimination round. Here he comes. Good, good skiing there, very well in control. Using some great edge changes and employing a good deal of strength behind the boat to keep things moving forward. So, I mean, just taking a look at some of the scores that he's uh, produced this season, they've just been absolutely off the chain. I mean, most of the scores that he's, uh, that he's conjured up over the course of the seasons have been into 10.25 meters. So we're looking at something along those lines, uh, Robert Pagosi. And uh, Robert Pagosi is uh, in a little bit of a transition, actually, uh, between between skis. I mean, for years and years, he'd actually ridden on a, a reflex slalom ski, but now he's uh, he's riding on on something uh, different to that. So he's uh, so he's riding uh, currently riding the radar of uh, Vapor Pro Build at the moment, or at least a derivative of. Good push there through the entrance gates into number one. 11.25 meters if he gets more than three. He's through to the next round of the competition. No way, no two ways about that. Brilliant slalom in and he gets around all six buoys there and, uh, and overhauls the scores of Alvaro La Madrid and uh, Santiago uh, Carrera in the process. And his next target are all scores that have been recorded on 10.75 meters. For his part on 11.25 meters, he looked in tremendous shape off number one. 
Number two looked pretty peachy as well, and there was no two ways of a doubt that he was going to get through this run. Certainly not prone to making silly mistakes out there on the slalom course. And this time around, no exception. There you go, a six buoy count on 11.25 meters. 10.75 meters comes up next for Robert Pigozzi at a Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. There we see Nate Smith waiting for his turn. Good knee bend into his a gate shot. Round buoy number one at 10.75 meters. Dropping it hard off number two. Wonderful number. Oh, a little bit behind on number three. He's still there on four. Can he make it round five? No. One single mistake there on 10.75 meters. And that has robbed him of the opportunity to get round all six buoys on that particular run. I believe he does get three buoys at least for it for his effort. But what? He gets four, as a matter of fact, I beg your pardon, four buoys on 10.75 meters. Four buoys at 10.75, that's enough for the lead, uh, as far as I can see. Oh, taking a big old shunt there off her number four and too much. Uh, just skiing inside number five, but he does have enough for the lead and setting setting up a pretty decent target for our remaining skier to take to the water. It is Nate Smith. Just watching the first few buoys there. It looked in complete control off of buoy numbers uh, one and two, but he came up a little bit short on number three, barely got outside number four and just completely lost his uh, rhythm and composure. Two things that are absolutely needed to slalom at this high level. Here we go. This is Nate Smith, and this is a 30-meter opening pass. Nate Smith, who, uh, who in 2013 won the first of his world championship titles right here at Lago Los Maros. Finished second on the Water Ski Pro Tour this season but certainly has uh, certainly has the world slalom record. Taking a look at some of the scores that he's uh, produced this season. I mean, for the, for the most part, it's either been into 10.25 or into 9.75 meters. Really can't so see too many scores aside from that. And that's basically it. It's either a score at 10.25 meters or at 9.75 meters. It's an absolutely incredible record for this 32-year-old for out of McCordsville in Indiana. Also, if you want to get a more in-depth look at uh, uh, Nate Smith, why not check out the TWBC YouTube channel and uh, look at the documentary entitled story of a champion here we go nicely done there that is nate smith getting all the way through on the second pass that was 12 meters and is now a little bit more than three buoys away to securing his spot through to the next round of the competition and therefore locking in the eight skiers that you will see slalom in the final.
So looking once again here at uh, Nate Smith. Just really whipping that ski from one uh, one side to the next. Uh, just remarkable the control that he has on that slalom ski. So six buoys on 12 meters and continuing to ski. 11.25 meters for Nate Smith. Needs a piece of four to advance. And he's not going to be satisfied with just that. Stands up on three. Even a skier of Nate Smith's level knows exactly where he is at any given time on the slalom course. Even a pass at 11.25 meters. As relatively simple as it is for him to run, he still needs to stand up on three in order to make sure that he gets the piece of four that he wants to advance. There you go. Good, good stuff. And here is the, uh, the safety check, as, uh, as our good friend Wade Cox uh, calls it. Round number four and five and uh, six buoys counted there for Nate Smith at 11.25 meters. Riding on that uh, D3 uh, Ion 2. All right, now here it is, 10.75 meters. Anything more than four will get him the lead. So if you're not already up on your feet, get on your feet, ladies and gentlemen, because 10.75 meters for Nate Smith. Beckons. Here he comes. Entrance, number one. Smooth as it gets. Round number two. Little bit off kilter there on number three, but he's back into it. And ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Nate Smith. He runs 10.75 meters again. Great, great skiing there. Nate Smith putting on an absolute clinic out there with a 10.75 meter pass. Nate Smith will no doubt be trying to replicate the score that he needed uh, back in 2013 to secure the, uh, the world slalom title. He actually needed a, a piece of a four to win that title as far as my memory serves me. I was actually announcing from the opposite, uh, opposite side of the lake there in that little, uh, little cabana that's uh, long since abandoned but uh, just needed that piece of uh, four to, to take the title ahead of uh, Will Asher. And then there was that, uh, that, there was that runoff between Freddie Winter and Stephen Nevue for, uh, for the third spot. But for here and now, let's savor this attempt at 10.25 meters. Here we go, round number one. Here we at the Pan American Water Ski Championships, elimination round, two buoys at 10.25 meters. Let's give it up, please, for Nate Smith. Two at 10.25 meters. He secures the final spot to make it through to the next round of the competition for starters and also the last skier spot off the dock in the final. Apparently, there is a gate review on this run, but that probably uh, won't matter too much anyway in terms of uh, being the last to start off the dock. No gate confirmed. Wow. So a zero score at 10.25 meters for Nate Smith. So skiing into the dock and uh, getting notification from the, the officials just a few moments ago that 
a zero gait there on 10.25 meters and actually breaking a, uh, a streak there for, uh, for Nate Smith. A season long streak, streak in which he has at least had a, a, a score on 10.25 meters higher than zero. But there you go, Nate Smith anyhow still manages to get the best score here thus far in the elimination round with zero at 10.25 metres ahead of Robert Pagosi with four at 10.75, ahead of Antonio Colazzo with two and a half at 10.75 metres. Then there is a two-way tie, actually a three-way tie for fourth between uh, Carlos Lamadrid, Felipe Miranda and Tobias Georges. Two-way tie for seventh, Alvaro La Madrid and Santiago Correa. On the outside, looking in, unfortunately, Martin Malazuk with three at 11.25 metres. Juan Luis Puanca with two and a half on that same line length. Time with Blaze Grubbs with that same score. And uh, in 12th place, uh, Felipe Simeone with his score of one and a half at uh, 11.25 metres. That concludes the slalom event for the elimination round. Our next event is going to be jump. The jump event will take place as we continue on the Pan American Water Ski Championships for 2022. And we'll be back with all of that action to come right after these. Hey, morning. You have a good weekend? Yeah, got out on the water a couple times. How about you? Yeah, I got to set in. Uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here. Oh, of course. Can you get that, Will? Yeah, man, I got it. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Will. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got those in stock. I'm involved with the Flowpoint Method because I think it's a really strong program. We've been working on a couple things and it's just fine tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. Try match play at bplayfield.com. Fácil, hazla fácil, 
My name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. 
once I got in here, it was a big eye opener how much different that they go about everything. What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat, a place where that summer feeling lasts all year long, a place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. Hello, uh, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, we've got continuing coverage right here of the uh, Pan America Water Ski Championships for 2022. We've got the U21 Women's Jump competition uh, coming up your way right now. And here is your start list. 
Not an extensive start list by any stretch of the imagination, but there you go. We've got uh, three competitors uh, here in the U21 women's uh, jump. Juanita Rojas, Amelia Mendez, and uh, Rebecca Ramsey, and all three will, uh, will go through to the next round of the competition, making that list rather a preliminary round of jump rather than an elimination round. Juanita Rojas from Colombia getting ready for uh, for a three attempts of that ramp. So, continuing uh, right along with our uh, coverage and uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful shot of uh, some of our uh, native uh, bird life here at uh, Lago Los Moros. I can guarantee that thing will fly. The question is, will, uh, will Juanito Rojas do likewise on the water? Okay, here we go, folks. This is uh, Juanita Rojas. Up and over, will land and ride that one out. So uh, first jump in the U21 section. Uh, Results in a landing. And we'll see, uh, see what the distance will be uh, very, very soon. So just waiting on the distance to be known at this time. Juanita Rojas. For the distance, it's 15.3 uh, meters or 50 feet, 15.3 or 50 feet. That score under a belt. No worries there for her, and uh, we'll see what she uh, has in store for us by way of an encore on jump number two. Juanita Rojas. Oh, she's going to go for the three quarter cut here, I see. Turns. A little early into the base of the jump. And there we go. Decent looking effort there for Juanita Rojas. Lands and rides that one out. Although kind of spiking the, uh, the zero off a little bit there with a uh, 
with what was a, a little bit of a hard turn to start off with, but she led off uh, behind the boat and uh, that forced the uh, the zero off to, to back off significantly before uh, coming back on to her uh, as she came over the jump with that, uh, that slightly deeper edge off the second wave. 17.8 meters, 17.8 or 58 feet. So Juanito Rojas. She's jumped uh, so far this season. Uh, 18.3 meters, so about 0.4 of a meter uh, back from that. That was in one or a round. She backed that up with an 18.4. So she's just about half a meter away from uh, from her best jump of this season. And compare that to last season, certainly a lot better than uh, than 2021. Here we go. Let's see if she can boost this one over that distance. Oh, nice. Better edge, better looking jump there for the most part. That is Juanito Rojas. Working off 17.9 meters. So just waiting on the jump distance to be revealed uh, for Juanita Rojas. 17.9 on the second. I believe the third and last uh, will be revealed to us very, very soon. It is 16.6 meters or 54 feet. 54 feet on the last jump. As she comes into the dock, we get ready to bring on Amelia Mendez of Chile. She'll be taken to the water next. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. Okay, returning to action right now and taking a three-quarter cut to open up her account here. This is Amelia Mendez from Chile. Safe to say that's taken the lead. But we'll deal with the specifics so far as a uh, distance in just a moment. So not looking bad there on jump number one. And uh, she has uh, produced uh, some, uh, some uh, decent distances uh, within, the, within the last uh, 12 months, including 38.2 meters, uh, which she set as a personal best by way of the record tournament that took place here about a week and a half ago. Aged 18. This is uh, Amelia Mendez, who we saw her ski a little bit, a uh, little bit before. Thirty-four point three meters. Thirty-four point three meters.
So 113 feet is uh, well is well in her back pocket now. We'll uh, see what she has with the remaining two jumps. See if she can't get closer to 40 meters. All right, and taking a three-quarter cut here once again, a more aggressive approach into the turning zone. Turning in. All right, better looking jump. More, more speed there. So just waiting on the jump distance, waiting to determine if it's uh, any further than a previous uh, jump distance of uh, 34.3. Actually, it's 30, It's actually 33.9 or 111 feet. So a little less there on jump number two compared to jump number one. So for those of you wondering how we measure these jump distances, well, we've got some, uh, we've got some video cameras that are situated from a high vantage point on the opposite bank. The, uh, the imagery from those cameras is uh, brought into a computer system and using a specialized uh, a computer program, it is able to, uh, to plot the distance to within 0.1 of a meter. Here we go. Here comes Amelia Mendez. Oh, good looking jump there. So very, very consistent. She's just working off that uh, that right leg going into the bottom of the jump and using uh, that increased pressure, getting more height off the top of the jump with uh, with that attempt. Distance coming through any moment now. It is 36.6, 36.6 meters. And 36.6 meters is actually her second best jump in her life. 36.6 meters, so a good job there for her. And as Amelia Mendez comes back into the dock, we will step aside for a moment and get ready for our next competitor, Rebecca Ramsey from Canada, next. All right, welcome back to continuing coverage of Pan American Water Ski Championships. Skier on the water right now. And with a best jump this season of 39.3 meters, it is Rebecca Ramsey. And Rebecca Ramsey, oh yeah, she really wants to uh, 
grab the ball by the horns here. Full double cut, turning around the 600 foot cut buoy. Digs it, oh, and a little bit, a uh, little bit off the uh, timing there, off the, the cut towards the jump. Gonna take a look at this uh, one more time. Turning just a little after the 180 meter cut buoy. And just working away from the boat and uh, bringing her skis across and in towards the jump and uh, finding out that, uh, that her timing was just a little off. Back right after this. All right, returning to action here in the U21 Women's Jump Competition. Pass on jump number one for, uh, for Rebecca Ramsey. Her best jumps of this season have come by way of the Ontario uh, Provincials. Thus meaning that Rebecca Ramsey is an Ontario native. Her two jumps of over 39 meters have come via that competition which took place in July of this year. So let's see what she has in store for us right here and now. Oh yeah, that's a better looking jump. The timing was, uh, was more conducive. So Rebecca Ramsey just taking a last look at her second jump. And just watching her turn and uh, watch her drive off, uh, off that turn through the second wake and into the base of the jump. A little bit uh, weighty on her left ski. She would have uh, gotten a lot more height off that jump and thus more distant. If she had a little bit more ball pressure on the right ski. It looks like Rebecca Ramsey is going to uh, gonna edge out. I think the officials might want to have a word with her. And we'll be back after this. Uh, morning, Ryan. Hey, morning. You have a good weekend? Yeah. Got out on the water a couple times. How about you? Yeah, I got to set in. Uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here. Oh, of course. Can you get that, Will? Yeah, man, I got it. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Will. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got those in stock. So welcome back, we've got 38.8 uh, meters or 127 feet by way of the, uh, the second jump. All right, here we go, Rebecca Ramsey, third and last attempt, already taking the lead with 38.8 meters. Oh yeah, better looking last jump there. Definitely a more, uh, more evenly distributed uh, weight between the left and the right ski, with more emphasis on the right ski. 
straightens up her chest and her upper body and gives her additional lift. Bringing the handle up high off the turn, but she manages to, uh, to rock this one. And I think that one could be around about the same distance, maybe a little further. 38.8 meters or 127 feet. And that last one was 38.6. 38.6, still the same a foot measurement. But the, the second one is about 20 centimeters further with 38.8. And that concludes the preliminary round of the U17, uh, uh, actually the U21 uh, women's jump competition. We'll go into the U21 men's competition and all that action to come next. I'm involved with the Flow Point Method because I think it's a really strong program. We've been working on a couple things and it's just fine tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. All right then, folks, so we are going to go on to the U21 men's jump elimination round. So there is your uh, list of skiers. Uh, the, the first two will jump at 1 meter 50. The next, uh, the next few skiers, the next five skiers after that will go at 1.65 meters high. And the very last competitor will go at 1 meter 80. So, uh, so Paul Wesley Corey will, uh, will be out first, followed by uh, Samuel Weber, then uh, Blaze Grubbs, Vicente Teaser, uh, Jose Brown, Miguel uh, Alampate, Mickey Geller, and then to round things off, Tobias Georges. All right, the first of our elimination rounds so far as the U21 jumps is concerned. The top four out of this section of the event will advance through to the jumping final. Good solid uh, skiing there from uh, from Paul Wesley Corey. So just looking at this again, a little bit over his left ski, but uh, managing to, uh, to make the necessary adjustments to land that jump safe. All right, it's 35.6, 35.6, 117 feet. 117 feet on jump number one, 35.6 meters.
Coming in. Turning in. Oh, good, good uh, little stab there at the jump there uh, with, uh, with plenty more speed and uh, looks like he's grown in confidence out there. So just looking at this uh, jump once again. Good extension off the jump. Lands and rides that one out beautifully. We'll get the distance. Looks like they're going to hold up uh, the boat, and uh, for the uh, for the second consecutive jump, uh, we're uh, we're still in different. Looks like they got the uh, the jump. Uh, looks like they got the jump distance, but not in time to uh, to uh, prevent our uh, skier on the water from having to go in the water. Thirty-seven point five, thirty-seven point five, one hundred twenty-three feet. Right, so our, uh, our driver at the helm, Mark Roski. 37.5 the distance has been, uh, has been said to him. Our very, very first competitor in the U21 boys. Here we go. Going in with the full double cut here. Here comes Paul Wesley Corey. Up and over. Looking in very, very good shape there on all three jumps there and not too untidy on any of them. Uh, decent, uh, decent height, decent speed, and uh, he likes the uh, certainly liked the distance on that one through the fist. Uh, so took a look at the uh, the instant replay, and he's, and he's already skied into shore, and he jumped 39 meters, 39 meters or 128 feet, 39 meters, 128 feet. And that ends up being his best distance out of the three. And uh, our next jumper is about to take to the water. That is going to be uh, Samuel Weber, and we'll see him next. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. All right, here we go. Our second competitor out and our last competitor to go at the five foot uh, uh, ramp height, 1.5 meters high. It is going to be Samuel Weber. So, the 
is your format, preliminary and finals, top four advance from the uh, preliminary round through to the, uh, to the final. Okay, folks. Here comes uh, Sam Weber from the United States. Let's see. Uh, oh, taking a, a three-quarter cut. A pretty bold approach there on jump number one. A little high off the turn. Does he get to the ramp on time? Yes, he does. Good, solid elevation off the ramp So the distance coming through, and I anticipate it uh, being in the high 20s, uh, maybe the low 30s. And uh, here we go. Distance reveals as 99 feet or 30.2. 30.2. So, originating out of Lincoln, Nebraska. More known for his slalom in than he is for his jumping. He's uh, still out there and he's uh, still, uh, still pushing the envelope here. With the 30.2 meter opening jump. His best jump of the season, incidentally, is a 35.6. Jumped that in the uh, the men's one category in the uh, the nationals, as I just mentioned. Here he comes, second attempt. Really working his uh, his height off the uh, the top of the jump. Really anticipating for the ramp. All right, so we're waiting on that distance to make it uh, make its way known to him and to everyone else. So 32.3, 32.3, 106 feet. 106 feet. So a skier, a collegiate skier for the uh, for the Corn Huskers. Thirty-two point three meters, and he's still got one more jump to come. What has he got on the, his third and last attempt? Oh, good solid effort there and uh, 
I believe that one increases on his second as well, or it's going to be there and thereabouts. But good dose of speed. The uh, looked uh, safe as houses uh, from the from the start to the finish. Good edge all the way through. We'll get a confirmed distance before we send the uh, the tow boat to the ramp to change the uh, the height from. 1 meter 50 to 1.65 meters high. It's a 32.2, 32.2 or 106 feet, 32.2 meters. All right, so 106 feet. Paul Wesley Corey currently in the lead. With, uh, with 39 meters. And when we return, we'll uh, start off with the remaining jumpers that we have on this list at 1.65 meters high. All that to come next. Try match play at bplayfield.com. All right, sounds like the boat is uh, making its way back from the ramp. Then once it's made its return to the dock, then we'll send out our uh, first competitor in the 1.65 meter ramp height for this section of the competition, the U21 jump elimination round. It'll be a Blaze Grubs.
All right, skier on the water now. This is Blaze Grubbs. Blaze Grubbs this season. And certainly been hitting the ramp hard in his best jump distance all season long. It's been a 55 meter uh, leap. Unfortunately, the timing wasn't there for him on jump number one. Looked a little bit early off uh, that approach, so he's going to be uh, bringing the, uh, the cut a little bit later this time. Probably closer towards the, uh, the 150 meter buoy. He turned uh, right after the 180. Setting himself up and uh, unable to, uh, to take the jump. And when we return, we'll have Blaze Grubbs' second attempt. Right, welcome back. Pass on jump number one for Blaze Grubbs. Here he comes. Turns in, drives hard off the, uh, off, the, off the second wake. I don't think he got everything that he truly wanted out of that jump, although that jump itself is probably enough for the lead. Looking to put out a distance that will uh, stay intact as the lead for about the next two or so jumpers in order for him to progress through to the... Uh, to the four skier U21 men's jump final, which will take place tomorrow. The distance is gonna be known to us, it's 49-4, 49-4. So for a distance of 162 feet, it is 49.4. Uh, so here we go, jump number three. It's third and last. Let's see what changes he can make here to, uh, to try and get a little bit more out of the ramp. Don't forget, uh, he is a very, very capable jumper, a uh, skier who could well jump in excess of 55 meters. He jumped that distance at the Junior US Open on, the, on one of the Bell Aqua lakes, not too far away from where he trains on Bell Aqua too, and just, just not totally thrilled with that jump either. So uh, he's gonna make do with uh, the jump of uh, 49.4 meters. So 
49.4 is the only distance that uh, the Blaze Grubs is going to uh, take away from this event. Just couldn't quite get the timing right. Comes into land, pops the handle, skis into the shore. That is all she wrote. And uh, he'll make do with 49.4 meters. All right. Next competitor up from Chile is uh, Vincente Tiza. We'll see him next. Second uh, competitor going out at the 1.65 meter ramp height. He's age 19. Onwards and upwards. Vincenze Tiza. Right, pushing away from the the tow boat and keeping a good tight line, uh, absolutely essential to uh, to begin able to get a good turn and a good speed in. Notwithstanding the fact that his timing needed to be improved, so uh, Vincente Tiza expends uh, his uh, first jump. We'll uh, we'll see what he can do with his second as uh, we look at the tail end of this one. Passes up the handle. And we'll rejoin action next. Heck yeah, dude. All right, so uh, last two jumpers, Blaze Grubs and uh, Vicente Tiza opting to pass up on the, on each of their uh, their first jumps. See what we shall see. Here we go, folks.
Ah, good looking jump there. A lot of a uh, lot of speed off the turn. Probably just as much as the one before, but the timing was moved a little bit uh, later there to take full advantage of that. So 40, 49. And almost getting into a little bit of difficulty trying to put the handle in between his legs. And uh, yeah, he knows that too. Uh, 49.8 uh, meters. 49.8 or 163 feet. go folks this is going to establish the bar with four more jumpers to go anything that any any distance in excess of the lead distance after these first few competitors will be enough to send that jumper through to the four jumper final here he comes Vincenzo teaser yeah, a lot more speed on that one, but the control was lacking a little bit off the top. And uh, Vincenzo teaser on 50 meters, five zero meters of the first one over. Uh, that puts him at about 164 feet. And here we go. Here is our leaderboard. Uh, uh, Vincenzo teaser with uh, 50 meters. Blaze Grubbs with, uh, with 49.4. Paul Wesley Corey with 39 meters. And, uh, and Samuel Weber with his fourth place jump. And uh, we will uh, rejoin the action with Jose Brown of Chile next. Hi, my name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. Once I got in here, it was a big eye-opener how much different that they go about everything. Okay, folks, four competitors remain in the under-21 men's jump elimination round. First of which is going to be Jose Brown. So Vincenzo Tiza with 164 feet or 50 meters is the current leader at this time in the clubhouse. Here he comes, Jose Brown. Anything more than 50 meters with, his, with any of his three jumps? And it could be enough to see him through to the next round of the competition. Vincenzo teasers, best jump of, uh, of 
50 meters is under serious danger of being superseded, courtesy of Jose Brown's opening attempt. The distance will be put up on your screen very, very soon, but a wonderful looking opening jump. All right, and it's 50.1, 50.1. That's the ticket. 164 feet, 50.1 meters. And that's enough to send him through to the next round of the competition. 50.1 meters. So, Jose Brown, who's just taken the lead away now. Jose Brown, 50.1 meters, but it isn't his personal best, by the way. 50.2, which he produced a week and a half ago. And that might actually uh, be close, although... Uh, from his perspective, it could have done with being a little bit longer, of course. So, the distance, or we anticipate being around about the same distance. But actually, it, uh, it ends up being 49.7 meters or 163 feet. So, if he is to, uh, to get anywhere close to his personal best, if not exceed it, then he's going to uh, dig deep here. Here we go, come on in. Jump number three. Oh, good speed and good reach off the uh, the top of the uh, the jump. Though I do doubt whether that will be furthest jump. So Jose Brown, 47.2 on that last jump, 47.2 or 155 feet. Not quite the jump that he was looking for, but it's still consistent skiing. And with 50.1 meters, he does have the lead and a place in the final of the competition. So well done to him. Three competitors remain. Two of those competitors will jump at 1.65 meters high, and the last one will be jumping at 100 at 1.8 meters high. You see the start list, and we'll be right back right after this. What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat? 
place where that summer feeling lasts all year long. A place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers. A place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com. Welcome back to live coverage. Here we go. Miguel Alampate. Oh, yes, certainly brought on the heat there with jump number one. He definitely wants to, uh, to assume that lead. Miguel Alampate. A specialist jumper and... A skier who has jumped well in excess of 50 meters in the past. His personal best is a 51.9 meter jump. Jumped over at Stillwater Lakes and produced a distance of 51.9 earlier in the season. Doesn't compete in any other event aside from jump. We'll uh, work on getting the distance out to you very, very soon. It's 50.8 meters, 50.8, 50.8. He takes the lead with that. And also takes a spot through to the next round on 167 feet. Here he is, jump number two. Miguel Alampate coming in on jump number two. Looked a little off, tidy off the second wake and oh my word, is, is, is he gonna land that one? Oh, he tries his best and unfortunately unable to uh, to get up on time. But the timing was a little bit earlier on the, the 600 foot cut buoy and just tried to put a little bit more pressure up against the boat to sling him out to the right hand side. Yeah, just uh, the, the weight distribution uh, off the uh, the second weight uh, looked completely skewed. And there you go, sinks into water and unable to uh, to ride that jump out. And when we return in just a moment, we will bring you his third and last attempt. Be back in a moment. Okay, just in time for uh, for his third and last attempt. The skiers that we've gotten through to the final so far consist of two Chilean competitors. 
Jose Brown and Miguel Alamparte. We have two competitors left on the list. One from Argentina who will be jumping on a higher ramp height than what we've got right now. And the last competitor at that shorter ramp height of 1.65 meters high, which is where we are right now. It'll be Mickey Geller. But before we see him, here comes Miguel Alamparte. Oh, and passing that up on that third and last attempt. He'll ski into the shore. No doubt playing support goes his way. So a pass on the third and last attempt for Miguel Alampate. All right, so as Miguel and Pate is welcome back to shore, there's this distance, 50.8 meters. And when we return, we'll have uh, the, uh, the jumping of uh, Mickey Geller from Canada. But before that, I'll have a quick look at the leaderboard. Alan Pate in first ahead of Brown with 50.1. Tiza with, uh, with 50 meters waiting in the wings. And we'll be back right after this. Back with our next competitor, our penultimate competitor in this U21 jump event, Mickey Geller. Here's Mickey Geller, first attempt. He's going to throw everything into this one. Ah, oh, good, solid jump in there from Mickey Geller. Had the speed and everything going for him on that jump. Turning just a skosh uh, before the 180 meter buoy or a 600 foot. Just making sure that he doesn't over, overshoot his uh, turning area before he sends it in towards the ramp. The jump uh, should be, uh, his jump score should be uh, coming to us uh, very, very soon. And it's a 54 meter attempt, 54 meters. 54 meters, 177 feet. Let's have a, have a quick look at the leaderboard and uh, see where that, uh, where that puts him. That should put him in about first place right now. Mickey Geller, yes indeed, by about 3.2 meters. Alan Partey is in second place. And Jose Brown in third. Those competitors have confirmed spots. 
through to the final round of jumps tomorrow in the U21. There's still the small matter of uh, Mickey Geller's remaining two jumps, though. The speed is good, control is there, and so's the jump. So nice setup around about the same place on the five and six hundred foot cut buoys. Or 150, 180 meter marks. Okay, no worries there. Maybe with the slack line in the landing, it might have been a cause for concern so far as having the ability to ride that out. A 53.7, 53.7. 176 feet. Right, first and third and last attempt for Mickey Gala. And around the same place again. Here is one last attempt. Oh, and uh, landing an egg on that one, laying an egg with that particular one, just not getting the height to match his drive into the bottom of the jump. I doubt whether that jump will even be over 50 meters, much less the previous jump distance of, of 54 meters that he produced uh, two jumps earlier. Comparing that against some of his other jumps this season, a little bit uh, behind the eight ball, his uh, best jump this year. So it was a 57 meter leap over at uh, the Canadian Wood National Water Ski Championships. So that jump there at the end, 45.1, 45.1. All right, our other boat is on the way on the way to the jump or already at the jump and he'll be transitioning that ramp from uh, 1 meter 65 to 1 meter 80. The one and only skier at that ramp height, Tobias Georges, will be taken to the water next. Right, the boat's on dockside now, just getting ready for the signal from our uh, Mulligator to, uh, to proceed on with uh, the jumping event and uh, to be as Georges be hitting the ramp at one meter 80 high. Oh, 
All right, looks like uh, the uh, the boat that's adjacent to the ramp has uh, made its way away from the jump. Won't be the last time that that ramp gets uh, raised or lowered, however, because that ramp is going to go straight back down to five foot for the uh, for the open uh, women's jump elimination round. Here we go, last jumper in the U21 jump elimination round, Tobias Georges. So here we go. And I think that's enough to take the lead and the final spot through to the next round of the competition where he will join Mickey Geller, Miguel Alamparte and Jose Brown as jumping finalists in the Pan American Jump competition in the U21s. So just waiting on that distance to flash up on the screen. I know it's going to be a huge jump. It's going to be an enormous jump. And yes, indeed, it is. 195 feet or 59 and a half meters. Fifty-nine point five meters takes the lead away by a country mile. Here comes Tobias Georges, second jump of three. Just edging away, nice and slowly bringing it in and unfortunately passing up on uh, jump number two. Brought all of his weight up. Just passing up on that uh, that jump, jump number two. When we return, we'll bring to you his third and last.
also Tobias George's uh, deciding not to take the uh, last jump and uh, will be satisfied with 59 and a half meters. So that concludes the under 21 jumping competition. At least in the elimination round. So here is your leaderboard. Tobias Georges with 59 and a half meters. Then Mickey Geller with 54 meters flat. Followed by Miguel Elamparte, Jose Brown uh, with jumps of 50.8 and 50.1 respectively for Chile. Fifth place, uh, Vicente Tiza with 50 meters. Blade Scrubs with 49.4 for six. Paul Wesley Corey with, uh, with 39 meters and Samuel Weber with 32.3. That is the jump leaderboard for the U21s in the elimination round. The boat is going to make its way back to the ramp again. It will reduce the ramp to uh, 1.5 uh, meters high. And when it's done that, then we'll uh, bring on the first of our open women's jumpers. First of which is going to be Erica Lang, followed by Anna Gay, Kennedy Hansen, followed on by Regina Jaquis, Pedrini, Valentina Gonzalez, and finally Taryn Grant. All that to come momentarily. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. times how about you yeah I got to set in uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here oh, of course can you get that will yeah man I got it thanks for calling Wake House this is Will uh, yeah looks like we've got those in stock I'm involved with the flow point method because I think it's a really strong program we've been working on a couple things and it's just fine-tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all-encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. 
combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. Try match play at bplayfield.com. Right then, open women's jump uh, will, uh, will take place in just a moment as we continue on uh, live coverage of the 2022 Pan American Water Ski Championships. There you see the remaining schedule, open women's jump over men's jump, then the U21 uh, and U21 women's and men's tricks, and then uh, open, open women, open men's tricks. Here is your open women's jump starting running order. Erica Lang will take the water first, followed by Anna Gay, uh, Kelly Hans, uh, Kennedy Hansen, and uh, Regina Jaquis, all from the United States, followed by Pedrini, Valentina Gonzalez, and Taryn Grant. All right then, so first competitor out, coming to us out of Winter Garden in Central Florida, it is gonna be Anna Gay. Yeah, well, let's do that. 
Right then, here we go. Selecting a boat speed of 54k and going for the full double cut right from the get-go. So instead of going with Erica Lang as our first competitor, we're going to go with uh, with Anna Gay. Here she comes, opening attempt. Oh, and. Uh, Little bit of a missed timer uh, on, the, on that jump, maybe a little bit uh, later than uh, she was ultimately comfortable with. So coming through with a distance any moment now and uh, a little bit of weight on a left ski that kind of uh, didn't help so far as her getting much in the way of height is concerned. 38.8, it's 127 feet, 127. Working away through here. We're bringing on Anna Gay with jump number two. Hoping to expand upon 38.8 meters. Here she is, Anna Gay. Jump number two. Still splitting on the, uh, the ramp though. Almost as if she... Uh, as, as almost as almost as if she comes off the second wake and uh, waits for the ramp to hit her rather she rather than she pushes more to get onto the jump and get more in the way of height. Okay, so the jump distance should be coming through any moment. And despite her splitting on the jump, I believe this one is actually going to be a little bit longer. She does have a little bit more speed off the top and, uh, and more lift despite sitting back on the skis. Distance any moment now for Anna Gay. It is 131 feet off 39.9 meters. 39.9 meters. Her best jump of the season, incidentally, is a 41.3 meter jump, and that was over at the Florida Cup on Lake Gru. Uh, All right, here we go, folks. Anna Gay, third and last attempt. Let's see if she can get this a little bit more together. Up on the boat. Turns in, drives it on home. Yeah, the uh, it was a little more coordinated. But I don't think she got quite everything together all at the same time there, uh, Anna Gay. Turning a little bit later off the, the 600 or 180 meter cut buoy.
Getting good pull off the boat, but unfortunately just, as I said before, not getting everything all together at the right time. So 39.1 meters or 128 feet sets the bar. Okay, so the remaining competitors on the start list. We'll have Kennedy Hansen uh, come out on the water uh, very, very soon. All right, Kennedy Hansen, our next competitor going. We will be... Uh, be uh, taking her out jumping next. then so Kennedy Hansen out the water getting ready for a three attempts earlier action in the FIFA World Cup South Korea two Portugal one meaning the Portugal and South Korea move on to the knockout round Uruguay fails to advance even though they win 2-0 against Ghana here we go Kennedy Hansen. Oh, nicely done there. Very tidy looking opening jump there from Kennedy Hansen. So the distance uh, will be known to us here, 134 feet, 134, or 40.8 meters, 40.8. Point nine of a meter ahead of, uh, of Anna Gay at this point. Kennedy Hansen will be looking to try and uh, put some distance ahead of Anna Gay at this uh, moment, not only so far as the jumping competition is concerned, but also uh, the prospects in overall, because uh, Kennedy Hansen knows how capable Anna Gay is in the Trix event by comparison. So she's looking to try and, and gain some ground with the two events that Anna Gay is uh, is comparatively weak on here she comes decent looking uh, jump there all the way through Oh, and a beautiful looking jump. Just taking a look at that instant replay there. Definitely more in the way of distance. And how much more, user ask? Well, there you go. It is 42.3 meters, 139 feet. It's a whole five feet more than what she did in the previous round. And of course, a reminder that uh, both uh, Kennedy Hansen and Anna Gay uh, actually tied in the, uh, in the slalom competition in the elimination round. So they were in a dead heat in the overall battle on overall points after the first event. 
if it really is truly a battle be between Kennedy Hansen and Anna Gay so far as the overall competition is concerned, then Kennedy Hansen has obviously opened up a little bit of a gap there by, by the fact that she has uh, outjumped uh, Anna Gay at the moment. By a good, uh, good few meters. Here we go. Kennedy Hansen coming in. Ah, oh, good looking jump. Good, well constructed effort there. All the way through. Yes, and gaining a lot more speed there. Every single jump was an improvement upon the rest. And that is a huge jump. It's 46.2, 46.2. 46.2 meters for Kennedy Hansen. And that is only 0.9 of a meter shy of her personal best. 46.2 meters there for Kennedy Hansen. She will be happy as punch. Coming into the dock there. 46.2. Great, great jump in there. There's the remaining jumpers. Next jumper will be Regina Jaquis. And we'll be seeing her out on the water in the next few moments. Hi, my name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. Once I got in here, it was a big eye opener how much different that they go about everything.
All right, welcome back to continuing coverage of the, uh, the Pan American Water Ski Championships for 2022. We're into the open women's jump elimination round. There is your jump leaderboard after the first two competitors, Kennedy Hansen with 46.2 meters, ahead of Anna Gay with 39.9 .9 meters. Interesting, it'll be interesting to see what the overall situation looks like between those two competitors. And also uh, how things could potentially shape up whenever you throw this next competitor into the mix. It is Regina Jaquis. Regina Jaquis, one of the uh, the first to start off the dock in her uh, in her ramp height division in the open women's. Our first jumpers were at five foot. The remaining jumpers will be at 1.65 meters high and taking a three quarter cut on her opening jump. Oh, nice looking jump there from Regina Jaquis. One of her first real competitive sets back on the, uh, on, on the jumping ramp. We saw her back to, uh, to competitive action on, uh, on the jumping arena way back at the Malibu Open a few months ago. Hasn't had an awful lot of opportunity to get to get back out there on the uh, on the jumping ramp uh, in in a competitive setup. But let's have a look at what she's produced us so far this season on the uh, jump ramp ever since the Malibu Open. It's 42.5 meters on the opener. about three meters shy of the lead 42 and a half meters on the uh, opening jump 139 feet in the Malibu open a first real competitor set back after uh, 15 months out of uh, surgery she jumped 46 and a half meters then she uh, she jumped very, very close to the 50 meter range with a jump of 48.8. So she is capable of her throwing down out there. Let's see if she's uh, frisky enough to do it here and now. There you go, good, good looking jump there. I believe that one to be a little bit further. So Kennedy Hansen still in the lead in the jump event uh, up until that point. With a 46.2 meter jump now. Is the difference between those, uh, those jumps the same as uh, Kennedy Hansen's 2 at 11 to, uh, to Regina Jaquis' slalom score? That will, that will, nest, that will uh, basically tell you the difference in the overall competition. There you go, 48.9, 48.9. That's a pretty good reply, 48.9 meters and 48.9 is actually her season's best. So let's see if she can get over the 50 meter barrier. She's got one jump to come. Let's have a look and see. Whoa, getting really pitched forward off the top of the jump there. But I tell you what, that might end up being a lot further there for Regina Jaquis. If, if she got everything together, she was very, very close to the bottom right-hand corner. The timing 
was uh, was pretty much spot on there. Good tight line, great turn. And the jump there for Regina Jaquis. 48.9 on the second. The jump distance will be 47 and a half meters, 47.5. As she goes back into the dock. Great, great skiing. 47.5 meters. Now, because of the level of slalom skiing that she is, it might actually be worth her plugging in some numbers so far as the World Women's yeah. Open open uh, overall record is concerned. So let's give this one a try. When we come back, I'll have uh, some calculations on the overall. And then we'll go on to our next competitor. We've got uh, Pedrini next. So sit tight. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to continuing action here at the Pan American Water Ski Championships for 2022. Here we go. This is Paige Rini out of Canada. First of three attempts, let's see how she gets along. All right, an impressive looking jump there from Pedrini. So, a safe looking opening jump there for, uh, for Pedri Pedrini, 41.2, 41.2 or 135 feet. Great, great jump in there from, uh, from Pedrini. Uh, some folks along the dockside certainly appreciated that effort. Here she comes. This now is Pedrini coming off the turn into the jump. Oh, good extension over the uh, the top of the ramp and into the landing. So fantastic skiing there from her. So communicating the times and all of the particulars out of the towboat. We see the boat crew there uh, helmed by uh, Mario uh, Pagotti. Again, a good pull off the top, but uh, positioning looked uh, pretty darn good, it would, uh, it would seem from here. And uh, look at that. It's a 43.1 meter jump, 43.1. 
Yep, so in terms of in terms of overall, uh, she might actually have a, a chance uh, uh, to uh, to get on that on the podium as well. Let's not forget. We've got at least four competitors in the mix there uh, so far as the overall uh, competition is concerned. Kennedy Hansen, Anna Gay, Regina Jaquis, and Paige Reaney. Could come down to what they all, uh, all contribute so far as the tricking is concerned. So we're going to try and keep an eye on, on, the, on things there so far as the overall competition is concerned. Here we go. Coming in. Jump number three. Up and over. We'll land and we'll ride that one out. So decent, decent skiing there from, uh, from Pedrini. 43 meters on a jump number two. I, I expect that one to be marginally further. So the distance coming through for our Canadian, it is 44.1 meters or 145 feet, 145, 44.1. And it appears on that jump, uh, the first segment may be a little bit quick, so uh, she might, she might not want to uh, keep those jump skis too far away from her. Uh, when, if, uh, what happened to So the first second uh, appears to be fast on her furthest jump, which gives her an unfair uh, advantage. So I believe the ruling is that uh, she can either accept her. Uh, her longest official jump, which is 43.1, or take the re-jump. All right, then, we will return right after this.
All right then, continuing right along. Uh, looks like we've got a mandatory re-ride on jump number three for uh, Pedrini. Made some calculations so far as the overall is concerned, at least so far as the uh, the women's uh, uh, open women's overall uh, world record, and uh, ju just I just made some uh, some comparison uh, uh, calculations here on what it would take for uh, for someone like uh, Regina Jaquis, who has uh, a score of one at 10.25 meters and a 48.9 meter jump, in order to take the world overall record. Well. This is where having having some having some jump distance really comes into play because in order for her to actually take the world record away from uh, Natalia Bertnikava, Regina Jake would have her basically basically trick ten thousand and thirty points. But here we go. Let's refocus our attention on Paige Rini coming in on jump number three. Little flat coming into the base, just a split second there. Kind of let everything go a little bit, and I don't know whether that is going to be anywhere close to the uh, to the original jump of 44.1 meters. So, so looking good there on jump number three, and everything looks uh, looks pretty good uh, time-wise. So, it's a better jump though, uh, 44.7, 44.7 or 147 feet, 147 feet, and now she'll return to the dock and uh, finish up on her set finally. When she does that, she will pass the handle on to our next competitor, who should be, uh, I believe it should be Valentina Gonzalez, and we'll find out in just a moment. But well, we've got continuing action here. And uh, like I said, we'll be back momentarily. Hi, my name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. Once I got in here, it was a big eye-opener how much different that they go about everything. All right, returning to action here. Here comes on the water. This is Valentina Gonzalez of Chile. Working away from the tow boat, now turning in, meeting up with the handle, driving in home. Good opening salvo there from Valentina Gonzalez and uh, bringing it in home to land for to record a decent jump there. Good speed, good lift. She'll now have a better sense of where she is timing-wise as she turned just before the uh, the 600-foot cut buoy or 180 meters away from the, from the ramp. Sets her shoulders up and then just lets the boat do the rest of the work. Drive it. She drove in a little bit too hard with her left shoulder and that's why she almost rolled over the, the left ski. Distance 39.7, 39.7, or 130 feet. So 
Sure that she's gotten some uh, some advice uh, from uh, the uh, the jump zone. She works her way towards where she wants to be. We pick her up going in towards the uh, the setup. Yeah, turning a little bit later this time. Deciding to go closer towards the jump. Oh, and oh my word. Just feeling a little frustrated out there with that jump. Just not really coordinating well. The indications of the boat saying that that time might be a little bit, a uh, little bit off. But uh, let's have a look at the jump anyhow with the instant replay. So jumping a little over 39 meters on jump number one and. Uh, the, the second jump I don't think is going to be nearly as far and uh, she knew it almost as almost as soon as she landed. It is 38.8 meters, 38.8 meters. With a fast, with a fast segment recorded on that time as well. Valentina Gonzalez. Now we're going to take her on a third and last jump. I believe the ruling is that if she has a remaining jump and she uses that to, in order to jump in excess of the previous one that had a fast segment, then she would not get a re-jump. But ultimately, the officials will have the last word on that. Here she comes. That's better. That's a lot better so far as her form coming into the jump and uh, off the ramp. So beautiful looking jump there, lots of height. The distance didn't look too bad. It's 145 feet, 145 on that last jump. 145 feet on the last jump, which puts her in fourth place. And that should, that should put her through to the next round. Of, well, she's currently in fourth place right now with, 100, with 145 feet of 44.1. Don't forget, it's the top four that advance through to the next round of the competition. So with one competitor to go, she is going to need distance that will take her through to the next round of the competition. Anything above uh, Valentina Gonzalez's distance. 44.1. We'll be back right after this. So here we go. The distance uh, by, needed by Taryn Grant in order to advance through to the ladies jump final. It's more than 44.1. Anything more than that, we'll see Taryn Grant through to the final. Taryn Grant, the winner of the Mastercraft Pro Women's Jump competition earlier on this season and winner of the Skier of the Day award 
presented by To You as a result of the uh, of the of the the fan vote when that competition was broadcasted on TWBC. A decent looking opening jump, something that uh, she can uh, work from. So a beautiful jump all the way through to the landing. The jump distance uh, will be revealed and through to the next round of the competition with a 47.3 meter jump for 7.3. Jump. 47.3 meters, 155 feet. And two more jumps to come. Taryn Grant already through to her second event final. Isn't an overall skier. She does not trick, so uh, she's made it in the uh, the two finals that uh, she is uh, that she competed for. So well done to her. Edges away from the boat. Drops in hard, drops in quick, and unfortunately getting a little bit unstable there. Coming off the second wake and wisely deciding to throw the handle. And ski round the bottom left-hand corner of the ramp. Yep, taking in a lot of speed, a lot of heat there, and unfortunately the control wasn't uh, wasn't with her. And we'll return with Taryn Grant right after these. Here we go, folks. Last attempt for Taryn Grant. Good speed, but just didn't coordinate fully with the ramp on that one. Timing was definitely a little bit better. She arrived at exactly where she wanted to be in relation to the jump. But despite all of that though, this jump could end up being a little bit further. However, she didn't get all of her kick, all of her lift. And that will probably result in that jump not being as far as she, she truly uh, wished and hoped for it to be. It's a 47.4, 47.4 for Taryn Grant. One and a half meters short of the lead, currently in second place. And uh, let's have a quick look at that leaderboard again. Regina Jaquist back on top with 48.9 meters or 160 feet. Taryn Grant with 47.4 meters with 156. Kennedy Hansen with 46.2 or, or 152 feet. 
Paige Rini with 47.7 meters or 147 feet. Those are your top four. Val Gonzalez uh, eliminated at the stage with 41.44.1 meters and Anna Gay on 39.9 meters. All right, we'll return for our next event in just a few moments. It's going to be the, uh, the continuation of the, uh, the jump event, the open men's jump elimination round. And we'll be back right after this. Returning to action here, the last of our jumping events in the elimination round, the open men's jump. We have our schedule there on the left-hand side of your screen, and that's the remainder of the events that we have as slated for today. Men's jump, starting off with Andrea Pregosi. He'll be at the five-foot ramp height, and then once he's done there, then we'll move the ramp height to 1.65 meters high. For Patricia Zohar, Martin Labra, and uh, Blaze Grubbs. And then for the final four competitors on that list, the ramp will move up once more to six foot high, or one meter 80 for Alex Parody, Felipe Miranda, Tobias Georges, and Emil Ritter. All that to come. And our uh, skier on the water right now is Andrea Pagozzi. All right, here we go, folks. Coming in, opening jump, Andrea Pagozzi. Ah, decent looking jump there. Good amount of speed, 
good drive into the uh, the bottom of that five foot high ramp as uh, Diego Fernandez uh, takes over the uh, the uh, the driving uh, duties for uh, four skiers advance out of the uh, the open men's jump elimination round. Good edge all the way through. I just like the look of that uh, that jump there. Very stable for the most part, and the jump distance is going to be 43.3, 43.3, 142 feet. All right, here we go, folks. Turns away, sets, drives it on home. Oh, a little bit more in the way of a split on the bottom of that jump and he'll lose a whole bunch of height as a result. Good speed though, but arrived at the ramp very early as a result. So turns away once again and just drives it in, but uh, taking in a little bit more speed and uh, just waiting for the ramp to hit him. The distance, 41.1, 41.1 or 135 feet. Right then, here we go, third and last attempt. All right, getting set on jump number three. Here he is, jump number three. Oh, a little bit bogged down off the turn. He's gonna take this. Still took the jump and he probably wish he hadn't. That was a risky, risky move right off the turn whenever the right ski got, uh, got a little bit uh, behind him more than usual. See, the setup looked uh, pretty much the same as before, but as soon as he turned away and then turned the skis back, there, just that little bit of a glitch off the turn is enough to put most people off. And then, then, it was, then it's just basically survival mode coming off the second wakes into a ramp if you elect to take it. But there you go, that's 42.7, 42.7 is middle distance, 42.7 or 140 feet. He is our only competitor, actually our last competitor at the 1.5 meter ramp height. The ramp is gonna be raised up to 1.65 meters high. Three competitors at that ramp height, starting with Patricio Zohar. And we will get to see him coming up onto the water next. For skiers and water enthusiasts, 
Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. Times. How about you? Yeah, I got to set in. Uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here. Oh, of course. Can you get that, Will? Yeah, man, I got it. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Will. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got those in stock. I'm involved with the Flowpoint Method because I think it's a really strong program. We've been working on a couple things and it's just fine tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. All right, welcome back. Got the open men's jump going on right now. We've already taken our first competitor, Andrea Pagotzi. Now we've got three competitors back-to-back uh, uh, -back who will be jumping at the 1.65 meter ramp height. We'll see Martin Lapper and Blaze Grubbs take to water very soon, but before those two, it's Patricia Zoha. Patricio Zoha. Who's had a pretty good run of form in recent times, jumping over 57 meters in the uh, in the previous uh, competition that was held here on the on the 20th of November. And he has jumped consistently over 50 meters uh, in the uh, in the preceding uh, weeks and months. Just looking at this one more time from Patricio Zohar, a very, very quick turn. And realizing he was going to hit the ramp uh, uh, fairly early, deciding to pass up on jump number one. We'll be back after this.
All right, rejoining action here with uh, Patricio Zoha. Pass on jump number one. Uh, that re that uh, explains the no score that you see on the leaderboard. Six gears remain in the uh, jump event. We've... Uh, Let's see what Patricio Zohar can do. Only four out of these, this list of eight jumpers will advance through to the next round. Here he comes. Oh, yeah, beauty, beauty of a jump there. Came in with, with a lot of good speed. Looking at this jump, looking at his form. Look at this. Good smooth lift, good pull across his body into land. Wonderful control there. And if what I'm hearing uh, is correct, the distance is 57.9. It's a new personal best and the first time he's been over 190 feet. 57.9 for Patricio Zoha. New personal best. One more jump to come. Tantalizingly close to the 58 meter mark. Getting some good speed into his turn. Good form off the turn. Oh my, oh no, he's down, oh my, whoa, oh, oh, oh. Wow, that was a remarkable, remarkable recovery. I thought that he was a goner off the ramp, but uh, we'll take a look at the instant replay. Certainly playing with fire with that one. How on earth he was able to pull that back, I am... I'm dumbfounded. There we go, 44 points. <laughs> Forty-four point seven meters. Well, I'm sure that he's grateful about being able to return to the dock in one piece. But that should be tempered by the fact that he's got a new personal best of uh, 57.9 meters. All right, we'll be back right after this. Right then, here we go. We have got in the lead with a new PB of 190 feet, Patricio Zoha. Skier on the water now, Martin Labra from Chile.
Here he is, turning around the 600-foot cup buoy, which is approximately 180 meters away from the ramp. Ah, decent-looking jump there into the landing. Nice smooth effort there from Martin Labra, who this morning uh, sl didn't slalom uh, anywhere close to his best. He got four and a half on 12 meters, as far as I recall. So Martin Labra establishing the distance on jump number one. It is 49.9. It's 164 feet. 164. Let's have a look at the tail of the tape so far as his best jump distances are concerned. Martin Labra. His best jump. It's a 54.4 meter jump that he produced on the 20th of November. about 10 days ago, it would seem. Here we go. Turns into the turning zone. Nice and wide. Oh, a little bit of a delay with that left ski off that turn. And almost getting pulled uh, completely over to the right, but managing to hold enough of his direction to prevent that happening. And the distance coming through, it is a 51 meter jump, 51 meters. 51 meters, which uh, has been around the distance that he's been producing in the recent times, especially here at the Pan American uh, the Championships. All right, here we go, folks. This is Martin Labra coming in on uh, jump number three. Again, a good edge. Slingshotting him out wide. And now turning in, getting the good, good edge off the turn. But laying an egg a little bit with that jump, not getting all of the height that he really wanted to and knees. Uh, He's frustrated, and I'm sure that, that uh, frustration is shared by at least, uh, at least a good few other people as well. So a little bit of a hitch there on the, uh, the left ski. That might have put him off a little bit, so he had to basically safety crush that jump because he wasn't completely sure of where his body position was going forwards. And it's going to be 50 meters exactly, so about nearly seven meters behind the lead. That is Martin Labra with a 51 meter jump. I'm going to take a quick look at the. Uh, 
how that stacks against the remaining other competitors. Yes, the uh, Martin Labra, 51 meters, uh, still about 6.9 meters behind uh, Patricio Zohar. Andrea Pagosi in third after three competitors at this time. And we'll be back right after this. Try match play at bplayfield.com. All right, then. So, continuing on with the Pan America Water Ski Championships in the Open Men's Jump Competition with three competitors down, five to go. The last competitor out at 1.65 meter ramp height is going to be Blaze Grubbs from the United States of America. One wonders if uh, any of our remaining jumpers, including Blaze, will be uh, will be of flight like uh, like this bird here that we see in front of us here on the shoreline. Oh. Not too sure what that kind of bird is, but they're quite prevalent around here. I'm sure any of you are out there that are interested in uh, in ornithology might be able to uh, to weigh in with an answer on that one all right then folks here we go All right, here we are, 54K for, uh, for Blaze Grubs. Three jumps at his disposal. Blaze Grubs in the, uh, in the previous round before in the U21 men, jumped 49.4 meters. Would need something substantially longer than that to put him in with a shot of making it through to the uh, to the open men's jump final. And certainly the position off the ramp was a little bit better, but just not getting everything quite together in uh, in efficient fashion. So looking good, although a little bit early off the uh, off the top of the jump. Maybe his uh, timing could do with a little bit of an improvement. And the jump distance is going to be 48.8 meters or 160 feet. 160 for Blaze Grubbs. That's about 9.1 meters or about 30 feet uh, shy of the lead at this time. The lead currently held by Patrizio Zo Zohar with his personal best leap of 57.9 meters. Can he claw back that deficit with, the, with either of the two remaining jumps? In order to be in with a shot of making it through to the men's jump final, he's got to take the lead. Here he comes, jump number two. Turns away, digs in hard. Oh, and passes up on jump number two.
Just didn't like the look of that setup, whether he was a little late or uh, or miles early. The only option that he had at that point was to just let the handle go and ski around the bottom right-hand corner. And there it was, and uh, expends one of his jumps as a result. And we'll return to Blaze Grubbs' uh, last jump next. Back on now with Blaze Grubbs. Here we go, come on. This is Blaze Grubbs with 48.8 meters on the opener. By no means his best jump in this competition. In the U21s, he was at 49.4 meters. Here he comes. And I don't want to repeat what he just said coming into the landing, but safe to say uh, the frustration is very, very evident. Just couldn't really get it together, even, e e e either in the U21s or in the open. But... Uh, no doubt he'll have a few few weeks and months to, uh, to reflect upon that and uh, see if he can't conjure up something better by the time uh, the, uh, the next season comes around. That was Blaze Grubbs and uh, we'll get the distance for him. It's probably not gonna be uh, uh, his best jump out of the three. Thank you. Uh, actually, it's 48.8 meters, 48.8 meters on the last jump, which is 160 feet. That concludes uh, 1.65 meter ramp height jumping in the open men. The ramp is now going to go up to the, uh, the ramp height of 1.8 meters high. That is the target distance. Anything over that distance for our remaining four jumpers will ensure that they make it through to the next round of the competition. Those four competitors are Alex Parody, Felipe Miranda, Tobias Georges, and Emil Ritter. And they'll be taken to the water to conclude the men's jump elimination round next.
All right, let's take a quick look at the remaining schedule for today. The, uh, the remaining four jumpers and open men, under 21 women and men tricks, uh, then open women and then open men's tricks. Leaderboard as it stands. Tricio Zohar with 57.9. 190 feet, first time he's gone over that uh, that barrier. Martin Lapper in second place and so on and so forth. First of our jumpers at the uh, 1.8 meter ramp height. It is Alex Parody out of Canada. So Alex Parody, a specialist jumper uh, out of uh, the province of Quebec. Here he comes. Best jump this season. 57.4 meters. And would need something substantially more than that to, uh, to take the lead and uh, put himself in the frame for the final round. Alex uh, Paradis uh, getting a, uh, a decent looking opening jump, but a little bit early coming into the ramp. That's why he uh, came off uh, the, the left edge. Almost off the left edge anyway. Jump distance, 53.2. He's got some work to do. 53.2. Needing about 4.8 meters more in order to advance through to the next round. So Alex Parody vaulting himself into second place right now, and that puts him 15 feet away from uh, from Patricio Zohar. Exciting stuff coming up towards the end. Our fourth competitor from last out in the men's jump event, the elimination round. This is Alex Parody. Oh, a better looking jump. He had enough time to put his left arm behind his back to, uh, to cut down on wind resistance in the air. This, this could claw in uh, much of the gap that existed between him and Patricio Zohar after jump number one. Distance will be coming through any moment now. Good looking jump there from, uh, from Alex Parody, And it's a dead heat. It's 57.9 meters. He is on equal terms with Patricio Zohar. Potential jump off could well be in play here. And I can already see behind me Patricio Zohar making his way back towards the dock should that eventuality come to pass. 57.9 meters on jump number two. If Alex Parody exceeds that, then he's through to the next round. If he doesn't, then with three skiers remaining, a jump off could be on the cards. Important look at jump. Oh, he stalls out on the turn. Does he get anything out of that? I don't think so. 
We'll get the distance to verify via our officials. But I'll tell you what, it's exciting stuff here at the Pan America Water Ski Championships. Already tied for the lead, Alex Parody with 57.9 meters, 190 feet. Again, a good pull off the top of the jump. We'll get the distance coming through any moment now. And it's 58.5, 58.5. That jump kind of surprised me a little bit, but it's a 58.5 or a 192, 192 feet. He is through to the next round of the competition, 58.5. Alex Paradis, our first competitor out at the six foot ramp height, through to the next round. Taking the lead away from uh, Patricio Zoha, whose uh, jump of 57.9 is now in second. Remaining three jumpers you see on the left hand screen Miranda, Georges, and Rita. First, those competitors, Felipe Miranda, will take to the water next. Fácil, con PF, te regala tiempo, te regala vida, PF. Like felt set, just like yeah. don't have anywhere to go on the yeah. set side. <laughs> so whilst uh, Alex Parody there on the uh, the starting dock begins to uh, celebrate the fact that he's uh, made it through to the jumping final here at the Pan America Woski Championships, here is former two-time world overall men's champion. From Chile, this is Felipe Miranda. Sets, drives it in, off the turn. Again, pulled uh, off, off the top of the jump. Just couldn't hold his direction all the way through and ended up being twisted and on, onto, his, onto his back a little bit. Try to keep it nice and still off the turn, especially off the uh, the, the 600 foot cut buoy marginally ahead of that. Yeah, just crushed on that one and uh, just let everything go towards the boat at that point. Distance coming through. All right, then, it's 51.8, 51.8. Needs 6.2 meters in addition to what he's jumped in order to advance. All right, so Zoha. Patricio Zohar just keeping an eye on things right now, wondering if his PB jump of 57.9 is enough to see him through to the next round. He'll find out within the next eight or so jumps. The six jumps that spread between Tobias Georges and Emil Retter and the two jumps remaining for Felipe Miranda, the first of them here and now. And that should be enough. In fact, that jump might even be very, very close to the 60 meter mark. Right, just looking at this uh, jump again and getting getting better direction, good extension and direction off the jump. 
Yes, that was definitely on the money there for uh, Felipe Miranda because it's a 2-0-3. 203 foot or 61.8 metre jump. Our first jump of over 200 feet in this section of the competition. The elimination round of the men's jump event at the Pan America Water Ski Championships for 2022. Right here at Lager Los Maros. Here, just outside the nation's capital of Santiago de Chile. One of Chile's most celebrated sporting athletes on the water right now. This is Felipe Miranda with one last jump. Gets up alongside the towboat and works his way in. Good turn, good. Oh, and just slipping out on the jump. That won't be anywhere close. Realized that he spent an opportunity to go further, but he'd already done enough to earn himself three more jumps at least tomorrow by way of the men's jump final. Consummate professional out there. That is uh, Felipe Miranda. Many time champion at world, uh, world level and Pan American level. Squatting a little bit there on the jump. There, the distance 57.3, 57.3 as he returns to the dock, 188 feet. But it's that middle jump of 61.8 that's going to do it for him. He's made it through to the next round of the competition. He'll have three more jumps tomorrow. And we now go on to our penultimate competitor. The ultimate, the uh, the penultimate competitor is going to be Tobias Georges out of uh, Argentina. There you see him on the uh, the left hand side of the screen, and he'll be followed by Emil Ritter. And we'll see those competitors take to the water next. Hi, my name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. Once I got in here it was a big eye opener how much different that they go about everything. All right, welcome back. We've got two competitors left before we uh, before we round off the elimination round of the men's jump competition. We're going to see Emil Ritter in a few minutes, but before him, we've got Tobias Georges of Argentina. The target, the same for him as it is with the other competitors. Anything more than 57.9, we'll see him in tomorrow's final. Let's see... How he does on jump number one. Good looking jump there, not everything. He didn't get everything out of it, but he probably got enough. Good positioning off the turn just before the, uh, the 180 meter buoy and just using the, uh, the boat's power to, uh, to take him out wide. Getting the handle close to his uh, right knee and just keeping it there. The jump should be, uh, the distance should be coming up. Wow, 58.3, 58.3, certainly uh, didn't leave it. Certainly uh, didn't leave much of a gap between himself and Zohar, huh? So Tobias George is through to the next round. He'll join Felipe Miranda and Alex Paradis with that distinction. 
One competitor remaining. All right then, folks, here we go. Coming in, jump number two. Oh yeah, good speed again, and the lift was, was right there. Good solid effort all the way through. So is that jump going to be anywhere close uh, to the one that he produced just a few moments ago? Kind of crushed it a little bit with his left leg as, uh, as he hit the jump. It's 57.6, 57.6 or 189 feet, 189. So as we continue right along, quick update from the FIFA World Cup, Serbia 2, Switzerland 2 at halftime. Brazil nil, Cam uh, Brazil nil, Cameroon nil. If it stays the same, then Switzerland and Brazil would advance through to the round of 16. Here we go. Turns, sets and drives. Oh, good, good, solid looking direction there off the turn all the way through. Good work there off the turn there for Tobias uh, uh, Georges, who is already through having jumped 58-3 on the opener. So just looking at this one last jump again, just it's good stout position, but just took an upper body crush there, uh, which prevented him from getting too much out of that ramp. But there, it's 57.2, 188 feet. So 57.2, 188 feet, hottest on the first, no doubt. Just as well. He's through to the next round of the competition. Only one spot left. We've got Miranda, Paradi, Georges, one, two, three right now. Zoha hanging on to fourth place. Our next competitor, last competitor in the elimination round of the men's jumping competition. That is going to be Emil Ritter, and we'll get to see him next. What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat, a place where that summer feeling lasts all year long, a place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers, a place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com.
All right, uh, back on with our uh, event. We've got the open men's jump, the very last competitor about to take to the water right now. He's just left the dock, and uh, it is going to be none other than Chile's uh, uh, Mill Ritter. There is the leaderboard, anything over 57.9, and the Mill Ritter is through. Patricio Zohar, 57.9, and you put the best for him, but not enough to see him through if uh, things go uh, the way that they're intended so far as the seedings are concerned. And our number one seed going into this men's jump elimination round from Chile. This is Emil Ritter. Here he is. Jump number one. Little on the heels off the turn, but managing to just take it all the way through. We'll see if that jump is enough, but Emil Ritter looking good out there. Not only is he looking to uh, to try and get through to the next round, but he's also trying to get uh, uh, Chilean nation uh, bragging rights over uh, Felipe Miranda, whose jump of 61.9 meters or 203 feet is still the lead distance. The distance should be known any moment now for Emil Ritter as he makes his way down towards the uh, the dockside end. Yeah, it's 57.4, 57.4, 195. So it is 59.4, 59.4. So it's a done deal. The four finalists, Alex Paradis, Felipe Miranda, Tobias Georges and Emil Ritter. They each will have three additional jumps in this competition starting tomorrow in the men's jump final. Let's see what Emil Raider can do with the two more jumps that he has in this round. Ideally, he would like to be the last person to start off the dock in the finals, but kind of wheeling up a little bit off the turn and uh, not able to adjust in time to take a stronger position into the bottom. We're just looking at this instant replay again for Emil Ritter. Yes, Hanel up a little bit high, almost falling out the back, as a matter of fact. And then having to work, overwork his uh, shoulders a little bit just to make it onto the jump. The distance is, uh, for Emil Ritter, 59.2. So losing about... 20 centimeters and a foot in distance. Here we go, folks. Here is the Mioretta. Both speed set at 57K. Ramp height at six foot high, 1.8 meters high. Can he put this together? He knows he'll be skiing tomorrow. The question is how soon or how late? Better. I believe that one was better so far as his height and his trajectory was concerned. But he'll have three more opportunities tomorrow to really and truly get it together. He'll return to the dock, Emil Ritter. 
probably with a little bit of a wry smile considering that none of these jumps are anywhere close to what uh, distance uh, Felipe Miranda posted out with his 203 foot jump or 61 and a bit meters and it's 59.8 or 196 59.8 or 196 feet so that concludes the jump event in the elimination round we're going to see some jumping tomorrow in all categories but in the meantime let's have a look at the leaderboard felipe miranda with 61.8 meters and mil ritter in second with 59.4 alex parody in third with 58.5 tobias georges with 58.3 those are your four making it through to next round's commiserations to Patricio Zoha, who was hanging on in there with 57.9 with a new personal best. And, uh, and that concludes the jump in. Under 21 Women's Tricks, our next event will take place in a moment. So stick around. More coverage of the 29, uh, 2022 Pan American Water Ski Championships continues on.
For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. Times. How about you? Yeah, I got to set in. Uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here. Oh, of course. Can you get that, Will? Yeah, man, I got it. Thanks for calling Wake House. This is Will. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got those in stock. I'm involved with the Flowpoint Method because I think it's a really strong program. We've been working on a couple things and it's just fine tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality.
try match play at bplayfield.com. then welcome back welcome back to the Pan American Water Ski Championships a Trix event here's our schedule U21 women U21 men open women open men in that order but making its way up and down here is our start list for the U21 women Juanito Rojas Rebecca Ramsey, Domingo Gonzalez, Daniela Verschweivel, and uh, Neely Ross. Five competitors in U21 women's tricks.
Right, folks, our first tricker is about to take to the water. Juanito Rojas uh, from uh, from Colombia. Right then, let's bring it on. We've got uh, the uh, under 21 women's trickers now. Going past the green buoy, a couple of side slides here and there. So Juanita Rojas, uh, best uh, best score in uh, tricks up to this uh, up to this competition is 940 points. Nicely done with the surface turns. All right, then uh, that uh, that looks like the extent of her trick in there on pass number one. We'll see what she can do on pass number two. So getting all the way through that run. So a total of four competitors will make their way out of uh, this uh, this five skier elimination round in the uh, the U21 competition in the women's tricks. Juanita Roja of uh, Colombia. Just looking at this instant replay, just uh, one or two wake tricks there and uh, some surface turns towards the end. Mark Roski. Our boat driver coming into the course right now with, uh, with one eater with uh, foot in tow. from our official that the uh, that the skier is in the course now so anything uh, he or she does will count as points unless he or she is designated a positional trick or oh, goes for the toe wake back and uh, falling in and there is uh, Juanito Rojas there out of Colombia a oh, good good Commendable effort. So looking at this instant replay again, tried the, the toe wake back and uh, fell in on that one. Our next gear to go will be Rebecca Ramsey. And we'll return with the U21 uh, women's tricks. Quick reminder about the TWBC podcast. And, uh, I can grab some in a we'll return minute. right after this. Fácil, hazla fácil. Con PF, te regala tiempo, te regala vida, PF. Hi. 
My name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. Once I got in here, it was a big eye-opener how much different that they go about everything. All right. Here we go. Here's Rebecca Ramsey getting off to a uh, to a sprightly star here. Keeping things going with some surface turns. And again, all the way through on pass number one without too much in the way of difficulty. Starting off with the Waco, a good, good spin there. A little broken over at the waist, but managing to use her strength to recover well. Nice surface turns to uh, to work away f with uh, through to the end. And uh, on the face of it, a pretty good looking pass there with some side slides at the end and uh, she'll be happy with that. We'll see what she can do with the with the return run. Skier number two out of five right here in the U21 women's trick competition. We got Dominga Gonzalez and Daniela Veshwivel and uh, Neely Ross. And I'm not too sure quite what happened there uh, towards the end. Something's happened to the boat. We've got a bad vibration. I don't know what's going on. All right. So whilst we investigate what uh, what's uh, gone on with the boat, we'll take a look at the uh, the starting dock. We'll return right after this. What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat, a place where that summer feeling lasts all year long, a place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers, a place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com.
For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. times how about you yeah I gotta set in uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here oh, of course can you get that well yeah man I got it thanks for calling Wake House this is well uh, yeah looks like we've got those in stock I'm involved with the flow point method because I think it's a really strong program we've been working on a couple things and it's just fine-tuning and I want to be able to make sure that I can do those movements no matter where I am so I can feel confident skiing at any site. It's just really all-encompassing and I think that's really beneficial. It's very helpful to like keep on those keys and have a support team behind you that you can ask questions to and are there for every step of the way. All right then, just to keep you apprised of the current situation here with the 2022 Pan America War Ski Championships and the U21 Women's Tricks. Uh, uh, prior to Rebecca Ramsey coming into uh, the second and final pass, the boat actually called a, a piece of rope uh, on the approach and got just got stuck with the prop. And, uh, but it uh, hasn't done any damage to the prop or to the shaft or anything like that. And the boat continues to run as per normal. Let's have a look and see what Rebecca Ramsey can do with a second and final 20 second pass having stood up the... Uh, the first run. Looks like she's going to do something along the lines of a toe O. Seems to be very, uh, very well adept at toe tricks. Good toe wake back and a toe wake front. Foot out of the, uh, the toe strap. Goes through a step sequence uh, towards the end. Nicely done. Does she make it all the way through? Uh, wake, line, wake line front. Yeah, and I think that will do. Good, good skiing there from Rebecca Ramsey. Four skiers will make it out of uh, the... Uh, out of this preliminary round through to the, to, through to the final. And uh, I would probably suggest that Rebecca Ramsey is probably going to be the f one of those four. So good, good, solid effort. Very, very patient and uh, taking the uh, the previous situation with the boat into account, where it just ran over the uh, the small piece of rope and in, into account. Uh, she held a nerve very well indeed. Certainly a little bit off-putting when uh, when some things you can't control uh, get in your way. But uh, with uh, Rebecca Ramsey, she was uh, certainly uh, 
up to the task of uh, getting through the second and final 20-second pass with, uh, with immaculate ease. There you go, some toe tricks, some, to some step overs, and, uh, and there you go. All right, next gear to take to the water is going to be Domingo Gonzalez, and we will return right after this. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. All right, returning to action right here and now. Domingo Gonzalez right here and now with her opening pass and uh, she means business. It looks like a toe seven front, which indeed it is. Toe five back, toe eight back to back and toe eight back to back reverse, keeping the toe foot very close to a standing leg in order for her to stay in control without having to pull on the rope too much. Keeping the tension very consistent. Couple of toe sides out of, uh, out of the wake and uh, well-constructed pass, well-executed to boot. Domingo Gonzalez out of Chile. Dancing away across the top of the water, especially with the toe seven front, keeping consistent rotation all the way through, which is what's demanded of that trick in order to be, for it to be scored. Smart elevation off the top of the wake and making sure that everything is uh, crisply turned from, from one trick to the next. Especially the uh, the toe out and toe straight back in. Nicely done. And goes with the toe back to backs on the outside of the wake. A little bit of a hitch before she goes into the wrap toe side, but everything looks uh, uh, pretty peachy there for her. That is uh, Domingo Gonzalez out of, uh, out of Chile. Thank you. Looking at Dockside, we're seeing a few more of our trickers. Daniela Veschweivel is our next uh, competitor out and she comes to us uh, from Colombia. And I wouldn't imagine that uh, that Neely Ross is uh, too far away either. She will be our last competitor out in the U21 uh, women's tricking competition. All right, and welcome back. 2022 uh, Pan America Water Ski Championships been brought to you by the... Uh, by the good folks of uh, Pefe, uh, along with uh, Good Water Skis, uh, Masterline, uh, the Miranda Ski School, the Chilean Water Ski and Wakeboard Federation, and, uh, and also the uh, Chilean uh, Ministry of Sport, along with their Institute of Sport. We thank those folks very, very much indeed. Here we go. Good spin with the wake line five front. And there we go, edging out for the first of her backflips. Now a case in the top of the wake, but she's still able to, you, to continue on with that momentum. A couple of side slides at the end. Fantastic trick in there from start to finish, standing up on the first, standing up on the second. I would imagine she's taken the lead at this point on with uh, with the points that she scored. So uh, with each uh, each skier that we're seeing, uh, we're seeing better scores uh, coming through. Pushing out, we're pushing out a score. Juanito Rojas with uh, 
1,150 points. So just looking at the tail end of uh, that effort there from uh, Domingo Gonzalez. Now we're going to go on to Daniela Verschweivel. She takes the water right here and now, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see if we can get some more more trick points. Approaching the course here and now with pass number one, Daniela Verschweivel of uh, Colombia. Daniela Verschweivel, who is uh, tricked upwards of 7,000 points. Uh, her best score of the season, actually, is a 77.50 out of a tournament that took place in Colombia. Good, good, solid tricking right now, working away for uh, each toe trick. There we go, Towick line, uh, Towick line back to back towards the end. Solid skiing there from Daniela Verschweivel. So as we look at Daniela Verschweivel, we're looking also at the trick score for Rebecca Ramsey, 1680, 1680. But solid looking toe tricks, including that uh, toe wake o, and then a toe wake line back, and then working away off the surface with a toe wake back and uh, pull straight in. Toe wake line back to back, Daniela Verschweivel. Very much on her game right now with the first of two 20 second passes, uh, that being toe tricks. much to pick apart on that particular run but there was a Daniel Verschweivel and uh, there is a Neely Ross uh, out of uh, Canada a resident of Winter Garden in uh, in Central Florida and there not too far away from her is uh, Pato Font who will be riding in the tow boat uh, uh, providing uh, Neely Ross uh, with some support uh, going forwards and, and notwithstanding the fact that he'll be there holding on to the rope. Or it could be incumbent upon her father to do, uh, to, uh, to assume that role, uh, Drew Ross, who is on dockside as well. He's got the, uh, the little piece of rope, otherwise known as the Aussie rope release which uh, actually made its uh, debut here in, uh, in 2003 in the uh, Junior World uh, Championships. So a significant piece of uh, trick skiing history was set right here. Ski line back, edging away. Good, good effort there on the, the flips from one side to the next. Here comes the flip twist to the back. Flip twist to the front. She could do two more flips if she feels frisky enough to do so. There's the mode back to back. Holds that one and holds the second one as well. All right, standing up both passes. Daniela Verschweibel. Be eager to find out what that point score is gonna be, but it's gonna be upwards of 7,000, I believe. Good, good effort there from one trick to the next. Daniela Verschweivel in the under 21 women's trick elimination round. Still waiting on scores for uh, the likes of Domingo Gonzalez and indeed uh, Daniela Verschweivel, the, uh, the trick scores that we do have. 
consist of uh, Juanito Rojas with uh, 1,150 points and Rebecca Ramsey with 1,680. Last gear to go in the women's trick elimination round is going to be Neely Ross. Just great elevation with uh, with those tricks and uh, getting everything she got she wanted out of that run. Daniela Verschweibel. All right, let's have a look. And the last gear on the running order is uh, Neely Ross. And uh, we'll be back right after this. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. All right, bringing in Neely Ross for our first and two 20-second runs. Skiering course right now, coming in, shaking out the nerves. Toe seven front, beautifully executed. Toe five back, toe eight back to back, toe eight back to back reverse. Former world women's trick champion Neely Ross going uh, at a rapid pace here. Toe wake oh, toe wake line oh. Does she go for the toe wake line back? Yes, she does. Stays in the back, toe wake line back to back. Here's the reverse, boom, hits that one as well. Does she have anything more back and front? Oh, wow. Fantastic looking opening pass of Toe Tricks, courtesy of Neely Ross. Just absolutely on fire with these tricks from the very start through to the very end. Including that Toe Wake back to back uh, reverse, getting bags of elevation there and the judges uh, will have absolutely no choice but to score that as well as every other trick that she's performed they're so crisp and and clean from uh, from one trick to the next and here we go with Domingo Gonzalez 5280 5284 Domingo Gonzalez the latest score that's just been released and just working away just from start to finish at a very rapid high tempo Domingo Gonzalez uh, in the lead with 52-80 we're still yet to get the score for uh, Daniela Vichweivel that's being worked on at this time I see a score but I know well enough that uh, that we, it's only halfway scored we'll see what the uh, the other half of that pass of that effort is going to be score wise Neely Ross getting ready for pass number two. On the back of that, uh, that Malibu response, uh, uh, TXI. We'll see what transpires. There we go, Drew Ross in the tow boat. And uh, speaking about Drew Ross, uh, he's, gonna, he's part of a podcast that has just dropped uh, within the last few minutes on the TWBC podcast, where I had the pleasure of interviewing not one, not two, but three members of the Ross family, Drew, Charlie, and Neely Ross, all at the same time, uh, 24 hours ago. And that podcast is already published. Uh, you can go to Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iHeart Podcasts, or anywhere else you choose to listen to your favorite podcasts. Here is Neely Ross. Skia is in the course right now, so anything she does uh, is going to be a scoring move. Here we go. Boom. There's the mode back-to-back, -back, and it's reverse. 
There's the front flip. Does she go for the reverse? Not quite. Flip twist back. Flip twist back reverse. Here she goes with uh, the flip twist to the front. Ski line to the back. Very high tempo here. Ski line back. Oh, does she go for the ski line back to back? No, she bulks out of that one, but a decent effort there. Great, great skiing there for Needy Ross standing up on both runs. And uh, it's hard to imagine. Uh, it's actually hard to, to, to remember the last time any of our uh, female trickers in this U21 actually fell on, on their run. So uh, each of them extremely consistent. And Daniela Verschweivel with 6980, 6980 points. So just 20 points shy of uh, making it through the 7,000-point the barrier. But I'll tell you what, a skier that consistently tricks over that amount and upwards of 10,000 points you're seeing right now in the form of Neely Ross. There we go with the, with the ski line back and, and goes with the five front at the end. Five back. Sets herself up for the ski line back to back, which I think she got the the ski over the rope. There was a little bit of a uh, of a question mark whether she actually got the ski over at the uh, at the end point. But there we go. There's your leaderboard. Daniela Veschweivel with 69.80. Uh, Dominga Gonzalez in second place right there. And uh, you saw the remainder of the leaderboard. And here we go into the U21 men's uh, trick in running order. We have uh, seven skiers here. And eight and four of those make it through to the next round. Samuel Weber, Paul Wesley Corey, uh, Vicente Tiza, uh, Mickey Geller, uh, Blaze Grubbs, uh, Tobias Georges, and finally Pato Font. All that to come right after this. Right then, so coming in on his opening pass, this is uh, Samuel Weber. Oh, and getting in a little bit of a, a difficult situation towards the end there. I had some decent tricks to, uh, to work into that move. Some surface back-to-backs to open up his cores. There's the wake back from inside to out and wake, uh, wake uh, back to front. And doing the reverse uh, from off the same wake, there's the, uh, the line back and uh, the line front. Trying to go for the ski line back, but just not getting the elevation or the rotation enough to make that trick happen. I'm going to pick him up and uh, bring him back into the course for the second and final 20 second pass. And we'll return with that right after this.
try match play at bplayfield.com. All right, working our way through and uh, continuing on, and uh, the uh, the current also uh, going on right now are some matches going on in the FIFA World Cup uh, as they round off the. Uh, the group stage games. I'll give you more details of that in a moment. In the meantime, let's uh, let's bring on Samuel Weber. All right, working his way and getting round and uh, getting all of the tricks that he wanted to on pass number two with hands. With a combination of uh, of tricks, with, uh, with toe tricks and whatever he ha else he had uh, left in the uh, in the sink, so far as hand tricks are concerned. But we're looking at this score for Neely Ross. It's 10,660. 10,660 for Neely Ross. 10,660 for Neely Ross. And that should be a done deal there so far as the tricking is concerned in the U21 in the elimination round as we... Look at the tail end of uh, Samuel Weber's uh, effort out there. Wake line back and uh, wake line front. All of it looking pretty stable. Then a foot in the back and a side slide from one side to the next. Good, good skin. All right. Neely Ross, 10,660 ahead of Daniela Verschweibel, 6,980 ahead of Domingo Gonzalez with 5,280. Ahead of Rebecca Ramsey with 1,680. Those four through to the next round. Commiserations to Juanito Rojas, a score of 1,150 points. Probably one of her better scores this season. Unfortunately, not enough to see her uh, through to the U21 women's trick final all right there paul wesley corey now And looking good. Looking very, very stable indeed on all of his tricks. Does he have the ski line back? Tries, uh, tries the same trick as Samuel Weber, but coming up a little bit short of the mark. He's in the water. And just looking at the, these, uh, these tricks uh, once again. Some good wake back-to-backs and surface uh, spins and uh, tries the 540, which he does. Doesn't go into the wrap, though, but goes immediately to the back and goes to a hand-to-hand 540-degree -hand spin to the front. So a, a 540 and its reverse as part of his run. And then working diligently through the step sequence towards the end this is a uh, paul wesley corey out of the united states and uh, out of the uh, the golden state of california paul wesley corey and then thought why not let's try a ski line if i can get it in time and there you go paul wesley corey will return right after this
All right, the uh, tow boat making its way down towards the end, and as part of the, uh, the U21 men's tricking competition. We only have uh, two other tricking events to come. We've got the women's tricks in the open and the men's tricks in the open as well. Just to let you good folks know that, uh, that the final matches in the group stage have, uh, have, have gone full time. Serbia 2, Switzerland 3, which means Switzerland advances through to the, uh, the, uh, the round of 16. So too does Brazil, who won their opening two games to do that, but they were beaten in game number three by Cameroon. So even though Cameroon doesn't advance, they score a famous victory against a uh, legendary opposition in the form of Brazil, so well done to them. Here we go, Paul Wesley Corey. Can... Oh, oh, goes in for the Toa wrapping, very quickly spun and uh, not much in the way of stability there towards the end. That was probably more of a throwaway trick than anything else and uh, Toe five back there to open up his account, Paul Wesley Corey. Keeping a good, good uh, tension with that toe rope there close to his standing leg that enables him to stay in the reverse toe back long enough to edge to the wake and do the toe wake back to back. And then it was a case of doing the toe wake front, a couple of toe sides or at least one toe side, but not getting enough of his weight to the front of the ski, enough to ride it away. All right then, that was Paul Wesley Corey. Next competitor up is going to be uh, Vicente Tiza. He gets ready to go and we will see him trick next. So, ski on the water from Chile, Vincente Tiza. Four skiers advance out of the U21 men's tricking elimination round. Good, good skiing there. Dancing from trick to trick. There we go, Toho into wrapping, Toho out. Toho wake back. Oh, fantastic skiing there for uh, Vicente Atiza out of Chile. Like the way he moved on top of that water and uh, really, really uh, put, put some great tricking Out there with the, the toe tricks, keeping the toe foot very close to the standing leg. And, uh, and of course, by doing that, it minimizes the, uh, the amount of movement that you have to make with your shoulders and indeed with your, uh, with your toe foot in order to, uh, to stay on top of the ski and, uh, and execute the spins. That was uh, Vincente uh, Tiza. Our next competitor up is going to be Mickey Geller out of Canada. 
Only four competitors advance out of this category of uh, tricks, the U21 men's elimination round. There on the dock, uh, overseeing things is uh, Matt Reaney. And uh, a reminder once again that the uh, the podcast featuring uh, Matt Reaney and uh, Whitney McClintock Reaney is uh, dropped earlier on today. You can listen to that on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, iHeart Podcasts, or anywhere else that you choose to listen to your podcast. It's the TWBC podcast, available where good podcasts are found. Here we go, folks. Skier on the water, Vincente Tiza. Here he comes, Vincente, getting a good elevation there with uh, the first flip. Oh, a uh, case in the wake a little bit, but uh, he knows how to deal with that, but unfortunately, just not getting the uh, the quickness, the explosion of elevation there with the flip twist back to front. Unless you're committed to edging all the way through on that one, then that, uh, that flip twist back to front uh, could end up rather messy at the end as he found out to his cost. Uh, Vincente uh, uh, teaser. Just looking at that towards the end, that is Vincente, uh, Vincente uh, Teaser. Well, it's already at the dock and getting ready to bring our next competitor and that next competitor. All right then, so he's left the dock. Our next competitor is Mickey Keller next. So, on the water at this time, this is Mickey Geller. And uh, any score that happens to be the lead uh, at, at the time that Mickey Geller tricks, he has to trick in excess of that in order to make it through to the next round. Oh, there, oh, a beautifully executed front flip. Does he do the reverse? Yes, he nails that one too. Waco from wake to wake. Oh, and again, a little bit stuck there towards the end with the uh, with the surface back to back outside the wake. But Mickey Geller, absolutely thunderous looking opening pass. Started with the back flip and then went in for the next one, although didn't not getting much in the way of height. That kind of complicates matters when it comes to landing, unless unless you really know how to use your knees and really, uh, really squat on the, on that particular move, then things can get really sideways really quickly. However, his front flips, by contrast, have bags of height. They need to. Boom, absolutely on fire there with those two front flips. Does the wake to wake Waco. He tries something else at the at the end there, a surface back-to-back. -back. And after doing all of that, going down on the surface back-to-back, -back, that's a uh, that's rather unusual. Okay, we will uh, we will return to uh, to the action on the water, courtesy of Mickey Geller. Next competitor to go is going to be Blaze Grubbs, and we will return to that action next.
fácil. Con PF te regala tiempo, te regala vida, PF. All right then, folks, continuing right along with the U21 boys uh, at Boys Tricking Competition. We're halfway through the list and Mickey Geller halfway through his effort. He's gone through a whole slew of hand tricks. Let's see if he's uh, uh, just as sprightly with the toe tricks. Boat speed set. There's Matt Reaney in the, the tow boat. And there is Mickey Geller a, a few meters uh, behind. Looks like he's getting set for something along the lines of a toe five back. Certainly not wrapped for a toe seven that much, I know. There's the toe five back, toe back to back, toe back to back. Toe wake back and toe wake front. Toe sides in each direction to the back and to the front. Reverse toe back and reverse toe front. Toe wrap, oh, straight into the toe wrapping. Toe out was thinking about the toe wake to come afterwards, but decided to go with the surface toe out. And that might not have been the best decision, but uh, he'll swim into the shore. So Mickey Geller uh, goes almost a full stand up on, on both runs, but uh, I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll be pleased with his effort. Uh, the points should reflect that. And we'll find out uh, what his score is in a moment. We've got one score so far, and that is courtesy of Samuel Weber with 29.40. Haven't had any scores uh, being published yet uh, uh, from either Paul Wesley Corey or T Tisa Vicente, uh, Vicente Tisa or indeed Mickey Geller. Next skier up is going to be Blaze Grubbs. He's in the water right now and getting ready to go. Blaze Grubbs and only two other skiers to go after him. Tobias Georges and uh, Patricio Font. We'll, uh, we'll stay with live pictures uh, for, uh, for Blaze Grubbs who comes to us out of Rio Linda in California. Here we go. This is Blaze Grubbs, whose best score this season has been 92 20. Working his way from one flip to the next. There we go. There's the ski line out towards the end. Uh, wake five for the, to the front, ski line to the back then manages to, uh, to still stay on top of the water long enough to, uh, to get past uh, those moves. The effort was certainly there for, uh, there, there for uh, late drops. So starting off with the, uh, with I believe the, uh, the flip twist back or uh, actually it's the mo back to back. It seems to be a uh, a continuing trend that skiers that are uh, able to do the uh, the mo back to back normally put them right at the very start of the run and do those back to back just looking through uh, his effort a blaze grubs wake five front and then ski line to the back at that end, he was struggling to stay up, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if he can do a good enough job with there with the, uh, the return uh, toe pass. As we take a look dockside and, uh, and see uh, Pato Font uh, getting ready for his, uh, for his turn, he will be last out. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, certainly many times Pan American champion over the years in various age categories looking to add this uh, this title to his bow Right, here we are, folks. Okay, so coming in on pass number two uh, is uh, Blaze Grubbs. Working his way through uh, the street. Oh, toe five front, he gets a stall there on that one. There's the Toe wrap in Toe Waco. What does he have left? Toe Wake line back. Does he have anything more beyond that? He's again a little bit bogged down with some of these tricks towards the end. Toe wake line back to back. Does he have anything more? Toe wake front, toe back. And I think he lost a lot of time through, uh, through one or two uh, costly errors. So there we go. That is Blaze Grubbs. So just looking at this once again uh, for uh, for Blaze Grubbs, just working his way from one trick to the next. We're just uh, having trouble with uh, just staying coordinated and staying in uh, in a good rhythm from start to finish. Always seem to be interrupted by uh, by one or, by one or two anomalies in his run, and uh, just couldn't really recover well enough to keep uh, to keep the flow going and. Uh, maybe lost a few of those tricks that we saw performed at the end out of time. We'll, uh, we'll get an indication of that via the point score. We're gonna push some points now. We've got, uh, here it is, uh, Vicente uh, Teaser with uh, 35, uh, 40. We'll uh, try and uh, get the other point scores uh, for you uh, in short order. In the meantime, we've got on the water Tobias Georges. Oh, and... Yep, and uh, getting uh, down a little bit, bogged down at the end there. That is uh, Tobias Georges with the opening pass of Toe Tricks. Toe five back, a high tempo start, comparatively uh, so to what in, uh, in comparison to the Toe seven front. There's the Toe five front in the middle of the run. Toe out, Toe straight back in. Trying to hold his shoulders up there and getting little squirrely there with the uh, with the landing of the uh, the toe wake lino and just unable to ride that one out all right then so uh, looking at our uh, final competitor to go it is going to be pato font and we'll return to him and the uh, remaining tricks of uh, tobias george's right after this
All right, returning to action. Here we go. This is Tobias Georges. There you go, returning with his handle pass, going with the front flip, slapping that one down. There we go. There's another flip, and the flip twist towards the back. Does he have anything left over? Goes with the ski line back, ski line back to back. Does he go for the ski line? Oh, yes, he does. Nails that one. Oh, a beautifully executed ski line five front right at the end. And it should be enough to give him the points necessary to make it through to the next round of the competition. Incidentally, so far as that is concerned, we have had point scores come through with the likes of Samuel Weber right, right, right from the get-go with 29.40. Paul Wesley Corey with 34.00. Vicente Teaser with 35.40. And uh, the first uh, person who has provisionally put himself through to the last round in the, among the top four in this Elimination round of seven competitors. It is uh, Mickey Geller with 6,030 points. So Mickey Geller should be uh, pretty pleased right now. And uh, obviously there's more to the tricking event than, than just the actual action on top of the water. There's the, uh, there's the judging component, of course. And uh, there's that 30-minute period after the, uh, the trick scoring sheets are, uh, are released uh, to the... Uh, to the coaches and skiers concerned, just in case there are any discrepancies uh, that need to be addressed. And, uh, and if the scores remain unchanged or, or indeed changed after 30 minutes, then they become official within that time. All right then, so uh, we're waiting on the score for Blaze Grubs and Tobias Georges. Now here is a dynamite trick skier from Mexico. This is Patricio Font. So Patricio Font now coming in. There we go. The executed trick. Whoa, uh, getting in a little bit, a little bit stuck there at the beginning. Toic line, back to back, Toic line, back to back, reverse. Toic, look at him go. Toic line, five back. Oh, and completely off axis there with the, uh, the Toic line, five back. Didn't look like he was completely settled there with uh, with the Todrix right from the beginning. Started off with the toe seven front. Looked okay uh, for a good portion of uh, of this run, including the toe wake back to back and its reverse. But it's upon that lining of the reverse where things are started to go pear shaped for him. He had to slow down a little bit and uh, break his rhythm before he went in for the remainder of his tricks. Including this uh, toe-wake uh, toe line back-to-back uh, -back sequence and then he stood up to the front. And then the toe-wake line five back and uh, falling in on that particular effort. All right, we will rejoin uh, Pado Font for his handle pass in just a, uh, just a few moments, so sit tight. Con coverage continues of the 2022 Pan American Water Ski Championships right after this.
All right, then, continuing right along. And uh, we've got uh, some uh, some breaking news uh, coming through so far as a new trick score that will be released uh, very soon. Here's the latest score. Blaze Grub, 7,900. 7,900 takes the lead away from Mickey Geller. And he makes it through to the next round of the competition alongside Mickey Geller. So... Those latest two points, Mickey Geller with 6,030 and Blaze Grubs with 7,900 points will be finals bound. And I'm sure that uh, Tobias Georges uh, will have that distinction as well, even though he tricked uh, subpar. And the same can be said, uh, no doubt, for, uh, for Pado Font, who is uh, looking for his uh, second and final 20-second pass. Positional to the back, flip twist back to back. There's the back mobe, back mobe reverse. Half jack to the front. There we go, flip twist oh, almost over the top of the ski. Oh, look at that, keeping the flow going. Beautifully executed with the ski lines towards the end. Very discernible change in, uh, in engine noise uh, was, was there about two thirds of the way into the run. Of course, the uh, the skiers can actually request that to prior to towards prior to them actually performing out in the water with the uh, with the help help and assistance of the person in the boat that, that's releasing for them. Not uncommon for uh, for the for the driver to uh, to hit the up button a couple of times to uh, to give a little boost for some of these backflips. We got the uh, the score for uh, for Tobias George's 68.30, 6,830 for Tobias George's. That puts him in second place at the moment with one score remaining. And oh, just look at this uh, instant replay there for Pato Font. Just absolute strength and experience coming into play, including the front flips towards the end. Ski line five back. Ski line five front. Then ski line O, a slide to the back, a ski line back to back, slide to the front once more. Wake five back and uh, just expends, just empties the tank there at the end. Uh, Pado Font, probably not one to be going to be his uh, one of his better performances, but it is what it is. So. That is the end of the U21 tricks. We now go on to the open women's tricks. And uh, our starting order will be displayed up on the screen momentarily. And there it is, Natalia Kuklevan will take to the water first. Then we go with Regina Jaquis. Now the reason those two uh, highly rated skiers are at the top of the list is because they have had no significant ranking scores in the last season or so. So uh, they are, they're forced to start from the back. Uh, Violetta Mokluski uh, from Argentina, third out. Uh, Cristiana de Osma uh, from Peru, there uh, fourth out. Uh, Valentina Gonzalez, Daniela Vashwaivo, uh, Kennedy Hattinson, uh, Pedrini, Anna Gay, Neely Ross, and finally, Erica Lang. So it looks like we're going to go straight in. Natalia Kuglavan has had her fair share of uh, bright moments in her career as a uh, as a tricker, including the uh, the Pan American Games. Has also uh, also medaled in uh, in U21 and uh, an under 17 worlds as well, to the best of my knowledge. Let's have a look and see what she has. Hasn't been competing all that much in recent times. We'll see, uh, see if she is uh, feeling how she's feeling right now. Here we go. Natalia Kuklavan. Ski line back to back, ski line back and to the front. Does she go for the back flip? Yes, she does. Here's the reverse, nails that one too. Four more flips she could do. The flip twist back. Here's the flip twist back to front. Twist to the back. Mo back to back. Does she keep 
keep that direction. Yes, she does. Uh, Mo back to back reverse. Beautifully executed tricks there. Very high tempo, one to the other. There you see a coach in the boat. Alexei Zarnasek, former world, former world tricking champion and current world tricking world record holder with 12,570 points. So he knows a thing or two about tricking. Wake five back to get things up and running there for Natalia Kuglovan and then goes into the, uh, the ski line back to back, ski line back and then sets herself up well for the sequence of fl six flips that she has one after the other. All building up in terms of difficulty. Back flips from side to side. Flip twists from one to the other, then flip twist back and then flip twist to the front. Then at this time, she only has two, uh, two flips that she can uh, left for her to do, which is the flip twist back to back, the back mobe, and then replicates that with the reverse. Slightly different uh, spin, slightly different balance, but it's, uh, but it's all the same. Good, good, solid effort there for, uh, for Natalia Kuklovan. And a second and final 20 second pass will be coming up in just a moment. There's the remaining portion of our schedule. The open women and the open men's tricking. And we'll return to Natalia Kuklovan next. Here we go. Toe seven front for starters for Natalia Kuglovan. Toe five back, toe eight back to back. Here's its reverse. Keeping the toe foot close to a standing leg. There we go, toe five front, toe o out, toe o straight back in, toe wake o. High pace, high tempo there. Toe wake line o, toe wake line back. Now toe wake line back to back. All oh, one short on there, the elevation with the, for that one, but that should be enough by way of a tricking points to assure that she's through to the next round. Probably a little bit disappointed that she wasn't able to stand up all the way through, but for Natalia Kuklovan, it's uh, certainly a halfway decent score for her and uh, should be enough to, to send her through among the top six out of the 11 trickers that we have in the Open Women's Tricking Competition list of skiers. Certainly great, great skiing there from her start to finish. So they're just a little bit short there on the toe wake line back to back. Uh, just not getting quite her elevation up in time. And uh, we're going to take a quick look at uh, the, uh, the latest score. Patricio Font, 10,340. So... 10,330 points. So, there we go. Patricio Font, 10,340. Blaze Grubbs, 7,550. Tobias George's, 6,830. Uh, Mickey Wheeler, 4,170. Those are the top four, and they make it through to the U20, uh, to the U21 men's tricket final. Vincenzo Teaser with 35.40, uh, 4, 3,400 points for uh, Paul Wesley Corey. And uh, at right there in seventh place, Samuel Weber with his point score. And uh, just, to, just as an aside, uh, just to put, uh, put a little bit of uh, excitement into the event, Neely Ross tricking 10,660. So, 320 points above Patricio Font. Not that there was any kind of bragging rights or anything, but uh, I think it's probably uh, useful to mention. 
All right then, so on the water. First time we've seen her trick competitively this season with the toe seven front to start off things. This is Regina Jaquis. Toe five back, toe eight back to back, toe eight, oh no, box out of the reverse. Oh, now she's picking up the pace. Look at this. And toe out wrapping, toe wake O, oh, toe wake line back to the front. Certainly going after it. No two ways about it there. That is Regina Jaquis. So a solid effort there on the pass number one for Regina Jaquis. Not going with the uh, with the full on uh, fiberglass carbon fiber knee brace that she uh, that she had uh, around about this time last year skiing in the World Championships, but going with uh, with a neoprene brace and uh, that appears to have, uh, have aided a little bit of with uh, flexibility, able to stand up all the way through. And I think the relief is going to be very, very palpable that she's able to do these uh, these tricks. 16 months out of uh, out of surgery that uh, that took place in in May of uh, of last year. Slalom in the World Championships, the uh, Visit Lake County IWWF World Water Ski Championships that took place over at Jack Travis Ski School and uh, they're pleased to be able to do the same again in the 2023 season. Recently announced that uh, the World Open Water Ski Championships will be returning to Lake County in Central Florida and uh, we hope to be able to, uh, to broadcast that event exclusively live next season. There we see uh, Martin Coleman in the towboat looking over uh, Regina Jaquis's uh, performance out there on the water. We'll see what she does with handle tricks. She's uh, gone past the the most difficult portion of her performance which is the uh, the toe tricks especially given where she is uh, fitness wise with her uh, right uh, right knee here she comes Regina Jaquist second and final 20 second run Oh, and going down hard on the on the first trick there, Regina. I don't know whether that was uh, supposed to be a, a ski line five front or a wake five front. Uh, looks like from uh, from where the rope uh, was uh, was fixing to be at the end of that trick, it looked like it was going to be a wake five front. Ready to wrap. We'll take a look at our uh, remaining skiers. There's the, there's the re remainder of the riding order. And uh, we will be back to bring on our next competitor, uh, Violetta Mikulski of Argentina, next. then so we're continuing to uh, to get scores and our uh, remaining two uh, events of the day women's tricks and uh, men's tricks will follow afterwards and let's uh, see the uh, the latest score to come through latest score to come through Natalia Kuglavan with a 72 70 7270 points 7270 points 
Alonso obviously taking the lead after uh, after one score is available. Right then, folks, here we go. All right, here we go. Skier on the water now, Violetta Mikulski. Wake line O is going to be a first move, which indeed it is. Wake line back and line front. Line back and wake line the front. Handle staying very, very uh, low to her hips, enabling her to, uh, to go from one trick to the next, including that Waco in to wrap in and Waco out. Trying to throw in as much as she can towards the end, uh, scoring points along the way. And that is Violetta Bukowski of, uh, of Argentina. All right, so just looking at uh, Violetta Mikulski uh, towards the end of that run and uh, just a little bit in survival mode towards the end. All right, so we're, we've got another score coming through and that score is uh, Regina Jaquist of 3,050. 3,050 points for Regina Jaquist. So we're up to date with the scores, uh, right up to the current skier. So uh, Regina Jaquis. So uh, we'll see if uh, Regina Jaquis will make it through to the next round of the competition. Uh, there are six spots open. Certainly can't really afford to put too much of a foot wrong uh, to, to stay in contention for the Pan American women's overall uh, competition, which is decided uh, with, uh, with the best scores from either the preliminary round or the final. So certainly uh, plenty of incentive uh, for overall skiers to make uh, the final in each of the events that they compete in, knowing full well that if they don't, then... Uh, then that's one less opportunity for you to uh, to raise your overall total with that event. Violetta Mikulski of Argentina. And uh, Tofai front, unfortunately getting off balance and uh, will be swimming in and... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll no doubt be re reflecting upon that. There are 11 skiers in this Open Women's Tricks elimination round. We've gotten done with three so far. And uh, when we return, we're going to bring in Cristiana de Osma next. Then looks like we've got a score revision for 8,540. 
8,540, the latest score for uh, Natalia Kuklaman. Waiting on the score for Violetta, but in the uh, in the current time, we've got uh, Christiana De Osma. Working away from one trick to the next. Keeping everything going forward. Oh, look at that with the backflip and some surface turns afterwards. Oh, nicely done for Christiana De Osma. Just looking at these uh, tricks there, especially at the beginning and at the way that she's able to keep that handle close to her body. And certainly being light helps there out on the trick scheme. It means that you don't have to pull nearly as hard, nearly as long to, uh, to affect uh, the spins necessary. And obviously that, uh, that being the case also means that the possibility of uh, pulling yourself off axis is uh, decreased somewhat. And uh, good, good skiing all the way throughout there for uh, for Christiana de Elsma on uh, pass number one. Pass number two comes up very, very soon, and we'll see what happens there. All right, we will return to uh, to the remaining performance of Christiana de Elsma, and also uh, check out Valentina Gonzalez next. What if I told you there was a place? place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat. A place where that summer feeling lasts all year long. A place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers. A place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job all right moving forward we've got uh, Christiana de Osma working through a toe tricks to oh and tries the uh, the toe wake back to back reversing going down rather early swimming into shore But getting off to a pretty sprightly start with the toe five back and holding that toe foot into the standing leg. And just over rotated there on the, the toe wake back to back. And as she swims in, uh, we've got a, a point score, uh, Violetta Mikulski with, uh, with a little over 2,400 points, 2,450 as a matter of fact. Looking at the leaderboard right now, Kuklavan with 8540, Jaquist with 3050, uh, Mikulski with uh, with 2540, and we will return to live action right after this. Back on, we've got Valentina Gonzalez about to take to the water. We are about almost halfway down the list. Uh, Valentina Gonzalez is skier number five of 11.
All right, let's see what we've got here for Valentina Gonzalez out of Chile. Setting the boat speed up, keeping the, the line tight. Toe five back, toe eight back to backs, keeping the toe foot there. Setting the boat speed up pretty high for toe tricks, it would seem. Boom, toe wake go, toe wake back to the front, toe wake line back, toe wake line, or does it go for the toe wake line back to back? Stays on top of the water to do the uh, the tight the toe side slide and the reverse, and a 180 or two, which combined actually is more. But she can get those done quickly and stay on top of the water, which is always a good confidence boost work, working forwards. Just pulling in and to just keep in a good, good rhythm here. And uh, rhythm in trick skiing is uh, certainly a, a a component that's uh, that's definitely well prized in uh, in tricking. Get into a good unbreakable rhythm to start off with, and um, pretty much every do everything that you do after that point is that much easier. All right then, so that is Valentina Gonzalez. And we get ready to bring her into the course momentarily as we take a quick look at the dock. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back. Trick points are coming in fast and furiously. The latest score that we just got, had through is 24.50 from Violetta um, uh, Mikulski. Regina Jacobs scored 3,050 of just one pass. Fell first trick on the second one. But still out in the lead with 85.40 is uh, Natalia Guglavan. Valentina Gonzalez just crushing these uh, these backflips, flip twist back to front, well landed. There's the uh, flip twist front to back. She's got something more. The uh, the flip twist back to back, going down on that particular move, but uh, putting up the points and uh, keeping herself very much in contention, or maybe challenging those uh, that one of those top six uh, spots to make it through to the final, which will take place tomorrow. Decent elevation there with the first of her flips and then the, the second one as well. Handle up a little bit high on the landing, which, uh, which might have unsettled her going into the, the flip twist uh, back to front. Then the flip twist front to back, and then she's got the back to back mob, which she had a trouble uh, working her way out of. Landing blind on that one, so uh, having to turn her shoulders and chest away. The remaining skiers on this list consist of Daniela Verschweibel, and uh, we'll be back right after this. All right then, folks, working away along nicely. We've got Daniela Verschweibel. 
Daniela Veshwaivo in the U21 uh, women's uh, drinking competition that was held a little bit uh, of a while ago. Came through with a score of 69.80, but this is a separate competition here with the, uh, the open women here in the Pan American Championships. So let's see if she can conjure up something uh, comparable, if not a little bit more. Has tricked uh, consistently in the mid 6,000s with excursions into 7,000 points as well. Towick line back to back, Daniela Verschweibel of Colombia, yes! All the way through. Great skiing all the way through from start to finish. Daniela Verschweibel, Christiana de Osma, 28.90. Twenty-eight ninety there for uh, for Christiana de Osma. Daniela Verschweivel is uh, is six on the list, and uh, there are uh, five more skiers to go. So if uh, if Daniela Verschweivel takes the lead, for example, then she would make it through to the next round of the competition. But as it stands, the lead is a hefty score of eighty-five forty, courtesy of Natalia Kuklavan. So she has to essentially wait for uh, for an, a, an additional couple of skiers to find out if uh, Destiny in making the uh, the next round of the tricking competition it will be fulfilled. All right, Dan Villers-Verschweivel on the water. We will rejoin her momentarily right after this. Right, so welcome back, Daniela Veshwaivel on the water. Pretty successful on pass number one. Let's see if she can replicate that feed on pass number two. Passing by the green ball. Looks like she's uh, going to uh, come in with a uh, with a rap trick. From inside to out, a Waco, or Waco to start off with. There we go, there's the backflip. Here comes the backflip reverse, nails that one. A third the way through a flip sequence. Flip twist back, she's halfway through now. Regular backflips, there we go. Mo back to back, does she go for the reverse? Yes, she nails that for the second in, a, in a, the second in as many rounds. So consistent as you like there. So good, good skiing there for Daniela Vishweibel who tricked 69.80 in uh, the U21 uh, opening round uh, to, to make it through to the U21 uh, women's tricking final. In second place in that uh, particular round of tricks, the U21 uh, tricking uh, round. So I'll be, I'll be eagerly waiting the, uh, the points uh, for her. Natalia Kuklavan, uh, actually the, uh, Va Valentina Gonzalez uh, has a po 6420, 6,420 points, which means that she assumes second place right now, just behind uh, Natalia Kuklavan. Of course, these scores that are uh, that are published and uh, and spoken about right here are provisional and uh, may not be final until uh, half an hour has uh, has has gone after the the trick sheets have been given to the skiers we'll be back right after this
All right, welcome back. Here at the 2022 Pan American Water Ski Championships. We're in the midst of the, uh, the open women's tricking elimination round with our next skier making her way in towards the course right now from the United States. It's gonna be Kennedy Hansen. So Kennedy Hansen, who has a good friend and, uh, and roommate from uh, University. Oh no, and going down on the toe wake back to back. Just not getting in the best of shapes there. Not too sure what happened with that one, but we're going to take a look at the instant replay. Looks like it's the toe seven front uh, with the opening trick. Toe five, uh, actually toe seven front opening trick. There we go with the toe five back. And the line uh, releasing out of the boat. Uh, the, with the rope coming out of the boat. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, in this kind of event, it's better to be safe than sorry. But there are uh, some, some occasions where uh, that policy might not always apply effectively. But there you go, that is a Kennedy Hansen. Now she's got to uh, to refocus on what she's gonna do. Handle tricks coming up next and we'll return to action right after this. then okay continuing on we've got uh, Kennedy Hansen needs a huge run right here with the second and final 20 second pass let's see if this is possible uh, Regina Jaquist on one pass uh, did 3050 points alone and that was with toe tricks Let's see what Kennedy can Han Hansen can do effectively with the tricks on one 20-second pass. She's going to have to hustle here. Flip twist back to the front. There she goes. There's the re there's the mo back to back, and it's reversed. Nails that one. The surface back to back. She'll ski into the dock there. We'll have a bit of a rice smile, no doubt, but uh, taking into account the fact that. Uh, that she won't get the majority of her tricks uh, on the pass number one, but she will get everything on pass number two. So we wait uh, with bated breath to find out what that po point score is and whether it might be enough to see her through to the next round of the competition. Four skiers remain in this competition. Paige Rini, Anna Gay, Neely Ross, and Erica Lang all to come.
And just and just looking at, at some of these moves here from Kennedy Hansen, almost getting caught up there with the flip twister front to back. The reverse looked uh, looked very, very well done. There's another of those uh, flip twists as well. And then turns to the back for the Mo back to back towards the end. And then the reverse just absolutely hammered that one. And then, uh, then some surface back-to-backs outside the wake, and that should do the trick there for Kennedy Hansen on the second and final pass of hand tricks. All right, back on. We've uh, got some uh, point score. We've had uh, some point scores come through. Uh, Valentina Gonzalez with 64-20. Still in the lead is uh, Natalia Kuklovan with 85-40. Uh, Still yet to get the score for Daniela Verschweibel. Kennedy Hansen's uh, point score also uh, out, uh, out there as well, getting uh, calculated at this time. But at this time, let's, uh, let's focus in on Pedrini from Canada. Toe seven front, toe five back, toe wake back to back, and it's reverse. Ah, oh, look at these spins. Very, very high tempo here. In the middle portion of a run, toe wake line, uh, oh, toe wake line back to the back, back to the front. Toe wake line back to back. Does she have anything left in the tank? There we go, a couple of toe sides. Pure ribbon there from start to finish. There we see Matt Reaney in the tow boat. Looking over his uh, daughter's uh, performance out there on the Tricking Lake. Toe seven front. Just working away meticulously through the first set of tricks and, and trying not to get ahead of herself, which is, uh, which can commonly happen for, uh, for tricks like a toe wake back to back. And, it, and indeed it's reverse. But just look at these these moves here with the instant replay. Toe wake line O, oh, plenty of height, plenty of clearance. That's what the judges are keen to see from our trickers, that they do the tricks, but they also do them in such a way that it's nearly impossible for for those tricks to be cut by in, in any way, shape, or form. All right, then that is Pedrini on pass number one. We're looking inside in. In, inside the boat, we see Matt Reaney there grabbing onto that trick line and grabbing onto that rope release. And a quick reminder that uh, the, one of the latest TWBC podcasts uh, is actually a uh, conversation that I had yesterday with Matt and Whitney McClintock Reaney right here at uh, Lago Los Morris. So uh, you can uh, you could tune into that extended. Uh, episode of the TWBC podcast on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, on iHeart Podcasts, and all your favorite podcasting platforms. You'll be able to search for the TWBC podcast and listen to that episode. Coming in. important performance not only for the tricks event but also for the for our uh, chances of putting up a good score in the overall ah uh, there we go there's the flip twist back there we go mo back to back does she go for the reverse no she doesn't she goes for the flip twist back to front yes yeah, she stands up essentially on both fronts an ex uh, exceptional performance there Pedrini absolutely on fire there for Canada. Good, good skiing there for her with two stand-up runs. Thank you. Okay, well, what else could go wrong at the start? Good, it's great. That was good, man. And yet, in amongst all of that, there is still room to be picky, at least so far as her father is concerned. Remarkable. Good, good uh, competitive action here from uh, from Pedrini. 
Certainly, looking at the uh, the start of the the handle run, there were a couple of moments where uh, where things got a little bit tight and uh, things uh, got stalled. But once she got uh, past that hump, then she went into a flip sequence and things just started to click again. With two back flips to start, then the flip twist to the back and a quick rotation to the front to recover. Then she does the reverse. And just absolutely unstoppable out there with those two 20 second runs. That is Paige Rini. All right, back on, we've got Three time <laughs> world <laughs> women's <laughs> trick champion. It's going to be Anna Gay on the water at this time. Here we go, folks. This now is Anna Gay, current World Women's Trick Champion. Toe seven front, toe five back, toe eight back to back, it's reverse. Surface back to back, toe five front, toe out, toe straight back in. Toe wake O, toe wake line O, absolutely dancing on top of the water here. Toe wake line back to back, toe wake front, couple of toe, uh, a toe side, and uh, she should be able to fit that in with the 20 seconds with great effect. Russell Gay, the, uh, the coach and uh, release person for, uh, for Anna Gay, absolutely uh, satisfied with what he's seen thus far. Just wonderful tricking here from, uh, from Anna Gay. Former student at the University of Alabama, and uh, when she was on campus, uh, the times that uh, that she studied on campus in the early part of the day, she would go out onto the river that flowed through uh, Tuscaloosa with a boat, and uh, and a few of her friends on that collegiate water ski team would would and would trick her for for hours and minutes on end. And absolutely. Fantastic run there from uh, from the very start to the very finish. A lot of a lot of rhythm, a lot of practice, a lot of uh, training went into that went into that run. So Daniela Veshwaibel, which is 6950, 6950. 6,950 for Daniela Veshwaibel. Kennedy Hansen, 5440. So Daniela Veshwaibel's score is 6950. Only 30 points shy of what she produced earlier on in the U21 section of the tricking elimination round. So based upon the scores that I've had so far, uh, it would it would appear that Natalia Kuklovan, this is provisional by the way, so don't read too much into this. Natalia Kuklovan with the lead score at this time is probably through to the next round of the competition. And joining her with a score of 69.50 is Daniela Veshwaibel. Wake five back, there we go. Whoa, and going down, Anna Gay, does she recover? Oh my word. A rare occurrence. And Anna Gay, unfortunately, going down. Wow. You don't see that very often there from the, uh, from the three-time world uh, tricking champion. And current world record holder, Anna Gay, we're gonna take a quick look at that on the instant replay and see where things fell apart for her. Started off with the wake fight back and then got into the, tried to go with the ski line, uh, ski line back to back. 
and tried to recover out of it as a matter of fact. But went down and went down hard. Totally missed the line on the ski line, the back to back. So only one trick counted there with uh, the, uh, the second and final 20 second pass, the 310 points from the Quake 540 back. So the top six advance right now. I'm looking at Natalia Kuklevan and uh, Daniela Verschweivel as uh, the first skiers that could conventionally make it through to next round. And we'll, uh, we'll continue on with the tricks event with our penultimate skier in the women's tricking, open women's tricking competition. In the elimination, it's gonna be Neely Ross next. Installing himself in the tow boat, her father, Drew Ross. Let's, uh, let's see what Neely has in store for us. Neely Ross in the round previous to this one scored 10,660 points. The U21 round, I have to make that uh, point abundantly clear. Around Dockside, uh, we're, uh, we're seeing uh, Erica Lang uh, get, get limbered up and ready to go. And as she walks down to the, uh, the corner of the Dockside, we'll take a look and see Neely Ross approach the course. All right then, so 10,660 in, uh, in the U21 round. It's a pretty decent uh, score. One has to say, toe seven front, toe five back, toe wake back to back, toe wake back to back, reverse. High tempo here, toe five front, toe out, toe straight back in, toe wake o, toe wake line o, recovers well, toe wake line back, toe wake line back to back. Oh, and goes down on the toe wake line back to back with about two or three seconds to spare on that run. So now she's going to have to motor through the the handle pass to uh, to get anywhere close to where she was score wise in the U21 rounds. But looks like we're uh, we're pushing a score for uh, for Pedrini 7344 Pedrini. And that score slots her into second place and through to the next round of the competition as the as well. So the three skiers that I'm looking at as a uh, potential finalist are uh, Natalia Kuklevan, Daniela Verschweivel, and now Pedrini with her score of 7340, slotting herself in second spot. There on the back of the boat, uh, Neely Ross getting ready with a uh, handle pass ski. Uh, it's been uh, many, many years uh, since the, uh, the whole concept of uh, of switching skis and uh, switching uh, ropes and uh, and handles has uh, been uh, was introduced, and it's now commonplace amongst uh, all of the uh, the tricking athletes. Erica Lang there on dockside uh, with uh, a trick world record in excess of 11,000 points. Uh, she is chomping at the bit to uh, to get on out the water, but uh, Neely Ross is already out there and uh, looking to uh, to round off her uh, performance with a flourish. End off her day in a good style and. Uh, once again, let me remind you that uh, the TWBC podcast uh, recently interviewed uh, Neely Ross along with, uh, with Charlie and Drew Ross all at the same time. Had a conversation uh, yesterday with all of them. Some, uh, some pretty uh, revealing facts uh, were, uh, were gleamed from, uh, from that podcast uh, interview. And you can find that on Spotify, on Google Podcasts and, and Apple Podcasts along with iHeart. It is the TWBC podcast. Check out the latest episode. 
my conversation with the Rosses, Drew, Neely, and Charlie. And that episode dropped today also along with the Matt and Whitney McClintock Reaney podcast as well. Here we go, folks. Come on, let's bring on Neely Ross coming to us out of Canada. Positional turn away. Looking, looking pretty unsettled uh, with the uh, with the flips to start off with. But look at her go. She gets right back into it, rhythm wise. There's the ski line back. Wake five front, wake five back. What does she have left? And there she goes, settles in and uh, skis away from uh, from that second and final pass. Probably not one of her better performances, but uh, she'll take that as long as it takes her uh, to the uh, the final round of the competition. That is Neely Ross, returns to the dock. Hey, Neely, good recovery. You need what you needed to do. Yes, interesting to uh, to hear the conversations along uh, the dockside. Uh, encouraging words from uh, from her father, Drew Ross. Hey, the, the no speed drop was my fault. No, I know, I know that was my fault. Okay, I would I couldn't believe. You know, you've never done the reverse back to front like that. Oh, you did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man. You can't buy a ticket for that. But looking at the instant replay, getting a good elevation there with the flip twist back to front, and now just looking looking at some of the remaining flips that she produced. And looks on oh, no, getting a getting a point score here for Anna Gay. It's a four thousand one hundred and fifty points. Well, four thousand eight 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 hundred and fifty points, I beg your pardon. 4850, of which you can take 310 points away from that, and you'd essentially have a point total for one pass. So the uh, the opening pass uh, for Anna Gay would be 4,540 points. So uh, so that would be the total there. Total point score 4850. With that point score, it lets another uh, another skier through to the next round, uh, the next uh, bubble score, which is that of Valentina Gonzalez. Valentina Gonzalez's score of 64-20 is enough to see her through to the next round of the competition. But of course, these prognostications and announcements are provisional contingent upon those scores becoming official after the 30 minute review period. So uh, waiting and uh, in anticipation for Erica Lang to take to the water, coming to us out of uh, Gilbert, which isn't too far, uh, which is uh, in Arizona, not too far away from Phoenix. So a great trick in competition so far. It's certainly had its uh, share of excitement and drama. So, four competitors we have provisionally put through to the next round. Natalia Kuklovan with 85-40. Valentina Gonzalez with 64-20. Daniela Verschweiber with 69-50. And that score from Pedrini with 73-40. Exciting stuff going along. The next bubble score is Anna Gay. Actually, next bubble score is Kennedy Hansen with 54 40. 
So any score between now and the end that exceeds there, that score is almost assured of a spot through to the next round. Six spots open out of, uh, out of 11 competitors in the open women's competition at the Pan, Pan American Championships. Look at her go with the flips. Look at this, flip twist to the back and it's reversed. She's expended the flips. Ski line O to the back. Wake five front, wake five back. Ah, oh, beautifully executed. Staying very, very close to the wake there. In the tow boat, Matt Reaney looking over some fantastic trick skiing courtesy of Erica Lang. A flip twister to the back to get things underway. Actually, a uh, mo back to backs, two of them, to uh, to go heavy on the the flips right from the very start. Two front flips, which constitute the second third of her a batch of flips to uh, to continue getting along with. Flip twist back, then twist into the front in order to do the reverse. Then she slows all the way down, goes for the ski line O. Oh, Signature moves here, wake five front, wake five back, wake back to backs, and then surface back to backs on the outside of the wake. All right then, our boat driver, Mark Roski, and there is our current leaderboard, Natalia Kuglavan with 85-40. Pedrini with, uh, with 73-40. And there you saw the remainder of the leaderboard in tricks with two scores yet to come through. Got Alex Parody waiting in the wings uh, before he takes to the water in the men's, the open men's tricky competition, of which there's going to be eight total skiers, and uh, four of those will uh, make their way through to the Pan American Open Men's Tricking Final. Just waiting for the green light and uh, looks like we've got it. Here comes Erica Lang. We're gonna try and get the point score uh, momentarily for Neely Ross, but let's assume for the time being that she's done enough to make it through to the next round of the competition. Even if it was a less than perfect uh, result, uh, Neely Ross Let's make that assumption that she's through. So essentially what Erica Lang has got to do is come through with a performance in excess of 5440 points. Look at her go. Toe wake line O, oh, a good recovery towards the end. Toe wake line back. Toe wake line back to back. And it's reverse and within time, I believe. Good, good skiing there has made some modifications to that toe pass in order to throw those toe wing line back-to-backs at the end. But a fantastic effort all the way through. Continuing to go from strength to strength, that is Erica Lang out of Gilbert in Arizona. Her day job is pharmaceutical sales. And, uh, certainly on fire there. Neely Ross, we got a score for her. It's a little under par, 8250, 8,250. So 8250 for Neely Ross. As a consequence, the first competitor out of the reckoning for the uh, for a place through to the, to the final round is actually Kennedy Hansen with 5440. under the assumption that the performance that you're seeing right now with the instant replay from Erica Lang is more than enough to go. 
to get over that point total in order to make it through to the next round. So there we go. That is uh, Erica Lang. Just wonderful, wonderful skiing. So there is your leaderboard. Natalia Kuklavan still waiting on the uh, on the remaining point scores. And there you see how close it was between Neely Ross and uh, Natalia Kuklavan. Natalia Kuklavan still in the lead with one competitor score yet to come through. All right then, so we'll continue right along with the Pan America Water Ski Championships of 2022. The final elimination event, the men's tricking competition is about to take place momentarily right after this. For skiers and water enthusiasts, Florida lakes are what dreams are made of. Combined with world-class golf, remarkable weather, natural beauty, theme parks, and so much more, it's easy to see that Florida is paradise. For more than 30 years, I've enjoyed Florida's lakes and many offerings. If you are interested in Florida real estate, let me be your guide and trusted advisor as you search for your paradise. Together, we can make your dreams a reality. Times. How about you? Yeah, I got to set in. Uh, just gonna make a quick phone call here. Oh, of course. Can you get that, Will? Yeah, man, I got it. 